Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first round of the third round of the LMS. We are in Trieste for welcoming you. And today we will play a lot of modern. We will, we will play a lot of modern indeed. Fan favorite format, probably the most uh, popular competitive format. But Pioneer Italy, is of course. fighting for that spot. Coveted spot is the most played competitive format. Players are just shuffling up right now. Yeah, we are very ready for this. And we will see a lot of different decks bec because you told me yeah. that right now we will have a lot of, of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Not only you are most most types. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, we will probably see all the merc types, all the yog moths, all the uh, scams and hammers. But I fully expect to see also a bit of you know a bit of spice sprinkled in, so something like maybe a merfolk here, maybe a bit of reanimator there, maybe a bit of prison tron. Um, I'm really curious what players have brought to the table today and whether they will be meta gaming heavily. Yeah, of course. And we um, today we'll play a closed deck list tournament and the top eight we have the flight and accommodation for Athens. Yeah. And the top thirty six have the invitation, am I right? Yeah, so so we've got the, the top eight is as you've said, paid accommodation, paid flight to Athens because this is round three. Yes. Now here um, on the graphic you can see that Naples is round two, so this tournament doesn't qualify you for Naples, it qualifies you for Athens, which is around three uh, in June, right? So that's exactly. so everybody knows what they're qualifying for. Um, and yeah, you don't have to make top eight to, uh, to get qualified. Now, yeah, yeah, but if you make top eight, you have the accommodation and the flight. And exactly. It's <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> that, is, that is indeed amazing. And we've got 400 players today. Yeah, nearly 400. Exactly. Incredible. Pre pretty good turnout. So, yeah, okay, players presenting their decks. And we have uh, Reanimator versus Sacrifice, you told me before. Yeah, exactly. So, on the right, we've got a third Reanimator. On the left, we've got Sacrifice, which will soon appear on the screen. It's actually uh, Mardu Sacrifice. And this is not a matchup you see a lot in modern. I mean, you don't see those decks in modern that much. They're like tier two and a half, three-ish. And you certainly don't see that specific matchup. So as the reanimator is going to, uh, as the reanimator is going to reanimate the big thing, and I assume Archon of Cruelty, and Sacrifice is going to utilize Goblin Bombardment to spin the opponent to death. And we'll be getting deck list. We don't have the deck list because we have only if they checked on the on the site, and uh, they don't have submitted. Okay. So for this deck list, uh, they have on papers, but we don't have them. Yes, this is modern. This is indeed modern. I can see a player on the left reading their own deck list, I guess, mm -hmm. to make sure that they know what's inside. Okay. Yeah. The player on the right playing around with the dice. <laughs> I really <laughs> love those dice. To get ready. Or maybe, maybe talking to that. the judge, maybe talking to the judge, something's yeah, wrong. Yeah, totally. It could be. Let's hope they didn't miscount the deck. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, but if you know that before the game, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it shouldn't. Okay. Like, for example, last... Uh, oh, dziękuję babcia, dziękuję. Um, so like this will happen during the last LMS, right? There was like a, like a registration deck list problem round one. Mm. So very, so hopefully that's not happening here. And I think we'll be getting that paper deck list soon enough. Um, chat, when you say volume needs adjustment, it's too loud, too, too low. Too low. So we, we can just pass the info on. Because from our perspective, it sounds good. Yeah. Right. Of okay, course. too quiet. Too quiet, okay. Louder. For the chat, louder. Okay, we've passed the info on. So we hope that... Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. 175. Oh, oh. what? Oh, because this deck list is in Italian. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> Who writes down the deck list in Italian? I mean, I can respect that. And yeah, but not, not all 
in Italian. Yeah, yeah, Some, yeah, yeah. Something and something. Yeah, okay. Woof. Yeah, modern. Yeah, it is modern. Actually, this player um, actually wrote down their DCI number. So, woof. That's a that's a that's <laughs> a classic. That's an oldie but a goodie. Okay, what is this card? Can you tell me? Is um the drowned beach? I think it's translated. Uh, maybe drowned catacombs. Oh. It's spiaggia. It's beach. Okay, beach. Some kind of beach. <laughs> Oh my god. But it's a land in uh, this yeah, one it is, is like all lands. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's all lands. So mm. maybe this is like flooded strand? <coughs> yeah, probably. Probably flooded strand. Okay. Okay. I have to brush up on my Italian because Yeah, I'm sorry. But la gatta <laughs> is not clear <laughs> for me. I s I I don't know Italian names of cards, so <laughs> it's it's very difficult for me also. No worries, chat. We will be we will try to use the English equivalent, not the Italian version that I can see, but Actually, okay, it is just a control. Oh, okay. Just a control and yeah, there is a mine. It is the mine sculpture. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not sacrifice. It's just a control, and it has J's. Okay, it has a single shark typhoon. Okay, for good measure, and it does play snap custom age. Three to three. Yes. Yeah, lightning <laughs> bolt. <laughs> yeah, classic. Okay. So, so basically, what you would expect from a just a control deck is all there. And because I'm a control player, I will certainly be. Uh, be trying to see how well this deck fares. Yeah, this deck list is amazing because it's half English and half uh, Italian. Yeah, I mean, literally, <laughs> yeah. Dress down, <laughs> English. Pianora, pianura. It's pianura is playing. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. It's really easy. Planes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, 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 oh, <laughs> that I one is know. easy. Oh, what was this number? Is it four? Four, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks, to be fair, it looks like a Greek letter. Yeah. More no, like yeah. than a number. So yeah, Chad, you have to expect a proper, proper Jeskai control puzzle the turn shenanigans. What's very interesting for those control players out there, it does not have any Teferi Hero Dominaria, which much to my personal delight. I really, yeah, I've never been a huge fan of Teferi. We've got double J's, we've got four solitude, double subtlety, and after passing the turn. The problem with these things of decklist is that we, um, on on MTG Mili, I can see only the first opponent and on the second, so I can I can't take the the opponent deck list. So we don't have the uh, okay. uh, the Christian deck, li deck okay. list. Okay. Okay. We might get this soon enough. Yeah. Okay. Of course. So we've got land pass, <coughs> and one of the one of the persons one of the uh, one person in chat very well observed that the deck is quadruple sleeved. It seems. Well, what? Or at least more than single, more than double sleeved, right? Because you've got, I I I know these these borders, these kind of golden borders. Yeah. They indicate that you've got, um, that you've got some kind of additional layer of sleeve. So it could it could really be like triple or quadruple sleeved. And yeah, Archon of Cruelty in the graveyard, ready to get reanimated. Okay, control I player. I don't think they could play with land in front because they should take on the on the back. Yes, but if the control player doesn't have any permanents, mm. they technically could because there is no clear front and back. Yeah. And that's what I am hoping for. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> let's yes. Beautiful. Lands pass. Which is I mean I would say they're in front. They would they are very much in front. Yeah, of course. But in any in any time the judges can come and ask him to put on the back. Yeah. I mean for clear if if they need. From not. from my perspective, um You play with Island in front. I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's usually like the opponent. If the opponent feels like yeah, it's course. affecting the flow, you of can course. just ask and yeah. Okay, so we've got persist because grief got counterspelled. Wow. Okay. So we've got we've got this thing going on. Okay. This is a, a kind of die. Mm -hmm. Triangular die. Yeah. It's a four four dice. Okay. Now what they could is like I don't know Teferi bounce, but that's not a winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful retro frame Teferi bouncing. Yeah. Draw. Oh, Teferi is actually be uh, behind the lands. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> So let's see what 
let's see what, see what the opponent can master from this position. So they've got the Archon, so they will still need a discard outlet and a reanimate the spell. Yeah, I know that uh, it's not allowed on the feature match to um, take your permanents be beyond the, the lands, but there is a dedicated judge to the table, so uh, he will uh, decide and he will judge if it's necessary to change the order or not. So let them choose. It's not a real, really big deal for us. I mean, especially if players are fine with it. Yeah, no, it's very clear right now. You can easily see which are lands and which are not. Okay, so we've got Muldrifter evoked there. Yes, Muldrifter. So the, the reason why you include cards like Muldrifter is because you also have Ephemerate, and you can just Ephemerate it, which means for four mana you've drawn four cards, and you've got that Muldrifter on the battlefield. On top of that, it's a bit of utility and additional, you know, mm, reanimate a spell, right? Because people will get after your Archons. You can sometimes maybe persist your Muldrifter to draw into a bit of cards. And then Jace, the Mind Sculptor, brainstorming. So let's see what the opponent can do. It's really difficult for us to see the hands yeah. of the player, so we can guess. We can speculate, yeah. Yeah. The player on the left has got steam vents. Oh, he's shuffling fast. Okay, so there is memory deluge, there is steam vents. Uh, I think a hallowed fountain as well. What I think David has done is put the mo the best spell on top so that it's uh, it can be griefed. That's why he kept double land, deluge, and something in hand. I do think the best spell is actually hidden on top. Oh, we've got Witch's Cottage into mm. Ether Mage's Touch, I think that the card name is. So, that's a doozy. That's a doozy, okay. Muldrifter on the battlefield. Draw two. Yep. Now, to be fair, drawing two cards is not that impressive in the face of Teferi and yeah. and mm -hmm. Jace the Mind Sculptor. <laughs> not right now, but it could be it could be useful still. Okay, so we've got a reader, <coughs> Ether Mage's Touch. I've seen some reanimated decks with Grizzle Brand running Ether Mage's Touch. Then you can really high roll. Okay, so we've got Chase's Brainstorm and just a pass. Okay, fetch. Now let's see if we see hard cast, you know, hard cast small drift. Yeah, we do. Okay, so it more looks like a popper deck now rather than more than reanimator and gets snap. Counterspelled. Fetch. So this looks like a r real classic, classic uh, Jeske control. You know, hmm. Jay's the Mind Sculptor, Snap, Counterspell. Used to be Mana Leak, of course. Right, draw, tick up, bash hand. And probably another another brainstorm. Yeah, so David is not the type of player who, who uptakes their J's to win. Nah. Just mm. keep brainstorming until you win. And what do you think about this uh this matchup? It's good Jeskai versus Esper or not? Yeah, so I think I think Jeskai is favored because even if the Esper player manages to reanimate, which again, I, I'm not sure this is going to be very successful. Mm, then the Jeskai player has got a ton of tools to deal with that Archon and just, you know, discarding a single card and making them draw one doesn't really push the game forward that much. And so, for example, Quadruple Solitude can very clearly get rid of that reanimated Archon. We've got Quadruple Counter Spell, Double Spell Pierce even, to get that early, you know, persist. So, yeah. I uh, and post board actually, mm, 
Okay, I'm trying to see if the cards I see in Italian are Graveyard Hate, but we certainly see Soul Guide Land and also Main Deck Dressdown, which also thwarts um, the Reasper Reanimator's plan, so I don't see it as a good matchup for, for Reanimator. Mm. But maybe some very early Archon, you know, some griefing that solitude, maybe. Yeah, of course. They Mo make him move the lands behind. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, actually I actually I haven't noticed, but yeah, that's <laughs> okay, chat, no worries, now it's okay. Yeah, I don't think this was a problem for the players in this case though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it didn't seem like it. Yeah, no. Okay, so we've got another Jay's brainstorm. So now David is just sculpting the actual perfect hand while bashing with that snap custom age. The opponent is at thirteen. So well, seven more hits. And I can see in the hand that we've got Dress Down, which mm -hmm. blanks both Mool Drifter and Archon of Cruelty. And we've got Cleanup Step. Oh my god, so we've got so many cards in hand. <laughs> and is this the Hall of Giant? Yes, yes, the Stone Giant, so you could start to make damages also. Yeah, with the hole, uh, with the hole, it's still two attacks, unless um, the opponent um, fetches. Yeah, of course. Down to nine, then it's on board lethal, and the question is whether David has found any of the three bolts in the deck. At which point it would very much be lethal. Mm -hmm. Grief on top. Okay. Which is Cottage making the best Mystic Sanctuary impression? Yeah, it's changing all the rules because if you have um, some cards, can make you mistakes if you have on the back, and you uh, can clearly see if it's a permanent or a land, and that's why you should you now you have to play with lands uh, on the back and permanents on the front other types of permanents on the front. But if it's clear for both players, it's not a big deal, really. I think it happened because of a, uh, of a situation with Gabriel Nassif and, and Dryad Arbor. There, mm. was a, there was a case during a live tournament with that. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of started the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you, you can't hide any information on, the, on, the, uh, on your board. You can't hide anything. But if it's clear, it's not a big deal. Oh, we've got okay. subtlety on grief and flash and snap <coughs> custom age, animate, bashing, and, uh, and <laughs> yep, that's lethal. <laughs> so just by control, just kept drawing a lot of cards and then just killed them. Yeah. Then just killed in them. In a very fast way, I have to say, because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could expect this this this, this yeah, game I'm to take, you know, 20 minutes, but it didn't. I'm not used to see a control deck this fast, play this fast. It's actually one of the reasons to play Jeskai because you can actually go in a bolt, snap, bolt, and close mm. the game fast. So you have options, right? So now oh, you have the uh, now we have the second uh, decklist, the yeah, reanimator decklist. Yeah, and we can try to think how they could possibly sideboard. So we've got Ashiok, which is doesn't do much. The Fairy Time Raveler that could, could be, be a good one against against all the all the interaction like counter magic and dress down, um, thought sees. Looks really good to clean clean the way. Leyline binding, not so much. Stony silence, not so much. Actually, interesting to see triple triple stony silence in the sideboard. Probably like like against hammer because there isn't mm, much. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it could be a, a thing. And the single terados terastodon. Yeah, yeah, terastodon. I think is uh, four. Yeah, so actually they could bring it in here because you 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 blow up three lands, for example. They okay. get three, uh, three. Um, what was the animal? Elephants, or rhinos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but they are largely irrelevant usually, so you could do that. Solitude isn't that great, so I think you could trim on that. Priest of Fell rights, like, like David cannot sign out all the removal. Does that is the mm. thing? You cannot, you cannot think that um, the opponent won't have removal because they will because they have to. For example, they've got triple bolt, triple ending. And of course, Solitude stays in. I mean, that's that's of course, but but I'm not sure that David will be able to even cut three bolts, three endings. So some some removal will stay in. I think the best utility for Priest is actually 
uh, being double reanimator. So you play it, it dies, so it ate uh, one card, and, and then you can re uh, unearth it. What do you think is the right choice to sideboard out from the main, the so main list? So yes, I th I think they will side out Solitude because that okay. that doesn't have many targets in the David's deck because mm -hmm. th it would probably like you know maybe Solitude a Solitude, but doesn't Oops. doesn't get you much because if you as a reanimator Solitude the control Solitude, it means that control Solitude must have been played to accomplish something, which is probably exiling your previous. Reanimate a reanimated creature, which means you're in trouble anyways. One zero for Tereti David, and we are beginning the second match. Yeah, they're still pondering the exact table configuration. I'm not really surprised because nobody's coming into a modern tournament expecting Jeske control. Yeah. So and nobody's getting into a modern tournament expecting Esper reanimator. So <laughs> and you find it in the first game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so you have to come up with a plan like yeah. on the fly. You 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 don't have it prepared like you do probably against Hammer against against Yogmoth against Merc Knight. And uh, yeah, so Christian's deck uh, is yes is triple or quadruple sleeved. I'm not sure how much how much sleeved it is. And the reanimator deck might expect rest in peace, but there is no rest in peace. No. I mean, no, no, what's no. this? Oh, oh explosive. explosive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Engineered explosives. In, exactly. Um, if David wants to get a bit cheeky, he could side in Blossoming Calm to counter specifically the Archon's trigger. So mm. that could be something he might want to do. Yeah, I guess. So there is there is a third dress down coming in probably, two vetoes. I, for, I never saw saw the four layer, um, <coughs> on, on a deck. So I think that probably right now it could be third layer, but I'm not sure about that. So actually there is this uh, legendary player now, yeah. and I think it's Daniel Wong. Please just correct me if that if that's incorrect. I think it's. Daniel Wong, who played Taking Turns in Modern, and yeah, yeah, da yeah, Daniel Wong, exactly. So he played he uh, Taking Turns, which was blue base, was blue red, sometimes blue red wi uh, white, blue red something, and he always had a quadruple sleeve deck, which was like yeah. a this tall, you know. And how do you shuffle this? So so basically. <laughs> You just split the deck in half, okay. shuffle the half, shuffle the and half, then try to and just try to mash yeah. them in, yeah. But I appreciate these things because um, I was a judge in an old school tournament and it was single sleeved. And during the final, one of the, of the two players uh, dropped an gl entire glass of bourbon on the opponent's deck. <laughs> oh. And it was <laughs> a very difficult moment, but it was all good. They um, dry clean all the... Dry dried yeah. out all the, the cards and the re, re sleeves and it was okay never mind and we was like <laughs> Oof. okay i mean especially if it's like a modern deck right no it was an old school oh old school deck oh my god okay that's <laughs> even worse yeah you've got all the beta stuff there i mean i've seen some tests that if you have no, any i was really scared because i was the second judge and we was just two and this was like okay now if if the player is start to freak out that would be right because you know, it's very yeah. expensive. Yeah, that's true. Volume is still, is still low, you said. Yes, we will try to take care of that. I can see Jessica control plenty of lands in hand. Was it like, s was it seven? Was it seven? Was it three? Oh, there is a spell pierce. I think maybe Teferi. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm asking... Um, to to the tech to take up the volume for the chat and not for us because we are very loud. Yes, we are. I think it I is. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay. So I think yeah, reanimating has mulligan. Now we can see a, a persist. There was an Ethan Mage start, a couple of lands. The control deck has got multiple lands in hand, a spell piece. Okay, thought sees the opponent just shows the hand. Yeah, 
you do you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, let's, so now we will clearly see what's in the hand, and it means that the reanimator has indeed sided in Thoughtseize. So we've got Quadland. Oh, Quadland pierced a fairy solitude. Okay, that will be tough to play through. Because you could technically try to play for a longer game where you just pay for the spell piece, but you just. Oh. Mm. I didn't recognize the tough scissors, so I, this, I wasn't <laughs> understanding what was happening. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that no, was indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think there will be a, a draw. Hall pass. Okay, hall pass. No, hall pass suggests that he wants to hold up spell piece, but in order for the spell piece to work, Christian would have to be able for two mana both discard a creature mm. and reanimate it. So that would be something like grief you reanimate grief or grief myself discard Archon reanimate it. But I guess he wanted to just be sure that none of these weird shenanigans would happen anyways. And a gentleman's tapland pass. <laughs> Tainted Indulgence. Tainted Indulgence gets spell pierced and David just tapped out. Will he get punished? I don't know, let's have to. Ooh, that is a bad hand. Ooh, that is a bad hand. Island Pass, interesting. Island Pass. Will Jifter? Yeah, so players are just not doing very board affecting things. Mm -hmm. So this is like land pass, you just draw to tap out. Land pass. So that's not something you would expect from you know, from a modern game nowadays. No nowadays there is much more action, but here there's not. The Espedex portal of Phyrexia, no it's not. It reanimates uh Archon of Cruelty, Mold Drifter, Solitude Potentially, but yeah, mainly Archon of Cruelty. Mm. Or if the mages touches into it. A, a third, third thought. Thought. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you sideboard in the Tosses. <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> against the Jeske Control. The bad thing is that Christian clears the way, but has nothing to do after that. Yeah. And so he clears the way, passes the turn, <laughs> and then David draws something else, mm -hmm. so you haven't really cleared the way after all. O okay, I think we'll be... S oh, okay. Because I expected also Snapcaster target uh, spell piece resolve, but it means that he must have drawn something. Where the piece persists on the Mool Drifter. Okay, draw two. So we'll see if this 1-1 one, one flyer will go to town. Oh, I think there was a subtlety. I think there was a subtlety in hand. And interesting that David is fetching out a steam vent rather than a triumph, so he must have drawn a triumph. Chat ask, still persist is a good card? Well, if you're playing reanimator, probably the best card you could play. Yeah. <laughs> so it really depends what you're what you're playing. <laughs> Yeah, of um, one of the per one of the um, people in chat very well uh, has had a very wonderful. Oh, God, I can't talk today. <laughs> um, it's very has, early. Don't it's worry. Very early. <laughs> has got a very good observation that uh, creativity is kind of like a b better variant, mm -mm. and you know the prevalence of of graveyard hate is basically what's hindering it the most. So, like, you no know, endurance is flying here and there. You know, some kind of you no know, saga decks getting access to you know a single uh, saga lantern, but having access to it regularly because of the saga. So, yeah, basically people have switched to creativity. Um, but on the on the flip side, people play engineered explosives to react to react to creativity. At which point, it's better to be reanimator, which does not get affected by engineered explosives. Yeah, you can't see the deck list online until the top eight of tomorrow evening. We can see them because we need forecasting, but uh, it's a closed deck list tournament right now. 
I grieve getting cast. And hard cast subtlety. So, yeah, so... Um, to be fair, this game could be ending soon enough. With, you know, with subtlety, attacking for three in DS, now attacking mm, for two. Yeah. And, you know, Christian having cast uh, triple foxies. So yeah, th resolves. there were a third of Tafsids before. Okay, <coughs> there are two cards in hand, and so there mm -hmm. is a Rogan Trium. Oh, yeah, so uh, I fully understand David. So what happened is that because it's his, you know... Um, He's used to play exactly, like that. Exactly, exactly. He's used to playing like that, so he just did that, you know, out of habit. Pure habit. Ooh, okay, so we've got Ephemerate on Mold Drifter. To draw two cards, Ephemerate goes to exile, waiting to be rebound. So yeah, so if we're talking again, technically speaking, um, Christian cannot put Ephemerate on top because it's not on top. Mm -hmm. But player communication indicates that probably it's all good because they know what it means. Yeah, there is a dedicated judge to this event in the game the first game uh, they asked to put the lens on the back and uh, they are watching right now so if they decide to don't ask him it's a judge call it's okay it's not a big deal come on not right now i know it's the rules but okay, so we've got something cast Mm. Oh, Otawara on your Mool Drifter mm. just to get the damage in. Oh my god, okay, so... No, it's very difficult for Christian. I mean, now, yeah, having cast three Thoughtseizes, Ephemerate Fizzles, draw... As you were saying, Thoughtseize is good, but if you don't have anything else to do, yeah. you do Thoughtseize, and then what? Exactly, opponent is just playing cards off the top. Mm -mm. Uh, and it's all good. So... This is actually, Christian is kind of feeling the problem of control, which is that you will probably die with a million cards in hand. Nearly 400 uh, players in this event today. Yeah, yeah, we've got almost 400 players. Well, basically 400 players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Christian's considering their options. Uh, to be fair, that you know, you, I mean, there are two lethal threats on the battlefield, right? And this reanimated deck plays Tainted Indulgence and not um, the the blue eyed filtering spell that gains you to life, which which in such a position could be the the difference between winning and losing. Could you do something for survive at least the next turn? Well, if there if there is an actual reanimation of Flak like, Solitude or, or Archon of Cruelty, then certainly, and then actually it could be a winning position. But if that was the case, I think Christian would have done it much, yeah. much faster. Yeah, of course. Um, so, so the player on the right is the one with the triple sleeve deck, and mm -hmm. yes, Mango is here. <laughs> and he's playing the, man, the main event today. Yes, he is, yeah. Okay, Hardcast Mold Drifter, so I, I'm okay. not sure what they're looking for, because they would still have to get rid of the other creature. So... Uh, Two life points, it's so low. Yeah. Like, even Land land Persist doesn't do it, because there there are no creatures in the graveyard, so... I mean, but he may have found his Solitude, so that could be the case. So the question is whether they have... Okay, they, they grief... An Archon? Ooh, they discard, okay, of the opponent's spell appears. So let's see. Oh, oh okay. nothing found. Jeskai Control found. wins through basically aggro. Basically aggro. Mm -hmm. This was very fast for Jeskai Control. Yeah, very fast and very weird game. Not, not, much, not much interaction, 
a lot of passing the turn. Now we're switching to table two. Yeah, and we have uh, ten rock against it's a, it's a prowess. Yeah, so I think this is a classic problem with MTG melee, and that's not eight rock. That's uh, that's some kind of sacrifice shell, sacrifice with uh, with the book, probably Asmo somewhere in there, and the breach deck. We don't know if it's a prowess version. I would hope it's a prowess version. Right. So we've got double DLC, Monaster Swift Spear, Wetter. Okay. Getting rid of the oven. Is it prowess with poor unholy hat to consider? We don't know because we right now we don't have the list. I will search for them. Yeah. Yeah, breaching prowess is super scary. Like in this particular spot, when you've got like Dragon's Rage's channeler uh, on the battlefield, each spell you cast surveils two, right? So if you've got something like Mutagenic Growth, uh, which costs zero effectively, you now each growth surveils two cards to the graveyard. So you could probably like, grow, you know, five times. But yeah, so we've got, yeah, past the turn. We will make sure in a second that life totals are correct. Uh, now this Bloodstained Maya is tapped for mana correctly because there is an Urborg on the battlefield. So you can you can tap the fed. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's being explained. And I fetch anyways. No, I can't find it, find the deck list. There's also a, I can see a path to exile in the of in the sacrifices deck. It's, it's the cut oven version, of course, because of the oven. And you don't really play the oven without a cat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Even my boyfriend that doesn't play magic know what oven cat <laughs> nice does. I still got path on channeler. And yeah, by the way, chat path in 2023. That's that is a strategy. Yeah, path resolves. I assume there will be a mountain found. Or no, or yes, or no. Yeah, I think that we should um, move a little bit the the table cover because we can see the the creases. Yeah, the yeah. creases on the map. That's but true. we can't see proper the graveyard of the that's true. The the player on the right. Ten to ten. What do you think about this matchup? Sacrifice versus uh, prowess. Prowess. So I like prowess so much, and I think prowess is really good. And just on that basis, whatever prowess will be playing against, I would say it's 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 okay. Um, especially against sacrifice, which is kind of an you know um, of the meta deck and does not seem to play a lot of removal. So prowess can really just overrun them early in the game. However. If the cat oven gets going, you know, you can play cat, the clear blocks, then sacrifice it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got this kind of infinite blocker, which can't be really killed. And in that case, it would be really good. And also with the mayhem, you can start to do damages every time you sacrifice a permanent. Yeah. Now, what's what's really interesting and actually comes up in modern, way more than other formats, is that in modern, a lot of players sacrifice permanents, both players sacrifice permanents, which means that uh, Ari played okay. Mayhem Devil and would trigger off the opponent's fetchlands as well. No, the Mayhem should be not a problem anymore. Yeah. Now, we don't have the meta game yet, but we will have today. So don't yeah, worry. Yeah, of course. Around, I, mean, I can't, I don't know, but probably around three, four, five, we'll get the meta game breakdown for we day one. We can tell you what we expect, but not what is for sure. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so we've got a sacrifice of Mayhem Devil. I have to say, I really, I really like the David Mayhem uh, mechanics, because when I don't like sacrifice, but with that card and with Cat and Hoven, it's uh, very uh, nice and easy, and you can clear board. And against the prowess, if they don't remove your Mayhem, it could be a problem because you can start to do a lot of damages and clear the board, even because. Uh, their creature usually are very low life. That's true. That's true. They're usually one or two toughness. Yeah. Now, actually, many of them are two, two specifically, and two is much more than one. Like honestly, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not just one more. It's it's a 
two is yeah, a huge <laughs> difference from one because now you need double the triggers from from mayhem devil to kill a single creature and if that creature has prowess you can't really kill it that easy we've got mm -hmm. another match brought oh my god just magic keeps coming we've got another feature match area another feature match for our for, uh, area third match of the first round yeah escape shift versus some kind of blue deck yeah also because the first two matches was uh, very very fast and the first one unexpected yeah uh, yes that's uh, yeah, unexpectedly pretty pretty fast the second one could be expected because they are both very fast decks so it's it's common yeah. to close early up so now we've got okay so it's probably murktite that's ragavan bashir mm. yeah and chat we will be trying to bring you as much magic as possible uh we've got two main feature matches but when each ends we'll try to grab another pair who's sideboarding and bring them into the feature match area so we will try to make it the constant magic for each 50 minute round they are blind list yeah you can see the uh, duck list only on the top eight of the second data tomorrow not today and the top eight of Today and tomorrow will be on uh, on player accommodation. No, only tomorrow will be on the player accommodation uh, for Athens. Exactly, yeah. Player, uh, it's, it's accommodation and flight paid for if you top eight this event for Athens. So, uh, yeah, the top eight, the top eight prizes are really good. Mm -hmm. But for qualifier, you um, for the invitation, you need to be on the top thirty six. Two, thirty two. Thirty two. Sorry. Uh, how bad. many players? Uh, Four hundred. 400 players today. Okay, so we've got Murktide shuffling up. And Scapeshift player shocked in, but passed the turn. That's very interesting. Um, I'm curious if they have any like instant speed interaction. But what could that interaction be, honestly, in this kind of Mardu? Uh, because it's not blue Scapeshift, clearly. Oh, Blood Moon. Whoa. Mm. That's good. That's oh going to be a, really a big problem for a five color. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, for a five color deck uh, with no basics on the battlefield, I mean, that's just backbreaking. Unless. Really, really difficult. They, what they could do is float mana and play Leyline Binding on the mm. Blood Moon. Yeah. And that's something that I would expect. Yeah, expensive Leyline mana, but you, you can do that. And the Ragavan. Oh, right. Yes. Well, you could binding in response to Blood Moon, I mean. Right? So you could, you could, because, blood, because binding costs uh, three less, right? So you would, fl so I mean, oh, nah. it can't. Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. I'm dumb. No, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot that's, that's, that's literally not how it works. So this was the third, the third match? The third game, sorry. No, it was the second game. Yeah, and I, we can see a lot of real spicy cards. We've got Lady Binding, we've got Prismatic Ending, Teferi, and Supreme Verdict. That's a ton of interaction. Um, and you can play, for example, a single Supreme Verdict mm -hmm. because you've got Quadruple Bring to Light. So you can always find it when you need it. Now, interestingly, for people who are not aware of the interaction, you can bring to light for Volky, God of Lies, but actually play the back half, which costs seven mana, right? So you Volky for, uh, you bring to light for Volky, play the back half, and you've got a real strong planeswalk on the battlefield, which is the alternative win condition to your scape shift, which is usually going to be um, a one card kill. We can see all the. The card on the sideboard, but <coughs> what do you guess should be the right choice between the ones that we can see to put um, on in? Yeah, against Merktide, against Merktide, you could side in Endurance. Um, if you if you see um, Dragon's Raid Channeler, now it really depends because nowadays these builds of Merktide are really different. Sometimes they are like very graveyard centric with plenty of Merktides and DRCs. Maybe they play Breach. Mm -hmm. which is also a graveyard card but sometimes they don't and they go a bit you no know, light on the graveyard at which point endurance won't be that good for example endurance is great in catching 
you know, a Dragon's Rage channeler that's in combat. So it really depends on how much Vito has seen so far. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it seems like we're already in Game 3. Okay, Tapland Pass. Land Pass, no monkey. They turn to play a Chalice, okay? Chalice on one. Okay, immediately fetches. So... <laughs> yeah, it was very fast fetches. Yeah, we'll see either a Consider or or a spell pierce. Now I saw a brazen borrower in hand there. Okay, so it yeah. will probably get spell pierce. It's funny that we don't know yet and mm, yeah. he already put in the graveyard. Yeah. Like, okay, it's done. Yeah. The Merc side player probably just said I will spell pierce. That. Yeah. <laughs> and of and course. spell pierce he does. Yeah, so there is, I think, a counter spell, Brazen Borrower, Mistress Bobble, got a canal. Okay, Ledger Shred Ooh. and Bobble, that's good, that's good. Sugar. Let's see what they can have away. Oh, there is a Hallowed Fountain, so there is some kind of white splash in the deck. Yeah, you don't play anything in the deck that we saw before with uh, the um, the text uh, uh, for every basic uh, types lands that you own. So could this be for this kind of cards? Um, so so I didn't he think could, of any. He could play, for example, prismatic ending that cares about white. Uh, but I, I, it's more likely I think that there is like some kind of Teferi Time Raveler somewhere in the in the main or sideboard. Yeah, there is no counter. Yeah, there is no counter mm, because of the type of the spell. Now we've got an island, so Vito is really playing around a bloodman. Doesn't want to get caught on turn three. Ooh, that's a and good one. Ooh. That's a good one. I was just saying, probably the... Um, the flying creature could be good when you have Conneves against a uh, five color escape shift and then he bounced him. But immediately <laughs> they top deck a lightning bolt so they can play yeah. Ledger, Land, Bolt. And that's, I mean, this top deck was unbelievably good. Unbelievably mm -hmm. good because otherwise they would have to just pass. Oh, they bolt. Ah, no, they want to connive. Okay, okay, opponent lets that happen. Because technically speaking, you say bolt your Teferi and before the bolt resolves. And this card I consider. Uh, you, yeah, you connive and consider gets discarded. Pass. So the counter is in. <coughs> there is a Renin 6 I can see and like two white cards of a prismatic ending and all Leyline Binding. Stomping around in hand as well. Considering his options in the face of Legis Shredder, who's already 2 4 prismatic ending, thankfully doesn't care about the size, only the cost. Okay, stomping down shock in. Yeah, there, uh, and many times people uh, are calling for slow playing when players are just thinking about what they can do. The rules say that you have to progress with the game, and if you have options, you can think a right amount of time. I mean, of course, yeah. not for too many times. Yeah, it's also okay to think. You don't think. Yeah. It's perfectly fine to think. Um, usually when I play, I just I just tell my opponent, give me a second because it's a key turn. Yeah, no, of course. Give me a second, let me just think through my options. And we've got Leyline Binding on Ledger Shredder. And that's, that's again what I was saying. Had it not been for that bolt, um, the fairy would have stayed on the battlefield <laughs> pretty firmly. Now there is a bubble, a land, and I think... Uh, Brazen Borrower, aka Petty Theft. Look. And there is, I think, a scape sheet in hand already? 
potentially, which is not a good draw now, because you can't combo off unless you've got seven lands. Seven lands meaning you can escape shift for Ivalakut and six mountains, dealing 18, which is usually enough. I don't think right now he, c he should bounce something with uh, the borrower. Would you bounce something with the borrower right now? It, it really depends what's on top of... Oh, oh mm. the, ah, he missed the bubble trigger. Oh, he missed the bubble trigger. That's really unfortunate. Like, you mm. can't afford that it's not getting a card. And the bubble trigger has been missed. To be fair, if you're if you're just starting to play to play bubble, and you you see that you forget bubble triggers, and again, I think everybody at some point has. I think you should just put a physical object somewhere to indicate that you will yeah. be drawing card. I myself put something like weirdly big on the top of my deck to remember sometimes. I don't know a a phone or I don't know a a bottle of water just on top. I do that many times. I forgot a lot of things when I try to play something different or when it's uh, four minutes to to the turns and also you have to consider that when you are on the feature table you have a pressure more pressure than normal so it could be but you should put something to remind you of course hello Filippa hi Filippa hello I hear running six now coming down. Right, so now Mer the Murktex player doesn't have that extra card from Mishra's Bubble and has to face um, Chalice, Ren, and a constant flow of lands. Chat has a great, great advice. Warriors Runner said he has um, a token that says Mishra Bubble's trigger. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I did that. I actually did. I remember when I played Death Shadow, like. Oh my god, now, like three years ago, maybe. I did have the same like piece of paper yeah. in front of me. Just It's a good thing. But again, right now, I really prefer just put, just put you know, a big bottle of water on yeah, top of so my deck box and I, and I remember. When I play Breach in Modern, and I do, I have to also have to have a specific dice to indicate how many bubble triggers I've got because sometimes it's two, three, four, five. So I say, okay, I will have a, you know, that many bubble triggers. Yeah, with a, uh, in fact, with a bottle in the middle of the table, you can't forget anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the worst thing, idea. the worst thing that can happen is that you bubble at the beginning of your turn. Yeah. And then you do a million of things and then you pass the turn and you, you, you will certainly forget that you have cast that mischievous mm -hmm. bubble if you, if you began the turn with it. And so now he's, he's considering his options. Um... Hasn't hasn't petty thefted anything. Now, if they play like a fifth land, they could go both petty theft and brazen borrower on the end step. Well, Cleeter, if uh, if you remember you're on Bubble Trigger and your opponent draws a card fast, if you say, just when they're drawing, wait, you didn't allow me to draw from Bumishra, you're fine. It, it really is. The problem is when you let them draw a card from the draw step, wait a bit, uh, and say nothing. That, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you actually react, that's fine. They still have two minutes before the turns. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, if anyone is going to finish the game, it's probably the Scape Shift player mm -hmm. casting Scape yeah. Shift. Okay, so we've got... Expressive iteration, but I well, think is... I, I'm not sure why the, the hunt is being revealed. I, bl I blinked and I missed something. Okay, Did I it draw a card more than... Yeah, possibly. I think this could be a reason. Uh, so I think guys have gone to the feature match to, to let us know what's happening, but... Um, he drew fetch too late. 
Ah, okay. Okay, so so okay, so this it is the is classic weird. charge uh, thought CZ effect. It is weird here, so probably you could tell us what's happened. Drawing X card. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was an extra Confirmed. card drawn, and so again, there's the classic. We we call it thought CZ effect or thought CZ <laughs> judge call. <laughs> Um, that you that the opponent is allowed to look at your whole hand and decide which card goes <coughs> into the into the deck, which in this case, very thankfully for Vito, it was Bloodwell. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it happens sometimes. It could be alleged mistakes, and then you have to call the judge easily, and he will fix it. Don't be afraid to call the judges, guys. Okay, so there's still cons okay, there is still some talk between them. Um, there is a counter spell. There is a brazen borrower. Yeah, also because the judge have to uh, check if this was an honest mistake or if if it was something that you do on purpose. So yeah. we have to ask you something. Yeah, and you ask both both players yeah of course what do you think what happened but when you see the players still remain sit in the table it's pretty friendly yeah <laughs> absolutely i mean <laughs> when things go bad they have to uh, take off the table and go to talk with the judge separately yeah i I've, i don't think i have ever met uh, anybody who wouldn't be very kind when I played yeah. magic, so well, and, and well. <laughs> I have <laughs> hey, expert situation. And let's see if there will if there will be any one mana spells cast into that chalice. So whether the Murtaid player will even cast them into chalice, mm -hmm. and if that's the case, whether Vita will remember that there are chalice triggers. Chalice is quite tricky. Mm -hmm, because you have to remember for opponent and for you. Yeah, exactly. When you have to choose the cards, you have to remember that you have. But in in this case, there are not so many cards on the land on the battlefield, so it's easy to see. I've talked with many players, and there is this kind of sentiment that it would be better if Chalice said um, that spells with that cost just can't be cast. Mm. Not that they are counted, mm -hmm. and it would mean that there is no like chalice checking, right? Yeah, of you, course. You just can't cast them. But right now, as is, it's not very user friendly because one player is trying to get the other by casting <laughs> spells into chalice. The other player has to remember uh, they could in unintentionally cast spells into their own chalice, and yeah, this is a tricky question when you when you're new to the game and you have to understand the difference between you can't cast and you cast and this counter counter it. Yeah, that's true. I mean of course yeah, of course prowess players specifically. Yeah. Um I mean to be fair, sometimes you cast spells into chalice and get them counted on purpose. For example, yeah so prowess trigger was, was mentioned <laughs> as an example. That's but right. it's also with like with Merktite, right? You might want to cast spells into chalice to get them counted to then play Merktite, which is bigger. So there are some kind of know edge cases where that's actually useful you know to be fair right now they could cast a one drop into chalice just to connive yeah with of course the yeah it's an option you have to choose wh which one is the better option for you okay and right now they are in turn one yeah uh, of extra turns three mana oh there is the oh we found a bloodman oh my god and which hurts the most, Vito uh, exiled Boseju with iteration and played it instead of taking it to hand. Had he taken it to, the, to his hand, he would he would be able right now to just Boseju that Blood Moon, which now he cannot. Mm -mm -mm. And we saw before, no, it was the other that list, sorry, because uh, the other players have one on the main uh, list and one on the sideboard so at max he have two but we don't know anything about the five color scape shift that yeah. list yeah that could be, this could be the only bow for all we know 
But yeah, but this Black Moon was just backbreaking. Because uh, it means that the Merc type player must have drawn it in like like one or two draws. With Vito not expecting one. Or maybe Teferi bounce? Oh, it looks... The mana looks like Teferi mana. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Okay. So it's not the end of the world. Bounce, draw. But again, it's, 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 it's turn two. So the escape shift play will also have turn four. And that's it. Um, so we will see if there will be any, any escape shift action. Interestingly, a uh, Merc type player connived into subtlety. Oh, but doesn't change much because there is the fairy on the battlefield, so... Okay, it would have been awesome, but it won't be. <laughs> and I'm really not sure how you beat Charles Ren the fairy dry lab. The only way you beat it is just by not losing and waiting until the time mm, runs out. And go. Oh, Bolt gets it. Okay. Yeah, Bolt gets discarded because of the chalice. Of course. Uh, which is not obvious because there is a petty theft in the hand. So you could, at any point, you could just bounce chalice and cast mm -hmm. the one drop. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So we've got, we've got some giant arbor valakut action. Oh, another poop, bolt ship. So, I, yeah, I do think that uh, Scape Shift will be the deck that might take it down in the allotted time. No, it's turn three. Yeah, they forgot. Oh, okay. They changed the dice. So, right now, if they f double fetch, it's two lands, it's six damage. So another land, another fetch land is lethal, and there is another fetch land guaranteed because of run and six. So as is, on the battlefield, escape shift is is the win. Is a lethal what? escape shift right now? Um, oh wait, no, 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 I'm miscounting. Wait, what? No, oh no, no, it's correct. Uh, escape shift is very lethal. Oh, okay, so escape shift is very lethal. You just they only need an additional fetch land to win. Now, if there is a Brazen Borrower on Dryad, it doesn't change much, because Vito can always replay that Dryad, and it cannot be counted back, because there is the Fairy. Mm -hmm. So... The Blood Moon again? Yeah, the, the Blood Moon that was bounced with the Fairy. Of course. Oh, you can't do that. You cannot do... No, do, ah... I mean, ah, no... So, Petty Theft couldn't be cast like that. Because the fairy is on the battlefield, so mm. um, so yeah, yeah. So there Do has to be some it kind of be, yeah. It should be a judge call. Yeah. So the Mercury player tried to sneakily um, bounce in response to the fetch. Okay, now they realized it. Yeah, of course. Okay. So now we'll see what the outcome is, which is, which is the most unfortunate thing is that the, the fetch has happened. I'm not sure how much it can be, you know, um, changed back. We see a third hand is the judges. Yeah, and they're trying to fix it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it could be a, n a new player the first round. The first uh, match of the of the day. There is a dedicated judge, so don't worry. He will be. He will decide everything. Okay, so we'll see how this gets uh, gets dealt with. Yeah, I'm pretty curious because uh, the fetch is already done, so he already. Uh, Shuffle the deck and for not shuffle, search for a, a th something to fetch and yeah, exactly. He took the borrower back in hand, and you have the judge have to decide if they simply step back and shuffle because there wasn't any no cards on the known cards on the um, on the top of the deck. Um, right. There, there were on the bottom because of iteration. 
Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing is that... I mean, but if you didn't shuffle, you just have to uh, probably take off the cards on the hands, shuffle the other cards, take the, 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 the cards on the, on the bottom of the, yeah. of the deck there, and then shuffle all the other part of the decks and yeah. use a that nice shuffle. But I think they've just shuffled... Okay, so there is some kind of... It depends if he already shuffled or not. Okay, so we've got some rewinding going on. Yeah, and the judge ex is explaining what's happening. So I think we're going back to the point where Blood Moon is on the stack. Um, mana is untapped. Yeah, so we're re rewinding to the point when Blood Moon is on the stack. And Vito is, shuffle, uh, is f searching out in response. Well, uh, Marco, we think he would have shuffled anyways, but that's not a given kind of, right? Okay, so now they're fetching out a Rogren Trium. Yeah, they're just fixing. And sometimes the fix can be a little longer because you have to step back and be sure about every step back for not doing mistakes in this in this um this part of the of the the, the fixing. I mean, then you can move on, but you yeah. have to do that. Okay, so we've got um, six damage dealt. Opponent down to six. Blood Moon's on the battlefield. The fairy's on one counter. Four turn. Turn four. So there's basically no way that the Merc type player wins. But the Escape Shift player may try to come up with a way. Can you end it right now? Okay, plus on Teferi, first things first. Unfortunately, the, the attack with Dryad Arbor doesn't change anything. Four mana. Omnath. No, oh, Omnath through Blood Moon, that's, that's, that's curious. Okay, draw. Unfortunately, all the all the colored mana is tapped now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this blood moon is just really cheeky, and you know what's probably annoying for Vito is that the fact the fact that he was yeah, also because drawn. it's the fourth turn, so it's uh, just another one, and then it's a draw, so you have to end in in this one. Yeah, technically, Probably. yeah, Vito can 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 ping, attack with Dryad down to three. Yep, down to three. And what about that? What now? Can you do the third land drop in some way? So that was the first the the first this land drop in four. Yeah, so we, we, we're we playing with timestamps now. And Dryad gives you all the colors, but then Bloodmoon came in and said, nope, everything is a mountain now. The second one? So now you have four mana for color? Because Bloodmoon doesn't yeah. affect that? Yes. For Omnath? A second Dryad? Ooh, a second Dryad. Nice. Oh, and there's a veil of summer in hand. You still have I to do three damages. I was, I was, I really thought that uh, that last card would be scape shift, but it's not. It's dried out. It's 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 the veil of summer, which can't be actually cast even because there is a chalice.
yeah, thinking, probably talking about what the options could be. Sometimes it's as spot players try to think what who would have won. But yeah. And so that concludes the round. I hope we yeah. won't warmed up. Yeah. We got uh, <laughs> three, three different matchups. Yeah, of course. It was round. very fast the first two. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I hope we'll get get even more action when uh, Will and Canister step yeah, in. Yeah, of course. In just a second. We just have to um, wait for the pairings, and then I think that they, w they will decide someone. Uh, yeah, so thank, so th thank you yeah. for joining <laughs> us for Thanks round everybody. one and uh, see you round two.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legacy European Tour. My name is Will, and I'm joined by the one and only Canister. We are back in the booth, and we're bringing you more modern action live here in Italy. Start off, though, we're gonna, we've got a few players to watch. We've got a few, a lot, you know, we've got eight players. We're going to pick them up on the screen. These are the players we're going to follow all weekend to see how they're getting on. Some big names on there. Simon Nielsen, obviously, you know, killing tournaments for the last couple of years. We've also got fan favorite man Gucci's on there. You know, big popular streamer like yourself. But then we've got a few others on there. We've got Oscar Christensen. You might remember him. He managed to take down uh, LMS Amsterdam. We've got uh, Pai Gonti's on there, which is Andrea Pai Pimonti. That's the one. Exactly. And then a few others. <clears throat> yeah, we see a few powerful players, mostly uh, starting with the winning records, so as you would expect. And we are going to follow the journey throughout the tournament and see how they are going to perform in this tournament a lot of steam vents i imagine in these decks if you look at them all a lot a lot of players have decided to bring the uh, the blue red powerhouses to this tournament it's quite interesting we spoke about this earlier off camera but you know, yourself what deck would you have bought this weekend same with you chat let us know in the chat what would you have bought this weekend if you were coming to to one of the lms big tournaments well, personally i would also be a steam vents uh player in this tournament as uh, in general we could say that the blue red combination in modern is kind of like definitely the well amongst the strongest if not the strongest mm. uh, i personally would uh, register uh, jeskai breach still i would utilize the grinding station uh, emery combo with the splash for the urza saga on top of that uh, something that uh, lately if some of the players uh, dropped off uh, but that will be my choice well, it looks like the players are well ahead of us here in the match that they've set off so it doesn't look like we've got dredge versus five color affinity but it's not actually affinity right it's got some sort of a uh, crazy combination of cards you're trying to explain to me before so to talk through what are we going to see here on the left hand side exactly. of our screens i i believe that uh, ivan had fallen a victim of uh, maybe the limitations of the mtg melee website uh, this time because i think his archetype was not accounted for in the available list of uh, archetypes that you could choose from uh, what uh, ivan is playing is a shape a new combo deck that also includes uh, Felder Guardian and Sahili for the Splinter Twin-esque uh, combination available. He's using Shape Anew with, uh, co in conjunction with uh, all of his lands being forests and uh, with uh, Gingerbread Cabin to produce a food token that he can subsequently Shape Anew into one of his two copies of Portal of 2 Phyrexia. A big, uh, big card, big effect on the battlefield. Yeah, one of the new, one of the new cards that we just seen printed. As we see Dredge doing what Dredge needs to do, we don't, you know, we've seen this a lot in the past, and it's kind of made a resurgence. I think it was like last weekend it made a, a good top eight finish online, and then we've seen, uh, you know, Dredge Master like Shodak pick this deck up and do really well with it, and now we're seeing, you know, people bring it this weekend and starting on turn two, with seven power on the battlefield. That's pretty powerful. As we see, this Leyline's Binding is going to come down at the end of turn and just get rid of. The big free free. Exactly. Dredge is like on and off in the modern meta game. This uh, often that you will hear the dredge players complaining about how their deck is not actually that good against anything and it's like tough to win and people can mess you up really bad with graveyard hate, but at the same time you will also hear lots of players who just don't play any graveyard hate at all because other th other than dredge, which is not very common, there is not much reason to do so, who actually dislike facing off against dredge actually so it's uh, very scary with the red black decks floating around right there's a lot of ley lines uh of uh the void floating around then we've also got uh dolphy void walkers these cards are just super problematic normally for dredge and that's ideally one of the most popular decks in modern currently so yeah yeah that's that's a problem for dredge as we're going to see the dredge and happen here so people don't know what dredge does the dredge mechanic basically you you mill over the top cards of your library instead of drawing a card for them so they play a lot of effects that are like discard to draw free but instead of drawing free cards they dredge free so they've got dredges that say judge five they get to turn over the top five cards of their library they each draw and as they keep going through it they're gonna eventually going to bring lots of cards into the graveyard that will have sort of different triggers as we'll see as they come back here these are the price amalgams come into play and that's a lot of power on the battlefield super early yeah gabriel just paid two mana for a cathartic reunion milled over plenty of cards put uh, a narcomiba and two price amalgams i believe from that effect alone onto the battlefield so i paid two mana and get seven power uh, that's a pretty good deal if you ask me and then on top of that there's more uh, valuable stuff milled over 
mixing so, some silver smooth uh, ghouls uh, potentially also oxovagonas coming in a few turns so so dredge doing what dredge wants to do it's kind of like the old school affinity where like that game one they normally win right it's, it's it's the game two and three that they really got to start struggling with trying to fight through the graveyard hate this deck doesn't mulligan quite well as we see there look just too much power game one's going to get taken now by dredge player but now we've got to start going into the sideboard what do we have in it are there going to be things like rest in peace on the other side because it is a closed deckless tournament for people wondering this weekend, I know in the finals, we do have open deck list, but because this is an NMS, we do have closed deck list tournament until we get to the top eight. There are 400 players turned up this weekend, all battling out to try and call themselves the champion of, here we go, the first time for the weekend, I'm going to try and say it, Triste? Trist Trieste. Trieste. I knew I'd get it wrong. But, you know, we're going to be battling out. We're going to see who can take down that trophy this weekend. But I didn't see much in chat. What deck would you have brought this weekend while we try and get the cyborgs up on the screen for you all yeah we see a few copies of endurance in the sideboard of uh ivan's deck so yeah two copies uh, of endurance and that's honestly it not much uh, else that specifically hates on the graveyard so i think ivan for the most part might need to rely on either drawing one of his two endurances which is not super likely or just on the basic power of his deck to carry him through it's also possible like for for how good dredge openings can be, it definitely can get stopped by Omnath, uh, the pitch elementals, leyline bindings, etc. And well, portal to Phyrexia honestly can go toe to toe with, uh, I guess, it's really yeah, <laughs> graveyard shenanigans so uh, competition. At, we've got the deck on on the uh, screen for you all here. But I'm looking at it, and as you say that you got the endurances, but other than that, not much else. Not that like I'm too prepared for it, but. Because that, am I going to bring spell pierces in here and try and hit something like a cathartic? Spell, you know, spell pierce is a pretty good one, yeah. Spell pierce can let you let you interact with dredge. Even slowing dredge a little bit is pretty effective. Uh, what cards? Because again, as as we said, uh, Ivan's deck can definitely go over the top of dredge in the late game, but uh, it's getting there. That's the problem. So what cards in here don't you like? What do you think's not good? What like what what don't we want in this matchup? Probably. Actually, not much. Like Ivan's deck is uh, built in such a way where it does not actually have point removal in the traditional sense, which makes sense. Which like makes sense, right? Because he's building towards the big finish of uh, Portal to Phyrexia, right? Yeah. So that is a great way to deal with creatures. So he just omits other ways to to deal with creatures because and that will be kind of redundant to just kill creatures. When, and then we have nothing to kill with Portal to Phyrexia, right? And then just throw in a Sahidi combo just because we got the colors. Yeah. Why not have a, you know, maybe get try and get that combo win? So you could see Fable of the Mineral Breaker as a potential cut. Does not seem particularly impressive in the matchup, maybe. We're going to see if we can get the uh, the Dredge sideboard up for you. But like, in my experience, I've played quite a bit of Dredge. Um, I feel like you always have to bring in answers for what they potentially could be bringing in. So we're going to have things like, as I said, we've got it on the screen for you here. So, we, you know, what do you, we got wearing tears, bubble holes, ley line. We got, we got eight ley lines here. What do you like here what, on the uh, droid side? Yeah, you could use some of the graveyard uh, hate, although I'm not even sure that uh, actually Gabriel realizes what exactly yeah, he's exactly. playing against. <laughs> you, you saw a couple land the ley line bunny, and you could think you're maybe on so it's, Rhinos you know, it's or not, Control it's deck. It's not clear that there's the uh, artifact uh, component to Ivan's deck with Portal to Phyrexia. Leyline of Sanctity is an answer to Endurance. It lets you have Hexproof, so you cannot be targeted by effects, and Endurance targets a player. So you could use Leyline, Leyline of Sanctity to avoid that. We, I'm not sure if... Uh, but you've, you've got to pit them on Endurance, right? There's so much graveyard hate now. Are they going to bring in an, endur uh, an enchantment, an artifact, or a creature? Which one do I bring in? Like yeah, Leyline's good yeah, if I exactly. know they're on Endurance. So but. I was about to say that we are, I'm not sure if... Uh, Gabriel is going to do much in general. You know, you won game one, you could just keep your deck the most consistent for game two. Scout what kind of uh, graveyard hate you have to face in that game, right? And then once uh, game three occurs, you can adjust and actually know what the proper tools to respond are and use them. All right, so players just shuffling up now. Going to draw their opening seven. So it looks like we might have a mulligan over on the dredge side. Dredge does mulligan quite a lot. Because not only are we yeah. looking for two lands, 
that's kind of the, the, the go-to is you always want to have two lands a way to pick cards in your dra graveyard and a dredger but now because it's post sideboard we also ideally want an answer to so some some sort of hate but looks are we how low are we dredging that looks like a lot of cards went to it does seem like a pretty pretty that, tiny hand is that a mold of four one two three four okay well you know it's dredge dredge does dredge things i've seen many decks when they've got the ideal two lands that i need that is a is that city of brass and a mana conference and look this is it it's finding a silver smoke and did we see a dredger I, see, I can't see a dredger on our screen at the minute we're going to see if we can get the graveyard pulled across of it seems like a dredger got hit unfortunately for gabriel only dredging over a few cards that don't actually affect the battlefield whatsoever from the graveyard so he gets to put the Golgari Fag in his hand and then draw two cards, which is not a very effective start. This is like part of the fell rate mm. with Dredge. I think, given enough time, Ivan will. Like, well, Alva, Ivan's deck is just full of tools to take over the game once uh, once we are out of the earliest turn. So I don't like uh, Gabriel's chances in this game anymore. Not bad on a, on a mold of four though, right? If we had both lands, we had a way to pit someone in the graveyard, and we had the dredger. So we had the, we had the uh, the four cards we realistically needed. If they managed to mill over a couple more dredgers there, that we could you know we could say in the game maybe ten power on the battlefield this turn on a mold of four, but it doesn't happen as we say the fail rate is quite high on this. And here comes a Teferi free. Big old time lever. I'm going to take it down. and just going to draw a card. Yeah, not very effective immediately, but you know draws a card, sets up a little bit uh, is. The, the effect of stopping your opponent from acting at instant speed does not do too much versus dredge. But here we see Gabriel going at it again, dredging four cards with uh, Golgari Thug. Tr triggering a Creeping Chill, which I think uh, is going to bring back two Silver Smooth Ghouls. So that's a beginning of a bot board state. Also, that's a Conflagrate going into the graveyard, not an Ox. I think the reason I call that was an Ox, but that's a Conflagrate. A uh, big finisher that they try to use. So normally they try and get a lot of chip damage in with uh, small wheelie creatures and they finish you off with this uh, fireball effect. As we see, six power does come back onto the battlefield. Yeah, notably, Conflagrate not so strong anymore now that the dredge builds do not commonly choose to run the card uh, okay. live from the loam. So, especially if Gabriel Mulgans a lot, then Conflagrate is honestly not always going to be very impressive. It could just be pretty small. So, where are we going to go with these? Fetch and response. It does seem like uh, Ivan is going to use the ability of uh, Teferi to let him cast sorcery cards at instant speed. He's fetching a gingerbread cabin, producing a food token, and we might see that uh, food token being shaped. And uh, I mean, I'm all about this. This is great. This is what I want to see in modern. Get rid of these merc tides. I want to see this boom. I like the how patiently he waited for, for the judge to hand over the food token to target <laughs> it. So, you know, make everything clear. Love it. So the food token goes. We're going to go start revealing. So now we reveal a card at the top of the library until we reveal an artifact. And that artifact <laughs> is always going to be Portal to Phyrexia, a nine cost uh, powerful artifact that. Uh, when enters the battlefield, will force uh, Gabriel to sacrifice three creatures. So all of the ghouls uh, come back to the graveyard, and now every upkeep, Ivan can reanimate a creature from a graveyard, any graveyard, to the battlefield under his control. And that's not all. Oh, that that's... creature will be a Phyrexian in addition to its other. I'm all about that new set coming out. You know, what I mean, I'm, a, I'm an infect man myself. As we see, the dredge, uh, no, the ox goes into the graveyard there. And another creeping chill. This is going to get some of the creatures from the graveyard back into place so they kind of get uh, reanimated, so to speak, on the other side. But not all of them. I think that ox might. Have we got four land? Well, we could do ox as well this turn, actually, right? It does seem like that. Yeah, there's plenty of cards in the graveyard. Okay, this could be a really explosive turnover for our judge players. See how they want to go this way. They are taking a lot of life, though, right? But I suppose they're gaining it from the creeping chills, one yeah, of the advantages. Yeah, they're mostly gaining it back from the creeping chills. It is pretty funny to have literally four copies of Mana Confluence or City of Brass on the battlefield. It does add up a lot, but. I like decks that go all in on it. Like, I'm going all in on my combo. Like, I don't care about my life total. Don't care about the card. I'm just going straight for it. 
Go for the jugular. If I get it, yeah, I've got it. If I don't, well, I'm probably going to lose that game. As we see, Gabriel hedged and brought in Werther as a answer to possible problem cards. I guess already seeing Leyline Binding, you know that if you draw that card, it has the potential of doing something. So you maybe don't feel so bad bringing, bringing it in. Yeah, there's a lot more creatures going in that graveyard. There's another creepy chill dropping down to seven. The life total is getting extremely low here. Dropping them down to seven. It does actually get pretty precarious for uh, for Ivan. And our last dredge is going to be five again. This is going to be a, a lot of power on this battlefield. Yeah, we see Narcomiba, the five three Ox of Agonas. <coughs> At least one prize amalgam. I think Seven, there, was a, there was a second one, yeah. Thirteen. And two Silver Smoke Ghouls, which just died to Portal of, Portal of Phyrexia, and suddenly the tides uh, have turned. Ivan will make a really powerful play here, end of turn, exiling a Teferi to pitch a Solitude, which puts a Solitude in the, in graveyard, the graveyard, so that he can reanimate it once again in his upkeep with Portal of Phyrexia. That is a great play as far as stabilizing goes, yeah. That's one good thing for the, the dredge. Normally, in the past, we've had a lot of like destroy effects, wrath effects, etc. But now there's a lot more exile effects. It really hurts this dredge, dredge deck because they can't get them back out of exile. Yeah. It's not very popular nowadays, but back when people used to play uh, Solitude together with Ephemerate a lot, that, that was just kind of devastating against the dredge because dredge is all about putting many, many creatures on the battlefield, and that combination matched up really well against somebody who just put like four creatures on the battlefield. You exile three of them, and then you have a life linker left on the battlefield, and then the entire premise of the prize amalgam coming back once you kill it does does not does not work. We also got this problem. Like obviously, we need to attack to do our combat damage. They just block the solitude and just get it back again next turn. So we you know can. Yeah. We're in a really sticky situation here, and here now here comes an Omnath. Do we have the land to go with it? Let's see. Yeah, yes. yeah, fetch land. Yeah, I think this might be a bit too much now. This just is going to be a lot of life gained. Just gaining life and passing, kind of like an un unbeatable strat <laughs> at, the, at this point. I mean, this is sort of like why we don't see too much of Dredge anymore, right? There's just so many good, p powerful cards that synergize well in modern now that have been printed over the last two to three years, kind of the COVID era. That dredges, this is why we kind of see it falling off, but has been making the resurgence online and they are up one game. As we're going to see more dredging happen. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we go through this? Obviously, a comic, the conflagrate might still be in there. Maybe that's a way that we can get these blockers out of the way. Yeah, well, conflagrate does help for a turn. You need to basically kill Ivan immediately. You see the uncracked Misty Rainforest just chilling there that represents three more life points effectively you pay one life and then you gain four so Ivan is at a high life at all and if you just don't kill don't deal lethal damage to Ivan immediately with the conflagrate then you still have to fight through the portal reanimating Omna for uh, soul to the next turn so it looks like we went two to the solitude one to the Omna and one to the face which I kind of like that cause it means that the, the Omnath, if it wants to block it, will have to die. Because all the creatures on the other side of the battlefield do have free power. Mm -hmm. And we'll just turn things sideways. This is a lethal attack. But obviously we've got the fetch if we need to. We could just go up to free life. Yeah, we're probably going to see the fetch being cracked. So there will be a trade that happens here. But then we're just going to, you know, do we get the Solitude back next turn or do we get the Omnath back? Which one, you know, the Omnath gives us the card advantage plus the life, or Solitude just starts chipping away and getting rid of this battlefield? Uh, it depends. I think you will probably lean towards Omnath if you have a fetch on your hand already because that's going to be more life gain. But what I chuckled at right here is the Gingerbread Cabin fetching, being untapped, and bringing a food token with itself. So basically, the fair use of Gingerbread Cabin can also mm -hmm. just bring you free extra life points, which uh, could be could be powerful this game. You can see another ox out the graveyard here. There can't be too many more cards left in that grave in that library. Yeah, a, a crucial piece of information is how many creeping chills have been triggered this game. I believe it's free so far. Classically on camera, they're doing the dredge off camera for us. Yeah. We'll see if we can get that moved across. Also a pretty interesting decision here uh, with Omnath 
blocking, right? You you block, you have to block to survive for the most part. So I understand that, and you want to block a free fire creature because you cannot block the Narcomiba, but you get the choice of blocking either the Silver Smooth Ghoul uh, or the Prize Amalgam. If you block the Prize Amalgam, and you know that uh, Ox of Agonas will be flashback this turn, which uh, I assume you could have seen in the graveyard then you will know that the Prize Amalgam will get triggered by the Ox returning. On the other hand, you could block the Silver Smoke Ghoul, which only is going to return from the graveyard to the battlefield if uh, Gabriel will gain any life, which is it's not the, a given. It's the last Creeping Chill, basically. You're pitting him on the, a, a smaller out to get that card back. I like that. That's a next level thinking. That's why, you know, we pay you the big bucks, get you in the booth, give that little bit of insight there of why you should block which creature instead of the other. It's not always free. These little details do kind of matter. It wouldn't have mattered that turn, ironically. But, uh, you know, being at free life and having 15, 23 ish points of power on the battlefield, yeah. maybe even this Omnath might not even work. Can we gain so much? We got Omnath trigger goes up to 7. Second Omnath trigger goes up to 10. Food pits is up to 13. If there's another, like, Conflagrate or something like that in the graveyard. I'm just going to cash in this to fairy. Let me check if there's another conflagrate in the deck list to begin with. Don't. There's just one conflagrate in the deck, so okay. I don't think to fear. Well, I guess you can fear it, but there's mm. no, it's not going to come. Uh, I think I even ne would need to cast some spells to get out of here because there is actually lots of power. Yeah, currently it's 12, 16 power unblocked. Remember, this was a mold of four. Yeah, this yeah. is a mold of four, and the, you know, the over on Ivan's side, he did what he wanted to do. Use this combo. Okay, we're going to see the fetch now, so we're going to use the mana. Yeah, I mean, with Dredge, the hand size, it just doesn't often really matter, right? Like, it yeah, doesn't matter if your hand is uh, is two more Stinkwidims or not. <laughs> not often. <laughs> Fetching a planes. All right. There's a lot of nice land floating around this weekend. Walk around the tables, a lot of people bought some of the fancy basics. And you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Okay. Hard cast portal to Phyrexia. Damn. So that deals with three of the flyers, but they're only one power. Still got Omnath. We have we got mana floating? Can we crack this food token as well? There's no mana floating because nine mana was spent on the portal to Phyrexia, so there's currently yeah. five three power creatures and one four toughness blocker. You get six life points, so Something massive would need to happen for Ivan to get out of this. No, and that's it. Dredge doing what Dredge needs to do. Taking it down. Look at that. Look, as Sodak jumps in the chat. Love to see his Dredge deck doing well. And we do have a backup feature match for you, so we're going to switch across to that one. It's pretty pretty impressive, uh, I guess, on the Dredge part. That was really impressive. You know what I mean? Doing what he needs to do against the deck. The, the other combo deck did what it wanted. Unfortunately, making your opponent sacrifice creatures when they can get them back really easily doesn't line up too well, but that's modern for us as we're going to go into this game where we've got Rakto Scam versus Is It Merc Tide. I feel like we're going to see a lot of this matchup this weekend. Yeah, and the players, uh, we see Raktus being piloted by uh, Giacomoni J, but his opponent is nobody else than uh, Andrea Mengucci, a very well-known uh, streamer, YouTuber, player, gamer, etc. Champion of different massive events you know and also i did I, i've seen him this weekend i can't what, I remember if he was wearing his uh signature scarf or not i'm sure he is just for people at home i know that's what people at home really want to know but then he's going to see how he's going to be taking down this matchup yeah we see a game which seems to favor uh, giacomoni a little bit uh, Menguchi from uh, behind stopping his mana to answer uh, his opponent's cards I think there's a Void Walker on the battlefield which is giving him a bit of a stake. Also, we can see there's a Ley Lines Void as well. So, yeah. oof, that's what we, we want to see off the top. If we take a look, we actually see a bit of a juicy card in uh, Giacomoni's deck. Namely, what I see, what I spot in the graveyard is a copy of Scourge of the Skyclaves. A card that used to be actually a pretty big player in Modern, in the mm. between Modern Horizons 1 to Modern, modern Horizons 2. Uh, era, but kind of uh, fallen off since well, then. Well, since the print of Solitude. <laughs> yeah, Solitude. <laughs> Solitude wrecks it. Dress down. Yeah. Just like, you know, having other options available, like Duffy Voidwalker, Ragavan. 
MH2, okay, so as Manguchi draws, how is he going to start navigating this turn? It's only at four life points, he is up a game. Yeah, at four life points, it's pretty easy to die. Didn't get a good look at what was drawn there. Again, look at these basics. There's a lot of nice basics on this battlefield. I'm going to speak about that a lot this weekend. I'm a big fan of basics at the minute. We're just going to throw this out. Block, bolty. Got yeah, the mana to play around Spell Pierce. And as simple as that, we're just going to go see if we can get uh, the sideboards up for these. Boah, straight into it. So we're going to start off with the Racto Scam and see what they've got in their deck. See the spiciness that you're talking about. So... Looking at the sideboard, what do you like there? Obviously, we saw the ley lines came in there, and we did see a push was in the graveyard, so we, you know, we can tell you a good chance that they've come in. But is it anything here you think, oh, this is a game killer against Merc Tide, or swings it into uh, their favor? Nothing really is a game killer against Merc Tide. Merc Tide is, you know, has the uh, feature of being a very flexible deck into a very mid range deck with a pretty lots of flexibility and uh, pretty even power level so i don't really have cards that just shut down Merktite. but uh, leyline of the void is a pretty def defensible card uh, that you could use in the matchup and uh, as we see uh, giacomoni giacopo is uh, going with that plan um one thing maybe, that's done, maybe done the fail pushes here to on the draw to deal with ragavan a bit more with ledger shredder they decided to go for the uh, the four one split of Fable and Season Pyromancer. Normally you see what you know one or the other, but they decided to play both, and they decided to go more on the Season Pyromancer side than the uh, the Fable, mainly because obviously well Fable is easier to splash. You know you only need one red mana symbol. Where on the other side of Season Pyromancer you do need two, so a lot of players do tend to go towards the Fable here. But what what do you think about this? Do you, do you like the Young Pyromancer line? Do you think it's better in this match? These sort of matchups, maybe they thought we we're going to play against a lot of Merc Tide. Season Pyromancer is better in this matchup, or do you, do you, do you like Fable? Well, I, f I think Season Pyromancer suits the deck a little bit better in, uh, in this exact uh, situation. The Fotsis deck, Fotsis Grief deck, frequently top decks, like, puts both itself and the opponent in a situation where both players are top decking. So when you're both top decking, then Season Pyromancer is generally a stronger card than Fable of the Mirror Breaker, as it lets you just draw two cards immediately push the advantage pretty pretty huge card advantage when you do that uh fable of the mirror breaker is kind of like a fifth effect uh, for um for our uh, ragdos player in here it seems now we've got man gucci's deck on the screen for you what's jumping out of you here what do you want mm, we see a braid very nice a braid <laughs> uh, unlicensed hairs might come in i'm not sure about that myself if like i would want that card but it is possible that uh, andrea would want to use it dress down is a card that's pretty interesting especially once we've seen uh, the score of the sky clays then the stock of dress down goes up a lot fury and subtlety are both cards i kind of like because they're relatively strong top decks i would bring them in not expecting them to to be pitched to be evoked very often i would just pay them for four or, or five mana on the top of my deck often they also do not use the graveyard whatsoever so they're pretty useful at uh, containing uh, your opponent's opening with a ley line as it looks like we're going to kick off and we do have a ley line of the void on the battlefield turn zero as Manguchi is going to start off with the most powerful one drop ever printed prove me wrong well some people would uh like to engage in lengthy discussions as to whether Ragavan or Deathrite Shaman is the better, the best uh, one drop in the history of the game. But uh, if it doesn't get killed, it's certainly going to be very good. And like we see, we see that plenty of times, right? Mm -hmm. Like Leyline of the Void right here in play, effective against a certain portion of Andrea's deck, but very ineffective against Ragavan, uh, against Ragavan's opening. So I believe, like, if a game goes this way, where where Giacomo opens with uh, a ley line on turn one but does not have a good turn one play that contains Ragavan, he's at a huge disadvantage because already Andrea has made a treasure and he's just he's just ahead, right? Damage damage is dealt, like the treasure is up, he holds up mana for potential counter spell mm -hmm. and that's just gonna 
that has the potential to spiral out of the game. And that's the scary thing about this this one drop, right? It's not. It also ramps you in a deck where now potentially next turn we can play a Merc side and hold up counter spell thing. You know, what I mean, we can stop two yeah, yeah. casting two spells a turn. I, d I doubt Andrea will cast in Merc with this flare um, on the battlefield. Very, the battlefield. very much but as an example, it is it is true that being able to both develop and hold up counter magic is what makes Ragavan so scary in this deck. Point chat work, chat room to me saying that no, they reckon Deathlight Shaman is the most powerful one drop ever printed. There's a lovely discussion I'd love to have with people. I think I think it's a, uh, let's let's narrow it down to modern legal right now most powerful one drop. If we go by modern, here comes the goblin guys. Sure goblin guys, so much power. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, as we're gonna see, the Ragavang is gonna come in for a second hit, and it is gonna hit one of the uh, the the scam effects. There's multiple of them that they use. I don't think they're gonna want to use it this turn. But again, it's more that it's building this treasure. Now we've got four mana opposed to our opponents two. Yeah, you can do stuff like play Ledger Shredder and hold up mana, or play an iteration to develop and hold up mana. Good stuff. Okay, yeah, chat's got it right. It's Young Wolf. Young Wolf is the best one drop. Where's my Yarg players at? Yeah, Andrea seems to seems to take his time to think about what exactly he wants to do. Some of the scary plays that uh, Jacoma could use to come back into the game is, for example, using a Fury, especially a Fury with an Evoke uh, trick with the Undying Evil or uh, Undying Malice, whatever is the name of, the, of that card, right? Uh, so he probably wants to play around that, but as we see, he opts not to bluff a counter spell, probably simply because he doesn't have one. So he spends his mana fully on going Ledger Shredder into Expressive Iteration, getting a Connive, growing the Shredder. Uh, very nicely for Andrea, we see him uh, taking a Subtlety to his hand, which protects him from Fury from now on. Looks like we've got Lightning Bolt, uh, two iterations, and that Subtlety that you said. So yeah, we've got the blue card ditch, we've also got a bit of burn if we need to do that. He's setting himself up quite well. This, and this is the powerful of this deck, right? We had a turn one Ragavan hasn't been answered. We've now forgot to follow up with uh, uh, one of our powerful two drops while holding mana up, while advancing our hand. And on the other side, there's no scam effects happen. We've kind of sat on this ley line hoping for the best of it. But now we're going to turn three. This is where we start getting some of the more powerful spells could be played here. Are we going to have the third land drop? And uh, so did like I say, on a Fable right now, Fable on this board is not, not going to be great. Yeah, it's not awesome. Like, and, and again, if you try to play a big creature then if you try to play like season pyromancer then andrea probably will uh, use his subtlety okay here comes the fury right so yeah we see the fury and andrea probably will use the subtlety just to not risk falling behind pretty painful to actually get rid of that expressive iteration not a card you you want to exile from your hand willingly very often but here it is pretty pretty big uh, swing right whether this resolves or not yeah, it's the same that, you know, do we want our card, one of these creatures to die? Or are we happy to kind of two for one ourselves for it? I know they've two for one themselves. Looks like they've been a Fury back on top, but we're going to shuffle it away anyway with this fetch line. You could see that Giacomo, like, at first wanted to put the Fury on the bottom, and then was like, yeah, I guess I'll put it on top, mm -hmm. and then <laughs> play with fetch line, yep. which made it irrelevant in the end anyway. So probably just choosing the higher efficiency move of putting it at the top instead of fiddling to put it on the bottom as you are going to full shuffle anyways. So season the... Season power comes down. Mangich remembering his connive trigger. We're going to ditch these two, make a 1 1 elemental token, and draw two. Season Pyromancer is very good at stopping Ragavan beats. So, even, yep. though, even though Andrea got two hits with Ragavan, I think the fact that he did not have a counter spell up after that time really hurt him because uh, he was not able to block this like crucial play on this turn and had to go with the iteration exile to to pitch to subtlety move here and then we're gonna lightning bolt end of turn so actually andrea is a little bit out of gas which is, it was a second spike you know he gets to go for turn for his deck a little bit more <laughs> iteration he's no longer out of gas and we see another iteration the iteration into iteration is just such a powerful line and it just happens so often because of the, the card selection this card gives you it was over a land or a dragon range channel. I think he put the land in his hand over the churn. Uh, we're going to cast the ball ball. That's going to be our second spell. Are we on the connive now? Or is it, have we missed that? No, no, we are conniving. And is conniving. thinking as to what to discard from his hand. Uh, sizing on the shredder seems to matter a lot. 
uh, keeping the island made it so that it was a little bit awkward because discarding the island doesn't grow the shredder, so we'll see yep. what's gonna happen. Go to combat. Yeah, shredder didn't grow, but attacks for four, down to nine. Check the top card. Upkeep. Join so the upkeep and pass. Or Remember rather pass and join the upkeep. Now, how are we gonna respond to this? Fatal push straight away. Mm. Andrea really doesn't like that. I think he was relying on the Shredder to, to do the heavy lifting in this game mm. a lot. Pretty passive turn or otherwise from Giacomo. Consider end of turn, ditching a consider and drawing it. It looked like another lightning bolt. That does free up room for this uh, Ragavan if you want to try and connect it. I believe that's the last iteration available for Andrea. So a land remover spell and a ledger Shredder. Yeah, the obvious play would be to go to take Island and Ledger Shredder and play the Ledger Shredder. Although, that can be really scary if you if you get Furied for 5 mana night. So we're going to Lightning Bolt the block out the way. Hope this connects. It does. We hit a Fury. Well, that's good. <laughs> and sometimes a Fury that does not come down. And now but yeah, and Andrea basically knew that there is no removal for the Dragavan, so he was free to kill the token right here. Because... Uh, I guess he kind of knew that there is no there was no fury no removal earlier in the game because uh, Giacomo played in such a way where it did not seem like he has much removal. Oof, we were mistaken. There is a fury, <laughs> but very like very luckily for for Andrea, it's a pitched one. If it was a land play fury, kill oh, yeah. two of your things, keep the free free double striker. That's like an entirely different story. He's looking. He's building up. A, I think we cast two lightning bolts this game. He's got another one in hand. The opponent is only at seven. He only has to get a few more points of damage in. I think he's got all red cards in hand. Is that two unholy heats and a f in a fury and a lightning bolt? Might have been a land for the turn. If I, I think there is a fury, yeah. Oh, it's a brazen borrower. <coughs> End of turn, brazen borrower. That could get three points in. Yeah, notably, Andrea no longer has any iterations to top deck because he already used <laughs> all of them. I think he cast three of them and exiled the fourth one. We're going to make some more ones in the turn. Draw Mangucci needs just one more point of damage to go across, and that lightning bolt should finish it off for him. Yeah, looking like that might be the course of the game. Giacomo looking for removal spells. I think like he's got a lot of Blade Lines of the Void in hand, I think. Yeah, that's the danger. That's, that's the danger. And we do see Mangucci taking it down, going to 2 0 with the bugbear of the weekend, I'm going to call it. Is it Murktide? We're going to see if we have a backup feature match again. It looks like we do. I'm getting the thumbs up. So. We'll just get that drawn across for you. If people are just watching for the first time, welcome. This is the Legacy European Tour. We do things slightly different here at the minute. And we have two feature matches. We have the table A and the table B. Standard. We've seen this multiple times. So we'll be able to give you two games. But then when one of those games finishes, we, we, the judges run out and they grab players that are sideboarding. We move them across. So we get the most amount of paper coverage for you all uh, in between, you know, keep them all we, we could talk forever about whatever we need to but realistically we know you're all here just to watch the uh the beautiful game that we're watching so we're going to try and move it across let me have a quick look i'm getting some updates yeah, exactly you can also like take some notes about what happened in this game uh, definitely Giacomo got punished for boarding in the ley line of the void and the matchup that comes down to attrition often so you know not a good top deck not a card you want to draw much you really rely a lot on your season pyromancer discarding it for value later in the game that did not happen and the uh, scrappy beats from andrea and the card advantage from three expressive iterations casts cast throughout the game just put him over the edge and we see this a lot like right? and i've spoke about it numerous times is people over cyborging in matchups like you you board in i think i think these 10 cards would be great but then you've got to take 10 cards out of your main deck which dilutes your main deck and sometimes you know you, you don't end up doing what you just dawdle a little bit while your opponent's like no i, I board like two or three cards if i hit them great if i don't i'm gonna keep doing what i need to do exactly one way of thinking about sideboarding is that you you add the good cards from the sideboard the answers for what your opponent is doing another way to look at sideboarding i guess a more generalistic one would be just looking at sideboarding like as what it is which is deck building you are deck building from a small pool of 75 cards you're choosing the 60 that you want to play so it's kind of like deck building on a very limited scale but uh, you need to keep your deck cohesive and have a good plan and be able to perform uh, its strategy without stumbling too much so we do have a uh 
back up for you. We're just going to get the names changed in the decks on there. But I believe it is Living End versus Hammer Time that we've now got. I'm not entirely sure what game we're in. We're going to start, you know, slowly start populating that information on your screen. But before then, we can just watch, see who's uh, going to be on the play. Who do you think's favoured in a Living End versus uh, Hammer Time matchup? I think it's a pretty close matchup. Depends on the amount of interaction that the Hammer deck is is being able to present. If it's a white Hammer deck without uh, access to blue splash spell pierces, then I would put it somewhat solidly in Living End's favour. If it's a blue splash hammer deck i think it's very very close and uh, pretty dependent on the exact uh, wrinkles of the deck lists looks like they're just waiting for us to give them the green light we pass that down that they're ready to go but ladies and gentlemen if you were here this weekend what deck would you have brought what would you bring this weekend canister would have bought breach i think i would have been on it's probably Breach with Yargmoth. I feel like I might trust it. Is, you know, I know Yargmoth in and out. I know all the interactions. I know what I need to do in each game. But, like, Breach is, like, the new spice, isn't it? That people, like, I see people winning with it, like, just, oh, well, like, they win the game. Just combo, like, turn two or three. I'm like, what, what is going on? Oh, but this deck's so quick. So, I think, you know, if, if I was risky, I think I would have bought Breach. But if not, I think I would have bought Yargmoth this weekend. I think in the tournament, uh, I think in a format like Modern, it's pretty good to go with the deck, you know, in and out. And it's a pretty big advantage. I think uh, the differences between the power levels of decks are often uh, small enough that uh, the experience can trump much. So it would be a hard choice. Like, really, you know, of course, a new shiny deck is cool and you want to play it and mm. you want to experience it. But at the same time, <coughs> having that experience with the Yogmoth deck that you are describing certainly would uh, go a long way. I think and you see that reward players a lot in modern like, you know like merfolk players they always bring merfolk but then like you know one weekend merfolk will just absolutely run rampant one weekend we saw that in magic 30 two merfolk decks managed to make it in the top eight and it's yeah. just knowing what your matchup is are you the control are you the uh the aggressor in this matchup do you have to have that you know silver bullet try and not lose the game in that single turn as we see here turn one starting off with the cigar is aid on the you know this is what we want to be doing i did we'd want something like a zero mana creature to go with it Try and threaten that big hit this turn, but we didn't have it. As we see, end of t uh, turn a cycle, we're going to start hitting big creatures into our graveyard, and then ideally on turn three, we're going to cascade into Living End and basically wrath the board and bring back all the creatures from the graveyard. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty strong start from uh, from Marco <coughs> on Hammer here. Yep. Uh, getting to deploy the Inkwell Nexus, which is a creature that threatens to kill in one shot with uh, Cigar Z, uh, Colossus Hammer and very notably is also not a creature mm -hmm. so it does not die to living end uh, so we need like an we need an instant speed living end but we're not going to be able to cast it and potentially next turn we could have an infect uh win. yeah we've seen we've seen that uh marco mancini had a force of negation in his hand so he's gonna be able to interact with the hammer if uh if uh, Radi Vojevic will choose to go for that line, so there is going to be a little bit uh, of uh, push and pull in this game. So talk to me about, like, when you play, I play Living End, normally I'm cycling end of turn. Why are we cycling main phase these days? The reasons to cycle main phase are simple. Oftentimes you play Grief uh, in your deck, and if you just draw a black uh, card or your Grief, if you complete the co two-card combo, you can just evoke it at sorcery speed. I guess Hammer... Oftentimes you will want to evoke sooner, like uh, sooner rather than later, just to see your opponent's hand, prevent them from damaging you, prevent prevent them from comboing off with the hammer. Early in the game, uh, against some other decks, uh, you might want to cycle end of turn anyways because you are going to hold up hold up your grief to the last moment to punch through interaction if that interaction is specifically counter spells. As we're going to see, Ink Moth fired up here. Yeah, Radi Vojevic does not have an extra mana, which would very nicely let him play around Force of Negation. But just he doesn't have that, so he has to cast the Hammer. If he had one extra land, he would be able to put the Colossus Hammer into play with Stoneforge, Mage, Stoneforge Mystics excuse me, ability, uh, which would bypass Counter Magic. But as we see, the hammer is cast. Uh, 
when exactly. against player is uh, exiling a blue card from his hand, you also negation the hammer and takes only one poison damage. Didn't look at a good look at what blue card was ditched, but blue card was ditched, and yes, that gets to exile. Thank you very much, judges. And just one infect's going to come across. Yeah, but but notably that ink of nexus still stays here and still going to be threatening the kill in the air. If uh, Mancini living ends though, we see two curators of mysteries in the graveyard. They would come back and they would be flying, so they would be able to block the ink move. We didn't attack with Stoneforge last turn. I wonder if that point might end up making all the difference in this matchup. Probably won't. It'll probably decide in one big swing. Yeah, it's I don't see I don't see a reason not to attack with the Stoneforge Mystic, so we'll see if that point ends up being the crucial one that the game comes down to. We're going to go for it again. This is where it's scary, so we missed our third land drop. Okay, do we have something like a, maybe a Brazen Burrow or something along those lines? Yeah, I don't see the exact components of hand. I think I see a Brazen Burrow here. So, in for one. No blocks. Cast a hammer. Oh, it's another Force Negation. Yeah, another attempt at uh, common kill. We see another Force Negation. Maybe we're going to do some cycling in response. I think we say two Brazen Borrowers even. Yeah, so I think we're going to cycle in response here, try and hit our third land drop, and we're going to use the Force Negation on this. Well, I would guess, but we don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, probably. Nobody knows. Crazy things have happened on camera. Cycle, cycle. Doesn't look like we hit our third land drop out of them, so now we're going to have to use this Force to for one ourselves. So what you know, talk about that line. Like, so we we had the option of brazen borrowing, bouncing the hammer back to the hand, but then we've got to deal with it again. But that yeah. is just a one card for one card. In this situation, we're kind of two for oneing ourselves. Do you, you know? Is it detrimental? I can't even say that word. Detrimental to the living end deck, two for one themselves, or are they they happy just doing this and going well, off? Well, the thing I described can happen, right? Where uh, if uh, as we see, Radivojevic played a tapped Zikram Coast. If uh, he had another untapped land, which I guess he did, the uh, Hard Fountain. So that was a line that was not taken for some other reason, maybe. Um, what could happen is that the Stoneforge Mystic could use its ability to flash in the hammer, which then would mean that it's an ability, not a spell. So you cannot force of negation that. So. You probably should prioritize using Force of Negation in this spot while you can, while your opponent gives you the opportunity. If you flash the hammer back and they use the ability, then you'd get uh, put in a bad spot and you wouldn't be able to interact anymore with your Force. And now we're seeing the upkeep uh, outburst here into Living End. We know that the coast is clear. We've looked at our opponent's hand. We're going to get all these cards back. This is going to be a lot of power. So that's free. 10, 15... Pretty 20, good card to hit with your cascade spell in this spot. I think it's like 31 power, and uh, you know, a, a grief trigger it doesn't really do anything. Yeah. And go. So we're doing it in the upkeep before the draw step because we obviously want to play around things like spell pierce, mana leak, who, uh, you know, all these different interactions that they possibly could have. But now we've got a blocker for the ink moths. If I've got an advantage bar, I'm pushing it pretty far to the right. I could imagine activate Ink of Nexus into draw Colossus Hammer, Colossus Hammer on the Nexus, draw another Hammer, another Hammer, and then draw Shadow Spear, and that is still not good enough. Because <laughs> the Ink Moth would lose flying from all the Hammers, so <laughs> <laughs> it could be blocked on the ground by all the creatures. So. Okay, that does look like that is going to be the last game, though. I think all the games have finished out on the floor. Uh, there's only a couple of minutes left of the round anyway, so you know, you're know you not going to have too long a break, ladies and gentlemen, but that's... Uh, that game kind of went pretty one-sided, pretty hard. Both decks trying to do that big one-shot kill, and we saw, you know, Living End come up trumps that weekend there. So we'll see if we can get the uh, the slide for all the different destinations up on the screen. And we'll, do, we'll talk for that quickly before we uh, go to a break, and then you'll have uh, Lily and uh, Skura back to take you guys through round three. Exactly. I'm just going to work and get out. There we go. It's going to come across in a second, I'm sure. There we go. So, things can get a bit confusing because obviously we're currently uh, in round three. This is the first event for round three and people are going to be qualifying to play in the finals in Athens. But we do have Napoli coming up the finals, which, you know, if the Pro Tour doesn't go your way, you also will be take, turning up at that event and playing out. But that is going to be when our next time we're going to be in Italy and that is the finals. That will be standard. 
People in Barcelona qualified for that one. People today are going to be qualifying for Athens. And then after we, we finish in Naples, we will have Prague, which is again more modern. Don't know about you, but I love Prague. It's one of my favorite cities in Europe. I'm, well, I'm, I, think, I'm a, I think Prague is very nice, and I think modern is very, is very nice, so it's a good combination. I'm a big, big fan of, the, of uh, the event in Prague. I'm really looking forward to that one. And then Athens. I hear a lot of good things about Athens. They keep uh, telling me on Twitter how good the food is there, and that's the easiest way to my heart, tell me how good the food is. But that just, you know, we've got that graphic trying to show everybody wh where we're at, what's coming up, where it's going. So hopefully, you know, if you're thinking about turning up to one of these events, why not? Turn up, see if you can do better than everybody else. One last thing on that one is, Make sure you're following the casters. We get discount codes. Save some money. You know what I mean? That's we do. It's, it's for you guys. You know, I, but we turn up anyway. But you guys, you know, get yourself a little bit discount while you're there. Why not? But that is going to be us for round two. We're going to be back with Lily and Skura for round three of more modern action. We'll see you all soon.
say before, so I didn't know. I don't know if there was another monk type before. Uh, before today? Yeah. Yes, there was. There, there was. was. Yeah, yeah. Andrea Mengucci playing monk type. Oh yeah, right. Uh, so we've got Zabaz, the the great wasp in Cardinal Scales, which basically acts as another copy of Cardinal Scales, uh, but not really. So it doesn't it doesn't give you another counter any time, but it does give you another counter when you use modular, so you move counters around, which works with Zabaz, works with uh, Agon Ravager, most importantly. And hmm. it seems like it's not Zoo indeed, we'll be watching Merc Tide. Now theoretically, scales should be pretty good against removal from from Merc Tide because so many creatures are resilient. No. So on the board you think that scales is uh, um, in a better spot? I would say so, yeah. Now, okay. the problem is that Merktite is much more efficient, but uh, when they actually trade resources, Scales is going to be ahead because yeah, okay. Hangerback Walker leaves Thopters, Ballista can shoot you, uh, you know, Agbon Ravager can move counters around. Okay, so we've got Ancient Stirrings. Ancient Sterrings into the deck is excellent. I mean, it um, probably out of all of the cards, the other non-colored cards is something like Sterrings itself and Hardened Scales. Okay, so we've got Hangerback Walker. This is exactly the card I was I was mentioning a moment ago, right? So mm -hmm. Hangerback yeah, Walker, if it resolves, actually, and the Saga, it's it's really annoying. Yeah, Saga is also also very good against removal, and yeah, we've got. Knife trigger. It's <laughs> Capsto, technically speaking, I do not have a boyfriend. Practically, I have a girlfriend. Okay, so we've got Knife here and uh, the Ozolith. No. The Ozolith is. Uh, very strong against removal because mm. anytime you kill a creature with counters, these counters don't dissipate. Yeah, exactly. They don't dissipate, they always go on the Ozolith. And you can make like, really weird interaction between Modular and Ozolith where you, you know, seemingly out of nowhere, can make a creature like a 5 5 or 10 10. Right, so we've got okay. Dash Dragavan. Attack with Bolt. Right, so now a treasure will be made and we'll see if Danielle will want to create a 1-1 Hangerback Walker. No, no okay. holding a mana. Probably Counterspell. Um, although Counterspell is not going to be great in the face of the saga. And it's changing the, Treasure the token. token. <laughs> yeah, we actually we've got a like a full table of tokens. Yeah. Um for clarifying for the only for the streams because it's more clear. Yeah, yeah. Because people have got you know, they prefer tokens yeah. and that's great. Um no. But but we need clarity for the people mm -hmm. in chat. There's so many different people watching. Not everybody will be able to recognize each and every art now, it's already difficult as is like for example yeah. stan's forest you know, <laughs> like it looks like like jupiter you know it might not be obvious that it is indeed a forest and it is a forest also sometimes you can use tokens and say oh let's make this one this treasure uses like a, a goblin a, yeah a, a something different yeah exactly so i I was skeptical of whether Stan had a land, but but he does. But he d he opts out of using Saga, walks into a potential counter spell. So I'm curious what the what the plan is. I assume it's like hardened scales. Um, he played the land before, beforehand, so that he plays around spell peers. Now Hangerback Walkers on the stack. It would be X equals one. Yeah, and counter spell. It is. Now, Ozolith and Scale stay on the battlefield, so now the question is whether Stan can can stick any threat with counters onto the battlefield. That Saga can search out, for example, as a Baz, which is indeed a creature with counters and helps other creatures. 
you can't see what is draw with expressive iteration. No, it's we have to make his decision, but <coughs> okay. Ensuring a land drop. So basically, Merkta is playing the control game, mm -hmm. just countering everything he can. Will the the flying creature will be enough? Well, or not? I I don't think so because I mean it attacks for three. Yeah, um, it's a very long. But it would take yeah it's like five turns of attacking, which is a long time. Yeah, attack for three right now. That's true. That's true. For now, it's three. Stan, I assume, will be will aim to multi, multi spell every turn. Now we've got the dash dragavan trigger. Yeah, I think Danielle is just really, really conniving every turn. Oh yeah, and it's <laughs> going for it. The problem is that there will be only one mana left, so this is the opening yeah. for Stan. Unfortunately, probably the card he would want to cast in the first place is getting exiled with Ragavan, and pass. Now Saga takes up to three. Let's see if there will be any tokens coming. Now the unfortunate, yeah, so there is a token coming. However, Stan spends three mana to do it, while Danielle can just get rid of it with a single unholy heat. But you've and got a construct token. token. I think soon enough um, uh, the judges will switch this, to be fair, beautiful token. Yeah, it's amazing. For for any of the official tokens. And the buzz is found. Enters with one more counter because hardness kills on the battlefield. Yeah. I'm really fond of Hardness case because it's really funny to play, I think. Yeah, there's so much happening. And you think you're alive, but you might not be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no one holy hit spell peers in a hand ow, oh, but Daniel is keeping the cards really close to their chest. Attack for four. Okay, so actually maybe maybe Ledger Shredder and Bolt. Ooh. Oh my god. Is it just just kill you? Ooh, Bridget. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Will this kill you? Let's go. <laughs> Very Let's nice. Let's go. That was nice. That was unexpected. Nice. Reach for the win. Yep. On the table. As you said, this case should be um, in a better spot. Yeah, I mean, if should. again, if there is this trading going on, yeah. but what uh, Danielle said is, well, I'm not trading with you. I'm going for the kill. And <laughs> yeah, that worked. We've got double breach in this list and triple main deck spell piece. That's a ton of spell piece. Um, so it's yeah, just just one merc tight. So the name is is a merc tight, but is it? <laughs> it's it's more breach than it is merc yeah. tight. Exactly. And what do you think he should uh, list in, side sideboard in and sideboard out? Right, so again, scales, I really like dress down because you can put it on this, uh, like in response to a creature on the stack, play mm -hmm. dress down and make it enter, just basically die. Um, the dress down has a lot of applications, you know, turning off Infect from Ink Moth Nexus. You could consider Blood Moon because of Saga and Ink Moth Nexus, yeah. uh, potentially, depending on how much you, you can side out. Explosives is good, and a braid is good, and fury. So fury can be a hit or miss. It could be awesome if it cleans cleans uh, the battlefield. It, it's much worse if the opponent plays, for example, hanger back walker. Mm. So it, re it is going to be really dependent. Um, but what you could do technically is play fury, and with the triggers on the stack, play dress down, and then dress down uh, turns off hanger back's trigger, and then kill it. So and we uh, have the second one, the scales. Um, yeah, scales. Now, I, what I really like about this version is it's a version with four main deck welding jar. Le yeah, let's let's four main deck welding jar and four patchwork automaton, right? And mm -hmm. patchwork automaton has ward two. So even if you have a one mana removal spell to kill it, you will still have to pay two. So an holy heat in the best case costs three, and that's a huge huge tempo swing. So. I mean, to be fine, even more confident in the scales matchup. And I really want to see scales do their thing because they've got all the tools they need. They might side in a uh, module to go wide. Now, the spicy thing, chat, right top corner, Phyrexian Metamorph is in the sideboard. Phyrexian Metamorph. What, I mean, woof, that's, that is a, if, if any tech is spicy, this is spicy. 
Okay, and we're off to to another game. No, they're sideboarding. Okay, yeah, it seemed yeah, like yeah, they yeah. were. Okay, they're side. <laughs> I really thought Daniel had uh, their opening hand, but they're all shuffling up. Too many cards. Yeah. And that game was pretty fast. I was like, what, yeah. five minutes, seven? Minutes? Yeah, exactly. So. But don't worry, chat. We have a second table, and if it's very fast, also the second table, we will have a third. We yeah. will try to uh, let you see as many as many magic as we can. Exactly. Like last round, there were four. Yeah. Uh, uh, literally four. We got A, B, C, and D tables. Okay. So again, players are shuffling up. I think Daniel is still sideboarding and now siding in the cards they want to side in. And let's see if the game will be about removal, interaction, grinding, or rather, like it was here, aggression from the Merktide side. Now yeah, probably because you, you can expect other scales in this tournament. So you have you have to come here prepared for this matchup. So f specifically for scales, not really, but certainly for creature decks uh, overall, because you know, especially with such open open meta games, you could find you know, one humans player here, a few merfolk pr players there. You know, yeah, we've got one scales player, one some you no know, affinity here and there. So you do have yeah, to be ready for creatures. Not with sideboard, but with your mind, you have to to know you know what scales do, so you you can think probably what you should or should not, what you can expect from him. Oh, that oh, absolutely. I mean, it depends how, yeah, uh, of course. how um, oh, when you came into Modern to play it. Yeah, because right. Because if you're a long time Modern player, you know what's going on in scales. But if you're not, if you're relatively new, I mean, relatively new, if you've been playing for like half a year, a year, I don't think you will have, a, have an extended knowledge mm. of scales. That's right. Um, and you know, what's what's great for Merktite is that Ledger Shredder, like we saw, has evasion. So Merktite can just do their thing, and while they're do doing their thing, just bash in for one, for two, for three. Yeah, the treasure is is out of the of the table. Of course, it was just there from the game before. Okay, stun moved to six. Let's see if that is keep. I I saw. Oh, I can see an Ozolith. I can see Dismember. Ozolith's going back. Interesting. So probably it will stay. <coughs> it will keep six. Yeah, there's a buzz in hand. This one being a hand. But it's very interesting to ditch Ozolith. Yeah, he's ah, he's unsure. <laughs> Ozolith no, is yeah. so good in this matchup if they're but trading. But he decided to. Oh, I think I saw Patchwork Automaton, uh, in hand. So Patchwork mm, Automaton okay. is going to be really good. For the sure, there is a Nusa Saga, in his hand. Oh, Saga plus Patchwork Automaton would be great. Oh, it yeah. is. Oh, la la. That's good. That's really solid. <coughs> Very good start. <laughs> I mean, to be the best start. Like, yeah. Consider? That's a start I would like. Okay, ditch, island, draw. So no removal even for the Baz. Mm -mm -mm. So let's... Ma but maybe there is like something like... I mean, Fury doesn't really help the face of Ward. Oh, take up Saga. Yeah. Got Saga set. Picked up. <laughs> he didn't forget. Yeah, he didn't. Okay, that no artifact free combat. Interesting. So, so he's probably going for saga activation. Yeah. So now Daniel is in a real squeeze because he has to deal with Patchwork Automaton, mm -hmm. but he has Ward too. Zabaz is a s very small threat, but has a lot of utility down the line. And there is saga going. <coughs> but there is also Dress Down in hand. So Dress Down is going to take care of the tokens. Yeah, it's a lot of things to resolve for him right now. What you Maybe. could also do is dress down, dress yeah. down turns off ward from Patchwork Automaton and then kill it. Yeah. That's all something like, oh, walking right into that dress down. Oh, dress down plus removal is going to be backbreaking here. The hand of Saga. Oh, welding, well, welding jack would be found, yeah. Well, and they were switching the, the token, I think. This is not the second token, or is it? It is. It is the second construct second token. Second con Okay. Second construct token. Forest. Goes for attacks. With 
three uh, of them. They're counting, yeah. Yeah, yeah because of course. Th one of them has sickness. Counting the artifacts, so it's five artifacts. Construct has for five, now we've got dress and down. Of course. As you predicted. Yeah. Uh, two damage comes in, but I saw him draw hardness scales. It's really good, unless there is a spell pierce and there is a spell. And there is. <laughs> Woof, that's good. <clears throat> that's really good for Daniel. So, this is the both the strength and the weakness of Saga. So, Saga is a single card that produces two huge threats, and that's great. The problem is that you spend like two turns yeah. on doing it, and no, a single dress down just, just destroys the whole plan. Um, <laughs> especially that you're walking into a meta game where you should expect uh, multiple dress downs from multiple decks. I can't remember how many dress downs were <coughs> in the, in the deck list. Um, yeah, well, I'm not. Yeah, we're not sure how many, but usually there is there is around more two. than one. Of course. Yeah, there is usually two in the sideboard. Okay, so we've got just Chandler, dismember on Chandler. That is very aggressive, but uh, this is what you have to do if you want to attack with Automaton. And of course he wants to attack. Yep. Attacking for... I mean, to be fair, it's attack for two total. So, I thought this opening from Stan is like the best imaginable, but it turned out to be truly mediocre. Is is this right? No, I think the the, the life total is, is not proper right, because he was... Splinter was at 18 and Bress and Daniel, Daniele was at 10. So he should have take the damages. Why miss two damages for Splinter somewhere? Um, it could be. It could be. Uh, no, no. I, th I think it's correct sixteen okay. for Splinter because uh, he dismembered. So I think it was changed no, to okay, eighteen, okay. and then two two more was was uh, taken away. Okay, so we've got triple steam vents and an island on the battlefield. Yeah, we've got the reader here. Multiple things could happen this turn. Start with iteration, for example. Yeah. Shamanic iteration, of course. Consulting with the hand. And, yeah, another land to the exile. Now, to be fair, fifth now land. it's the fifth land, so we could see Fury being hard cast as soon as next turn. Ah, uh, yeah. On what should he cast uh, the Fury? So, uh, yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> he says. So to be fair, whatever whatever sp Splinter uh, Stan does, he should cast the Fury because mm -hmm. Fury probably kills something. In this particular case, kills the Baz. It's also a three-three double striker, which blocks everything on the ground. And uh, yes, chat. Like last time in Amsterdam, when I covered Stan, we also had a lot of Splinter Twin jokes. <laughs> so that's yeah. But to be fair, that's uh, I, I like this part. Is the funny thing of the interview with the winner yeah, of everyone. Course, yeah. Okay, so oh consulting. Consulting, consulting. What what? Oh he failed to shuffle. Uh, he find he failed to find. Oh my gosh. He oh. literally failed to find. That is... This could be difficult. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So he lost one life just to shuffle. Yeah, he had... He had to shuffle, oh. yeah. So he had one more island in hand, and w and one island um, had been ditched with Consider mm -hmm. at the very, very beginning of the game. Okay. Oh, Gemstone Coven. Ooh, I like Gemstone Coven. I think actually too few decks play Gemstone Coven. Um, really good card. Okay. Yeah, it's invaded an island with a uh, consider. Yeah, at the very beginning, yeah, it was like mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. first turn. Okay, that's a huge attack. Yeah. Seven the wreckage one time. He's trying to end the second, the second game of the match. Yeah. Now, an ac actual damage is just two. So yeah, the other is in effect. Okay, so we've got bolt and pay for ward. Uh, attack for one plus two in effect. Now there's still a ton of in effect to be dealt, so. Oh, and a saga, okay, that's good. But I think Stan has cast to a bit too few spells. Just too few. Now there is a breach in hand. Okay, so we've got iteration on the stack. Iteration. Breach in hand. Counterspell in hand. There is so much going on here. 
consulting again. I think there was like a Chandlaga. No, don't take another Fetchland. That's it. Don't <laughs> take another Fetchland. Not a good idea right now. Okay. Takes Chandala, which no. blocks Sabaz. Okay, Kanal Pass still holding up counter spell. Drop. Ticker. Oh, Ancient Stirring is an excellent card here. Will it will it eat a counter spell? That's the question. Because you could counter the stirrings, uh, or you could counter whatever is found of stirrings. Mm -mm. On the flip side, if another saga is found of stirrings, then that fails. Okay. Hungerback Walker. Now, there has been a counter spell telegraph for a few turns, so you need to multi spell to. Um, oh, okay, okay. Disbamba. Bash through. He's trying to decide. Okay, it resolves. It's a buzz attack then, of course. Okay, down to three. Now three and four doesn't change much. There are no bolts in Stan's deck, but there is walking ballista. So, yeah. uh, for example, being at one might might come up. And, and in the end. Make a token. Oh, make a token in response so that the modular goes onto the construct. That's nice. No, the construct is a 1-1 one, one base, because there's only one artifact. And now it's a 2-2, two, two, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. So that's not a huge threat. No, but... but with Daniel at, f at a 3... At, at four. 4. 4, because I was healer healing in combat, actually. Um, We have 2 turns. A clock of 2 turns. Yeah, but th again, there is breach in hand, so... Yeah, of course. On the table, there is a clock of two turns. Yeah, like when Breach is cast, there will be so many things going on there. And uh, there's a very good comment by uh, Behopsy, and that is this construct does not die to dress down because it will always be a 1 1 at least with that counter. Okay, mm. considering his options, I think looking at the life total, maybe considering like multiple removal spell. I'm not sure there has been a bolt, because you could try to count if if you can know multi bolt the opponent. Okay, another construct, sack resolves, so this could be an ozolith, but pr most probably uh, a welding jar to protect the the construct. I can see Zabaz pull to the front. Yeah, and usually in those matchups you side out Ragavan, Nimble Pulsara. Because it's just so difficult to break through. Mm -mm. There are so many like a one ones, two twos. Super. Okay, Zabaz. Uh, Zabaz now. We've got the wasp. Okay, let's see what what they do with that. Now remember, you can you can turn on ink moths any time. And just now, okay. I mean, that's good, but again, doesn't doesn't kill the attacking one. But it's still one. Or just 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 one damage. Ooh, oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. Not anymore. Oh, that's a hot play. So what's happening is that dress down resolved, and now Bosage is going to kill the dress down to turn the construct back on with its abilities. It costs only one because Zabaz is legendary. Mm -mm. And then you can pay colorless from Inkmoth to turn on an Inkmoth to have one more artifact. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. That was... Okay, but this was a good play. Oh, that, that was excellent. That was excellent. But the problem is that Daniel untaps on a, an almost empty board. Mm -mm -mm. So now, again, we're waiting for the breach. Um, They could play like, you know, double channeler from breach and then multiple spells i think there hasn't been any bubbles there haven't been any bubbles no no bosejo resolved but daniel has no searchable lands um unless bosejo says that you have to search i'm not sure but th there is nothing to search literally okay bubble Okay, so yeah, they're counting. Asking for counting. Counting. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, land type, but there are, again, there are like no searchable lands now. All this, no, yes, three Stevens in play, nothing else that, that could be found. Okay, so we're going off then. Breach, let's go. Exile tr three cards, could play Channeler. Yeah, he. Yeah, shaking they, a yeah, they bit. are shaking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, no. To be fair, you know, playing for three and zero, which a match. No, yeah. You're up a game. Yeah, of course. So this could be the this could be the turn that you actually go to three and zero. Um, now the reason you start with with Chanela is because every subsequent non-creature spell will surveil to the graveyard, yep. which means you're fueling it even more. Um, yeah, and I, I think additional stress very much is because they're going off and they, they really, really don't want to miscount anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, because it's a, such a huge turn, you know, any misstep could be could be fatal. And you're also on on live stream and you know that. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a judge dedicated for the table so he's watching you and and watch that you, you watch every steps you do. Okay, three cards. It is not open deck lists. Okay, so now we've got. Okay, now it's great because you can Ooh. play bubble, and for each bubble you surveil two in the graveyard. So basically, uh, yeah, exactly. And and they, they will, yeah, he will just ditch everything. Bubble you, and that's the first bubble trigger. And they should try. Yeah, they're tracking it. Now we've got three more cards. Surveil. Gosh, you have to be very sure about what you are doing because bubble. he's doing so much things in just one turn. Yeah. Now this bubble, no. Yeah. Okay. Three cards. Okay. Now we don't know what they're saying, uh, but it, it all should be good. And drawing three on upkeep. I mean, this is why I personally really like playing a breach, although <laughs> that the combo va a variation. Like you no, know, being able to just you know do do your thing and then pay two mana. Ah, oh, maybe let's draw five. <laughs> this is wild. As Dick D Dick through time looks at it, jealous. Gosh, there are <coughs> a lot of cards. <laughs> yeah, and now this okay. Hanka Bakoka doesn't look that impressive, because the the Merktank player has like yeah. a full hand. Absolutely full hand. Now let's see what happens. What for four mana? Oh, oh to war oh. bounce. Oh, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> good. And but and it's go it, on. but it's still attack for two. That's it's not attack for. Uh, it's not attack for six with delirium because there is no delirium. Yeah, I assume a counter spell is held up as well. Two mana opens on both sides. And um, yeah, of course. Okay, there is a counter, counter spell, surveil, probably double ditch. Okay, EE, -E, land, land that can't find anything else. Oh, and this, oh, this, mm. th now at this point, it does hurt because you kill one, but the other attacks for three. So actually, we might see. Uh, Daniel come back from being at four life to actually winning on damage. Yeah, the la the last turn was uh, incredible on my side because I'm not used to this kind of stuff. A lot of things do happening in just one round. It's incredible. Yeah, 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 exactly. And now I actually I've noticed that uh, Daniel basically stopped shaking. So I think it may yeah. have been <laughs> actually this combo turn. This is one turn. So many decisions, options. This is when the the nerves kicked in. But During now, okay, we're just coming back to the, like this normal, normal flow of the game. Yeah, because during one turn, if you do no mistakes, you can come back. <laughs> oh, Ooh, and the counter. Oh, if, oh, had that resolved? Had that resolved? This could have been game. Now Stan is, if life rules are correct, at three. So this channeler is lethal. Oh, block, killer. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay. This was a really, a really good game to watch.
Yeah, that was that was equal, really yeah. funny. Yeah, that it was s- so much was happening, but uh, yeah, yeah. And good we game. on the table too. On the yes, and th- and I have to say that the player on the left was handpicked by me, um, <laughs> because because the deck of choice is the a Marfolk. yes is a fishy blue deck. Fishy blue deck, and we'll see it in action. I know it's your it's your it's favorite deck. Chat. All blue. There is no green. Um. Is yeah, it's all oh, blue. Okay. It's all nice. blue. Um, and actually, we see uh, Rashad and Dokhan in the deck as well. Yeah, we've got Karuga versus Merfolk in the tool bracket. That's right, Chad. Now, the problem is that one of them will not be 3 0 at the, at the end of this. <laughs> okay, so we've got. We have to be impartial, I know that, but I always. Uh, stand with many different because I want a very uh, variegated top eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, I still expect like the top eight to be like six different decks mm. because it's modern. So I, s- I fully expect six different decks. Yeah, in Amsterdam wasn't. If I can, if I remember. When right. in Amsterdam, um, th- we had a lot of Bulgari. Uh, yeah, there was like, a, like two or three Yogmoth and like mm. two Scam or something like that. Mm-hmm. But still. And uh, y- a chat, uh, actually, I agree with the sentiment that it's the bubble that breaks Breach. Not, I mean, depends how you want to look at it, right? <laughs> Whether you want to get rid of Breach or, or Bubble, if you were to get rid of anything. But yeah, Bubble is, is a huge reason why Breach is so good. And I'm saying that as a person who plays Breach and doesn't think it needs any ban or anything. Okay. So we've got some attacks coming in. And three mana. So that's very slow. Mm-mm. Rise and Reef. Yeah. Well, you can uh, cast Fire and Ice I- if the tribe is an island, if you cast the Ice Half. That. You don't have to pay both. Okay, we've got oh, we've got subtlety on fury. That's really good because otherwise fury would be quite devastating. However, the Merfolk pri- player has only one card in hand. <laughs> um, r- Red Arrow. If if Hypergenesis was unbanned, I it would just be another cascade thingy, but it would probably be just worse than Living End. Anyways, so. Okay, take up of the vial. Yeah, there isn't much happening for for Michael or Michelle, Michaela. So this should be this, sh- yeah. And yes, chat, I can confirm that the player on the right is indeed respect the cat, the legendary respect the cat that you may know on Twitter, Twitch, and from MTGO results. And he's actually the player that has been doing well with Karuga as the only player on the planet, arguably. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he has been doing very well with Karuga. And can't seem to put the deck down. Right, so, so now we can start referring to him as Respect the Cat. <laughs> as his as his actual nickname is and most people know him by. And what do you think about this matchup? Who is the the favorite? Who is in the better f- the better spot? The first impulse says Merfolk because there is unblockability, there is damage, there is pressure. But on the flip side, then if you if we look at the actual list, we will know that Four Color has got Leyline Binding, yep. Fury, Solitude, Fire Eyes. It's just so difficult to play through it, you know, even Omnath to gain a bit, a bit of life. So, actually, I like the four color more. And the first ley line is go- going down. But two mana open when oh. you play <laughs> against I blue. I really like very slow sliding. Yeah. Like, does it resolve? I think, <laughs> it, I think it does. I Can I? <laughs> it's attacking, of course. Not a huge attack though. Yeah, and he untaps. Now again, there is so much card advantage in the Karuga deck that 
yeah, Risen Reef has stock. We've got Fury in hand, which might soon be just hard cast. We've got Teferi Time Raveler, which can just, I don't know, bounce Vile to make it more annoying for the opponent. There is a Mystical Dispute. Now, the problem is that you can't play Dispute and Teferi. It's three mana and Teferi, of course. <coughs> Respond, yeah. You don't have to res... Oh, you've got Subtlety. Okay, that's good. Oh. That's, that, that's good. That's solid. Because you're actually spending one card on subtlety rather than rather than two pitching anything. <laughs> no yeah, way. his deck is very very shiny. <laughs> yeah. What I like the about the sideboard of Merfolk yeah. is that there is Kira, great glass spinner, for all the, you know, Merfolk OGs for people who hate removal. Uh, Kira, gra great glass spinner. I mean, woof, I hated playing against it. <laughs> no, thankfully, I don't have to that often. Okay, spreading seas. Uh huh. Okay, pass. Okay, maybe, maybe Murfo can actually get it done. 22 to 7 is a good spot for him. Yeah, respect is at 7. That's pretty low. Okay, Teferi coming down again. Tapping Forest Lanes Island. Respond. Ooh. <laughs> that's hmm. that's good. That's good. That's really good. This is the temple game that um that Murfolk wants to do. Okay, put put on the bottom. Okay, I, this one's very good. Okay, it was uh, I could see that this kind of Disappointed pass of the turn. So there have actually been three have been three subtleties total so far. Wait, wait, wait! I think I saw this member there. So the Merfolk player could have gone for the kill, if I'm not mistaken. Like it, if there actually is this member, he would have gone for the kill. But I'm no. not sure that. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. The fairy game? You know, bouncing subtlety does nothing because you can replay it with Vile. Mm -hmm. Bouncing Vile doesn't change anything. Yeah, there is a dismember. So I'm, I'm surprised that um, the Merfolk player did not go for a, for the kill. Okay, it's a but Could it he have done this because of, yes, I don't know, expect, expecting something uh, after, uh, but it's so strange. Yeah, I mean, it's v it was very difficult to play around that because he had the dispute, but you could yeah. never dispute uh, anything from the played from the vial, right? Yeah. So uh, it was quite a, quite a tough spot, you know, with those three subtleties. Mm. Back up. So, we, so we are waiting for the table one again, and here we are. Yeah, so we've got another match, of course. We've got 12 minutes left, but we won't chat leave you without any magic content here. <laughs> and we have Azario Summer against Four Color. Okay, so we've got, yeah, Giver of Runes. Now we've got okay, and is it another full final deck? Maybe maybe it's just a thing of the four color players. <laughs> so once once you have enough money to play four color, <laughs> I could well play foil for four color. A bolt? A foil bolt, of, of course. course. Yeah. <laughs> from Coast. Okay, Pure Steel Paladin is a fine play. But I'm afraid it might just die to like prismatic ending or another bolt. Okay, mm. shock in could be red and six, but that's just yeah. So while red and six in general is a pretty good card in these spots, it barely does anything. Like it doesn't affect the board and you know, leaves yeah. you tapped out unless there is some kind of solitude uh, waiting to get into action. There's a spell piece in hand, there's a hammer in hand, so you can play hammer, draw a card, and see what happens. And of course, new hammer. Draw. 
is it an artifact is the question oh i think it was a specimen oh that's really good so technically you've got two artifacts so you couldn't uh, equip but you can now animate Inkmoth nexus make it an artifact and then meet the threshold for um for uh, for metal craft and now post combat he could re-equip to esper sentinel s to make sure that okay he didn't i think i would have um i would have re-equipped so that i draw a card of any non-creature this could ha could happen very fast i have to know yeah i mean that was a hit for 12. <laughs> yeah uh, and there is a spell piece in hand so so if the turn is passed, now those elementals like Fury and Solitude cannot indeed be spell peers, so that's that's the good thing for um for the four color player. I'm not sure. Does the four color player can do something for uh, Yeah, I mean a single solitude right would, would would give you, you know allow you to play the back game still. Mm -hmm. There's a very good comment that re equip would not only allow you to draw a card of any non creature, but also save it from run minus. And in this spot, if if Ren Minus is on Sentinel and there is like no even Teferi bounce, um then Giuseppe is in kind of a rough spot. Rise and Rift. Okay, I mean that's not very exciting, is it? And land. Yeah, and yeah. Ren kills here. If the if mm, if there is any solitude, we might be in trouble. We can't really see in our hands, so again, we can make supposition and guessing. And try to attack with both. Okay, yeah, so basically, I want to kill your uh, Risen Reef and ping Ren and Six. That's basically the turn and hold up spell peers. There is Nile spell room in hand? Nah, th it can't be Nile spell. Probably, probably a, like some kind of equipment. So, okay, so if actually four color player goes for something like Teferi, he will get heavily punished by that spell piece. Yeah. Not mm. anymore because they, he can pay. But but on the flip side, Giuseppe can uh, tap him out. Yeah, of course. Oh, that's good. Okay. That's really good. We try to resolve this one. Will he counter spell or no? I probably he, he don't because, yeah, if you can tap him, him out and then what you can do after? Yeah, there is no there is no follow up. I think that's call draw in hand, so that's not a that's not a good draw. So I think the four color player will start stabilizing at two life. I'm not even sure what the best draw is. Maybe like Stoneforge Mystic. That could find something, and then you would still uh, put in Kaldra. <laughs> okay, search out. I think at a f at a ferry would be great. To just make sure that there are no sh weird shenanigans, but again, if the fairy is played, it gets spell pierced. Yeah, going to one. There are four hundred players. Yep. Mm, I'm very proud of the chat today because they're they are doing their cheers for the players that they know. Yeah. In a polite way, right now. <laughs> Why didn't he equip Inkmoth and attack face with two lethal attackers? Um, because there there were no multiple artifacts to actually have metal craft to be able to re-equip. Now at one life point. No, this is the actual life total now, fanatic. This is actually the situation right now, and we've got. Um, Hira played. I remember I played. Um, I played a game some time ago, and I dressed down Inkmoth Nexus so he doesn't doesn't infect me. 
but for some reason I forgot that instead of infecting it will deal no more damage and I just died because I was at a low <laughs> life total as well. So yeah, in this case, well, happened. yeah, yeah. In this case, I mean the the hammer player really wishes that Inkmoth lost infect. Okay, pass. Yeah, I think the four color player is stabilizing and stabilizing pretty well now. Yeah, but what damage is pretty easy. Sometimes, not every, not every time, of course. <coughs> if it doesn't slam an omnath, of course. I <laughs> think from the four color player's perspective, it's weird that um, there was no attack from Inkmoth. Mm -hmm. And so I think there could be a, s a read that there is a spell pierce or a blacksmith skill held up because otherwise it doesn't make kind of sense not to attack. Okay. Lining up the mana. Ticking up the ren. Targeting nothing it seems. Just for the counter. Yeah, just just a good counter. I'm not sure if he attacked with Kahira because he Yeah, he could. attacked. Okay. Kill. What? Who? How? <laughs> oh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let there be light. Yeah, they're fixing things. Ooh. Gingerbread. Oh, that's such a huge and draw. Oh, that's such a huge draw. If he doesn't resolve now, he have the creature that can't be blocked. Exactly. Oh my goodness, gingerbread. Pierniczek, let's go. Let's go. And, and he's holding up a spell piece. Wow. No, no way gingerbread is taking it. Oh, there is a bolt. Okay, never mind. I was getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> well. So I think actually this whole game might come down to the fact that um, earlier, Sentinel was not re-equipped with Hammer mm. because there will be one more creature, yeah, potentially one more card in hand. Um, but that was so cool to finish this game with, you know, with a hasty, with a hasty ginger running bread. Yeah, but it was a good try. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 would have been such a sneaky win. Yeah. Oh, that would be super sneaky. I really like this kind of. Of win. <laughs> yeah. A proper top deck win. But now now the hammer player uh, the, the the four color player has like a like a bajillion cards in hand. Yeah. So he's and not worried a about lot anything. of mana also. Yeah, a ton of mana. Attacked again with the Kahira. Oh yeah. Foundation breaker. Probably killing hammer. Of course. And just getting a, another creature. It's a 2 2, but with the hero, it's a 3 3 with, uh, with uh, vigilance. And so now he's just saying, I have still one life point. I yeah. can win this. Exactly. And actually, <laughs> they probably will with like yeah. two attacks. He does it as well. It's like anything, everything. Sorry. And now he he is the, the threat. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Basically turn the table. Yeah. T uh, Teferi, Teferi. Just to make sure nothing's weird happening. Also because opponent have two cards in hand, so if you have a counter spell, uh, you have to use it. And then just one one card left. Yeah. Pay. Of course, pay. And he had the mana for He for would have everything. to resolve. Yeah, I don't don't see don't see the hammer play coming back from this. There is no like single top deck that we could. <laughs> I like the back. quote from Bubble Tea. In the chat, yeah. Can you do something, the hammer player, right now, to resolve the the problem? Yeah, probably with another gingerbread, but. 
uh, I do I really doubt there is another ginger mm -hmm. brood. So there could be something like, uh, maybe. Sp I mean, Stoneforge block doesn't do it. Like you, you just need to have some kind of you know another ca like like multiple cards, like chain mm -hmm. something. Because it's, if you get a single card, you will try to do something on the board that gets you know. Uh, also, Ren can just start pinging down at yeah. this point. Right. So you're dead to just three Ren pings. So that's a really bad spot. And he now is at three HP. Three life points. Very low. Yeah. And th there is a Stoneforge. A Stoneforge would be great if it didn't have to block this turn. But it does. And the 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 other player has two lethal attackers and a Ren and the Fairy Bounce. Yeah. Uh, what you miss about Inkmoth flying in is that it attacks with Inkmoth uh, with in infect damage, not normal damage, so it's not it's not lethal. I really appreciate how Chat started talking about Breaking Bad now. <laughs> no spoilers, Chat. No spoilers. I know. I know. It's not a new show. But for all the people who haven't watched it, please do. And if you haven't watched it yet, go do it. Not right now. <laughs> On Monday. Yeah. Okay, so we've got... I mean, I'm not sure what the Hump play is kind of considering, because because they are dead, like, multiple ways now. Another Hammer on the board. Yeah. But it's not enough right now. Am I right? I mean, th this is a lost game. Like, like I, I, I'm really not sure what the hammer play is trying to, uh, to do because what the four color play will do is just attack with two creatures, and that's game. Uh, yeah. Literally. I mean, from this point, nothing else could happen. Just attack with both, you're dead, right? Not even considering stuff like Teferi bounce or run minus. Yeah, no, it's it's. I don't really know. What he's thinking about. Um, Maybe something that we don't know, but yeah, yeah, it's called the read you concede. Yeah, 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 yeah. I appreciate that sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, uh, if you actually concede now, you could probably grab now and be a quick sandwich. And it's also not really making the opponent have it because again, it's literally just attacking with two creatures on the on the field. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. One person actually told, the fanatic told me what the actual out is. The out is that the four color player uh, cracks the fetchland and therefore dies. That's the out. Okay, so now there is a single blocker, again, Ren minus, the oh. fairy bounce, and double creature on the field. Of course. Yeah, hey, of now. <laughs> Yeah, no. sometimes you just hope uh, and you can go on and see if he's m making some mistakes. Uh, yeah, it's but pretty fair, but he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, and and moves on, moves on with the win. Okay, guys, we are. Uh, th I think that the the, the next round will be uh, soon, yeah. so we can uh, see you later. Exactly. Bye bye.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Legacy European Tour. My name is Will, better known on the internet as the Will Hall EXP, and I'm joined by someone in a very exclusive club. They don't even need a second name. It is the one and only Canister. How are you doing, my friend? You right? So I do have a second name, but it's... We don't use it. We don't, use it, yeah. we don't go by that. We don't go by that. You're, you're two up there. You're up there with Madonna. You're up there with Madonna. And we are going to be bringing you round four of modern action. What decks have we got down in the feature match and which players are we going to be looking at, Caster? We're going to be looking at a match between uh, Artur Laskowski piloting Azorius Hammer, facing off against uh, uh, Mayoko Marco, playing uh, a decklist labeled as Is It Tempo, which uh, is, is it as actually a uh, blue red underworld breach yes it's, it's the new ones we've seen saga deck, yeah but yeah. without the combo and with urza saga so a bit of a new twist on the build okay well we'll see how that pans out you know on, on paper i suppose they're both going to try and be really quick decks and moving forward but we, uh, before we talk about the what we got down there we're going to see the meta game breakdown this is what the players have bought this weekend over 400 players turned up this weekend and this is the breakdown obviously there's a lot of um there's quite a few bought in paper deck lists, so we couldn't get the data of them so they're going to be boxed into others but all the rest of them here is it Merc Tide? not surprising at all to myself i think like that is just if i was coming this weekend that's the one i would have a target on its back but yeah steam events is, is as we said the strongest land in modern probably right now then we got in second place we got obviously always this hammer there's a there's multiple different builds probably there's another hammer list in here somewhere because you know can you have the straight yeah straight white hammer is in there so I, you can kind of hit that around about 10 11 percent but up there rhinos rhinos did manage to take down barcelona there's obviously a different bit build to this now four close with ley lines binding seeing that so high up the list we have a lot of mercs in there i feel like you know bluster storm is pretty good in that matchup i would have said maybe i wouldn't have bought rhinos this weekend but a lot of players have decided against it same amount with chess guy breach your deck the one that, you know if you came you could have knocked that up to third place that little percentage of mark would have come up exactly yeah and then there's lots of, lots of lots of variety in the breach deck list lately people mm. are doing lots of experimental stuff with uh the card underworld breach uh, so the it's pretty unclear if this guy breach necessarily and what exactly it encompasses at this point because there's going to be both the mid-range decks that don't have a combo finish there's going to be the hard focus of combo ones with uh, grinding station there's going to be anything in between that you could have yeah i've been seeing a lot of uh like breach showing up in other decks things like death shadows taking a bit of a resurgence at the minute mm -hmm. with breaches in that just being able to have almost like oh, i'm going to play the first five six seven turns of the game and then i've got a two mana enchantment that almost lets me reset the game back you know i can bring all my opponents back that you've already dealt with it's like a nice uh tempo value play in those sort of decks but then obviously we've got the jessica combo deck so it's actually part of the combo yeah so exactly it's it's kind of a treasure cruise and treasure cruise is a strong card that so. is a very strong card do you see that a lot in uh in pioneer not actually as much as you would think actually like treasure cruise did you Literally, not cast a lot of them? I did cast a lot of them, but nowadays I think the the power of Treasure Cruise is actually a little bit tame. Like I guess the card is great, but like the decks it goes into Phoenix, not that well positioned by any etc. As we do obviously have PT Philly coming up soon, so you know that'll be a another chance for everyone to see all the pioneer decks. But this weekend we are playing modern as we see the Esper Sentinel come down there on turn one. That's the turn you want it. Tax all the spells early, replace them. This card again is very good staple in these decks and it uh, has this, this ongoing tax rate if you don't what are you going to do now you're going to lighten the bar cool i already get a card back i'll kind of two for one you which exactly. is what we might see here yeah put playing in the on the play is just such so so much better than this on the draw just putting so much pressure on the uh, opposing player hammer is a deck that can definitely pressure you a lot in the early turn so you have to respond quickly and as well sentinel just kind of puts you in a tough spot it's going to let us fill up that graveyard quickly. So, you know, if we do end up uh, casting a breach or some way to get a cards back. One thing I want to look, is there any uh, Lava Darts in this deck? It's not Lava Darts. No, it is not a Lava Dart. It's more like a what the cards we see in uh, Marco's deck are actually the normal blue-red Merktite cards. But on top of that, we see Giganta, which we are using. So we're foregoing Counterspell. Instead of Counterspell, we actually see three copies of Mana Loop. A Ooh. counter spell forgotten by some, but uh, shows up every now and then still. And we've got two Underworld Breaches and four Urza's Sagas. So it's kind of a different take on the Merktite deck, I would say. 
I need to send a tweet to Mike Sigrest and tell him that someone is playing Mana Leak. He was talking about this this weekend, asking if that kick card could come back into modern. He'll be very happy to see that as we see the turn that passed across. No hammers flashed in. We had the option. We could have played it sorcery speed. We could play it in the speed. We decided against it. As we're just going to play a plane to the turn here. So it's going to be. Paladin's going to come down. Yeah. Seemingly, we don't know. There's a hammer in the Arthur's hand. That's not necessarily, but you know, we can play the Paladin now because um, freely. You know, it's not gonna get counter. Like you probably don't even expect mana leak mm -hmm. TBH. Uh, we see a mountain, so you don't expect counter spell either. But even if there's gonna be a two mana counter spell, uh, Esper Sentinel will draw a card if that happens. You also gotta respect the fact that there could be one, though, right? Just because they haven't deployed it now, maybe they're trying to wait till you use one of your your burn removal spells on one of my creatures, and I just use the hammer to try and uh, negate that. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, like the hammer deck is put good at putting the damage based removal decks in tough spots with hammer being able to act both as a way to enhance the creature to be a ginormous threat or as a protection spell from your burn spells see how they want to move forward both players just just you know twittering who's going to you know break serve first here who's going to pull the trigger going to tap the planes Ooh, this is this shepherd's gift. Yeah. It's a way to get a hammer. Now this is a, and it, it's not coming up now, but if I had a way to counter this, would you counter this or would you save it to counter the potential, you know, equipment we're finding, <coughs> which is a hammer in? You could lean towards countering this seal shepherd's gift. It does, you know, Arthur's hand is pretty small. He only has one other card in hand. Probably some, some heavy mulligans, some deep mulligans happen. Uh, you might guess that there is no hammers in his hand already, or if, or if not guess, and take a, take that risk maybe, and you could counter the Steel Shaper's Gift. That way, the hammer wouldn't be there, and the hammer will be an instant speed uh, threat if Arthur doesn't decide to play it. So you really don't want that to to resolve afterwards, right? Instant speed plus ten plus ten, draw a card, probably draw another card through Esper Sentinel tax that gets increased to eleven in some some way so that's the other bit here is like in response to that do you think about maybe i should fire up some removal spells here maybe they don't have it or do you make them have it so to speak now we know they've got it right we know it's in their hand yeah so our removal spells definitely are dead here but before what, what's what's the, well, the advantage only, to and do not if you only have one removal spell right and you use it then the hammer player will pick up pick up hammer from your deck mm -hmm. and then you know if you don't have anything else to defend yourself they can just equip the hammer and attack you if you can beat that, then it's pretty scary to actually make a move and pull the trigger and fire off a removal spell on the uh, Paladin on the Sentinel. And so on top of that, like, just you don't immediately gain, get too much of an advantage by removing one of the creatures, I, fe I feel like. So it makes sense to wait. So in, in a way, both players are incentivized to, to wait for each other's move it is kind of a situation where uh, the player who blinks first might lose we're gonna see just a fetch here end of turn obviously chat is uh spamming a certain amount very nice <laughs> who's gonna break it that's the question someone's gonna be like potato or something there you go never change chat so it looks like we're going to tap one red, and end of turn is going to be a lightning bolt on the Paladin. Yeah, end of turn bolt. The Sentinel triggers. The Channeler triggers. This is what we're talking about, who's going to break serve first here. So this is where they think that they can win this fight through a hammer. Yeah, it was the end of Arthur's turn, so active player, non-active player order. So correct, it is correct to resolve the Channeler first, and then the Esper Sentinel attacks. So only with only one mana down, uh, Arthur responds with Ooh, a Colossus Hammer and gets Spell Pierce, which is pretty, pretty damaging. That is a, g you know, it's a good turn to pull pull the trigger on, especially end of turn, because now we get to untap, there's only one mana left open. We know that that hammer is now going into the graveyard. Yeah, and Paladin is dead, the hammer is in the graveyard, and that puts... Uh, Marco in much better spots than he was 
compared to what he was in previously. Actually, I, I like that. I like that you picked the point to do it. You know, almost the last turn you could do it because potentially they can end up going to the fourth land next turn. Very well played on that side, as we see. Yeah, also, he basically knows that there is no hammer in hand right now because otherwise Abdul would have flashed another hammer in to protect the Paladin with the second hammer after the pierce has happened. So he, he Mark, Marco, comfortably placed the bolt <coughs> on the Sentinel right here. That's for me, an attack for one bloom is not. I'm just going to play the most played card this weekend. I'm going to call it the Steam Vents, untapped. Representing multiple couple of spells. Obviously, we, this isn't an open deck list tournament for people just jumping in. The top eight is open deck list, but until then, during the Swiss, it is all closed deck list. So players do not know what they're playing around. And this is modern. There's a lot of cards printed that are legal that they could be playing. So uh, if, if you're having some problem with uh, hearing us with the mics, do let us know. It, it could just be one person, the individual out there. Maybe you need to turn up your, your sound. If it's everybody, then we'll start looking into it on our side. So if we start altering when just one person says it. So let us know, chat. If you can hear us fine, that's great. If not, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can fix it. As And as the saga is going to come down. Or the saga, a great draw for, uh, for Arthur. A card that gets through under a mana leak that is going to be threatening will get a hammer eventually so yeah top decking and chaining sagas is the best uh, best way for arthur to come back to the game as we see i think marco pretty obviously was holding up a two mana counter spell for the past few turns so just gonna fetch up there and turn we're gonna place one tapped But only one card in hand, an ink moth on the battlefield. You know, what I mean, we, we need to start closing this game down, right? At some point, in this hand playing, you know, we don't give them any more options to get back into the game. We kind of got it under control right now. Yeah, we potentially there's a this ink moth that's a bit threatening. There's a Zerza saga could grind out a bit, but we need to get more threats on the battlefield like this. Start closing it down. We need to get delirium on these chips for one every turn. They're not going to be doing great chips for three and six damage. Are going to be a lot better for them. And I suppose as of next turn, we can also start blocking. With uh, these construct tokens, yeah. Well, we won't be able to block once uh, once Mark gets delirium. So <coughs> hopefully that's gonna happen for him. As for Sentinel, not very impactful, but it does prompt action from uh, from Marco. Presumably we are in the end of turn, triggering the Sentinel, triggering the Channelers putting an instant in the graveyard that does yeah. not help with delirium and placing that a card that I that was a mana leak. That's a mana leak. Yeah, another instance is still not delirium actually, nope. still just lands an instance in the graveyard. Well, they, we did say this is a different build. Are they playing uh, the mystery baubles or maybe they're just setting up for a big um, breach turn? Well, sure, they do play mystery bubble because how how would you know? Yeah, there's four copies of that card and that's in that deck. There is four ledger shredders for for. Year season four Ragavans to act as creatures in your graveyard. The delirium. Here comes the powerful one drop getting uh, dashed in. Now we're going to go to combat. Swing for four. Yeah, it does seem like that. It's a scary back and forth now, right? Like, we're very long cards. What do I do? Do I activate? Do I make a token? But then, if potentially if they've got another removal spell, they're going to get more triggers and potentially get delirium on their end. It's a very scary position to be in here. Yeah, sometimes at this spot you might just opt to take four. Honestly, you might be that better off taking four. I think the ink moth's going to come out. Activating the ink moth with the intention of uh, blocking the ragavan with it, and then creating the construct uh, mm. before the ink moth dies. Makes uh, makes perfect sense. Let's see what we're going to need to do this. We've got a grip full. We've got. A so Arthur was required to act first, I guess, in this situation, like creating the construct, letting maybe a removal spell hit the construct. But uh, seems like that is not happening. Instead, 
think Moth trades for the Ragavan and uh, Arthur takes uh, two damage, not not too much. Well, the Ragavan goes to the graveyard, that helps us a little bit towards Delirium. Now we are just a uh, artifact, sorcery, mm, artifact and enchantment away. So, you know, we've only one card type away from these becoming free threes in this game, being able to get close a lot yeah. quicker. But Saga is n now online. Constructs are, gonna, are coming out. We could get a second construct here, go and find maybe a Shadow Sphere. Colossus Hammer, maybe just a quick play hammer on yeah. one of the constructs. It's a bit of uh, you know, a bit more of a risky play, but we'll see what Arthur goes uh, for here. It makes sense to to go big in a sp in a situation like this. I think. Looks like they they have pulled a hammer out. Hammer and now the trigger to equip it is gonna happen. Do we have removal spells? So this is gonna at the currently what the two twos, free freeze. Currently free freeze. Yes, free free is for a thirteen thirteen attacking if uh, everything uh, comes through. So we're going to lightning bolt it. So this we could get blown out now if if we drew a hammer or something like that for the turn, right? Hammer, a blacksmith skill. There's probably still that mana leak in uh, Marco's hand. So creature the grave. I think I think that's a blue spell. We're going to get quite a good look at what that was. Not so quite catch it through, it might be a legend shadow, maybe not. So, so, so it is okay. Is this where the mana leaks are coming? Boom, mana leak 2023, ladies and gentlemen. Take a note of that. I, I wouldn't have called that on my uh scratch card. Yeah, the blacks are still not enough here to pro to protect the creature. And this is going to be a huge blowout here, right? All right, so I as I can only assume that with blacksmith skill, Arthur was looking to equip the construct that was not summoning six, so he's probably not going to be attacking this turn. Yeah, he plays an income of nexus and passes the turn. So this gives us out of like a paladin. We could equip with a paladin here. Paladin, other hammer. Other hammer is actually one, two, three, four. 14 power, so not quite enough to kill in one shot as uh, Marco. Well, Inkmoth would kill in one shot, I yeah. guess. And we well, we know that Marco is gonna be top decking, he does surveil twice after casting this Mishra's Bobble. He's gonna take a redraw with the Mishra's Bobble, so he gets to, to add a card to his hand, which could be an uh, interaction spell. I did not quite catch his surveil, so I don't know if he kept a card on top or not. So he's having a look, and that did look like. I think that might be a paladin left on top. I think that was a 2-2 two -two I could see just at the bottom. Yeah. And these things, they have to attack now. They are free freeze. Delirium is on now, the artifacts in the graveyard. We know the card in hand because it's got moose loot on it. So I'm guessing is the Giganta. Are we really low for you guys? Can you not hear us? Well, here comes the Giganta, which actually does help against uh, Construct. Construct. It does help against uh, Paladin equipping the hammer to the Inkmov as you can jump block for a turn. Remember that Inkmov does lose flying. There's the Paladin. When it gets equipped by the Colossus Hammer. Yeah, but we're going to have a, a champ here. This is one an interaction that people like kind of missed the very start of a uh, hammer. Is that obviously once it equips, it loses all the abilities being flying. But if we had another land there, we could reactivate it so it gains flying. Yeah, it's also a little bit of a tricky decision on Arthur's part. You see him not moving the hammer end of turn. That's because the ink moth had damage marked mm -hmm. on it. So if he moves the hammer to the paladin or the construct, he actually. Uh, Loses the ink moth. And we're just going to scoop him up there. So we'll have to go, in, go into the sideboards. What actually happened? It's a, we didn't quite catch the finish of the game. I think... Um, did, they, did they end up ripping a breach on that turn then? Oh, a breach, for go a breach for lethal, yeah. That would be certainly lethal with lethal, lethal bolts. So we'll start off with uh, the hammer matchup. What do you like bringing in here? In general, like, I'm not really a hammer specialist, but uh, I'll be looking towards some minimal sideboarding. Because uh, I think the ga base game plan is pretty good at putting pressure on Merc Titan. I think if you water it down too much, it's probably not great for you. 
Although, if you see that your opponent is playing Underworld Breach and uh, Dragon Rages Channelers, then it's really tempting to go towards Sanctifier on deck and uh, Realm of Progenesis to try to stop that without uh, messing up your game plan a bit too much. Any so what, what, like if we got relic, uh, I'm looking at the the marches. Why would we use like we got paths and marches in there? Maybe for this matchup, maybe they think they're against Merc Titans and just didn't see them that game. Well, Is I there? think it's not really. As yes. uh, there is one little detail. Go for it. Uh, Marco revealed a Giganta before the game, which rules out Merc Titan as a possible option. That is why I am dumb and you are canister. That's, that's that's it. There's no other explanation. That is exactly that read there. I would have completely missed. Maybe not if I was sat down playing, but you know, while I'm sat in the booth, there's a lot lot going on here, chat. So that makes a lot of sense. So you think just minimal there? Let's get, see if we can go across to the the other sideboard and see what we could be bringing in on the is it side. Just move that across. There we go, chat. We've got that for you. Is it tempo? Anything there jumping out at you? Two copies of NG, Engineered Explosives. Uh, yeah, Arthur probably is going to expect that set. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be incentivized to bring the needle. It's a pretty common strategy to have two, even three copies of explosives in the blue red decks. Uh, so yeah, and here we see the part of the deck that did not uh, show up in the game. So Arthur doesn't actually know about it yet. This is a tempo deck is running Urza Saga, which is a an orth unorthodox uh, choice, I would say. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if it changes the matchup very much for in this particular uh, battle against Hammer, but having access to Ether Spellbomb to be able to answer high toughness creatures certainly seems uh, very nice. Out of the sideboard, we see Shattering Spree, a Braid. Um, what about like Alpine Moon? Are we going to bring the moons in to try and get rid of, rid of the. Um, yeah, Alpine Moon, Alpa, Alpa moon for sure. Can name Woods Saga, it's one side that so it does not affect your own saga, so that is not a worry. Engine explosives for sure comes in. You probably are not super interested in playing mana leaks. So that's that would be my cut. My question there, so in my looking at that, that deck list, so as obviously it's working out well from so far being free oh, but as a saga in the deck makes my mana worse, all the rest of my decks are pretty mana you know, all the, the cards are mana intensive, all blue and red red symbols. Uh, is it is the payoff worth it playing sagas uh over making my mana worse potentially i could get screwed in some turns etc how do you kind of weigh that up well certainly you would not play saga with uh counter spell and we see mm -hmm. this player doing an informed decision and cast and cutting the counter spell in favor of uh, mana leak which is i think we can say objectively a worse card than counter spell uh, just to make their mana better while still having access to some stack uh, interaction so yeah Urza Saga it does have upsides does have downsides in a deck that does not play too many artifacts besides uh, the Urza Saga itself the constructs sometimes are uh, disappointingly small especially the first few ones you'll make so honestly I'm probably not the biggest fan of uh, this use of Urza Saga but there are matchups where it can uh, work uh, quite well it's paid off for him so far they are free and obviously it's kind of hidden here we didn't see in that game one and they are going to be um on the draw here so maybe we're going to more slight uh slow like uh grindy game but we'll see what the hammer that's the thing about hammer it's so explosive it can just win turn two if it has the correct draws maybe we're going to be boarding out some of those those zero mana artifacts don't really do too much in there but then mem knight is a very good blocker against uh ragavan yeah We'll see, see how they go. They're going to shuffle up. We're going to draw the opening seven. Hopefully they get to keep opening seven and we get a good, fair, fair in brackets, game of magic. Let's see. What sort of opening are we looking for over on the hammer side? What cards do we want to see in there? What's the, f the turn one play of choice? Esper Sentinel, Cigar Dazade. The two. Either of those is like a great turn one play. I would say that, well, any any draw involving spring leaf drum with uh, a mem knight into one of those cards is also going to be incredibly and uh, besides that i think every other opening is a little bit worse so you're looking for like either of those two cards i think well, looks like both players took a mulligan so both can be starting at six here 
So we're going to start off with a fetch, and we are going to lead off with Disguised Aid. So now we've got you know the, the threat of any creature coming on the battlefield that could have an equipment attached to it at instant speed, which we could instantly stop something like a lightning bolt or an unholy heat. Turn one, Sigurdas Aid, so yeah, good, good opening. Especially good if you follow it up with uh, a Memnita. We see no Memnite uh, on Artus' uh, side, so not immediately threatening. So this is the turn we've got that we can uh, deploy our threat and then you know, keep that on the battlefield, keep the other side of the battlefield clear as we're going to see the, the Dragon Rage come down. No Delirium yet. Pass the turn back. Now what are we going to, how are we going to follow this up? It looks like there's a, there's a Saga pulled to the front of the hand. There it is. Yeah, really good to play, play Sagaraz into Urza Saga. Not as good to, to pass afterwards, but... Yeah. Could they be representing anything here? Or is it just a, a case that our hand's a little bit slow, a little bit dawdly? And now we see a saga on the other side. Maybe they were not expecting that as we spoke about. Yeah, it's going to be like kind of mm. surprising. You play against a Merktite deck and like you know they have Giganta, so you know they have Mana Leaks, so probably something is up, but then suddenly they play an Urza Saga and like, huh? Well, now, now maybe we think we're against a Breach deck. Right? We, yeah. we saw Breach last turn and we now see saga. So, oh, maybe it's a Breach combo deck that we're playing around. As a Springleaf Drone comes down. Yeah, I guess you could think that. Dragon Rage's Channeler is not super common in that list, but it's definitely not unheard of. Mm-hmm. Were there the earlier builds not playing that? And then Legislator came out and then everyone was like, oh, what the cuts? It used to be, yeah, yeah. It used to be a card in this deck. It used to be a very popular card in that Jeskai Breach combo deck, but I think the Legislator mostly suits the needs of the deck better. So we put the Ragavan into the graveyard, but that shows that they stayed in versus obviously Hammer Time. What's, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Some people don't like you know, like boiling them out because things like Mem might block it's too easy. Uh, you know, construct tokens, even something like a Stoneforge Musket can trade off with it. Do you like keeping them in, or maybe we just don't have enough cards to board to, you know, to bring in? Maybe we just got to keep it there. Yeah, I think you're kind of forced into into keeping that. Cherry X Men, get back in your box. <laughs> As we see the land come down. Now we can start going back and forth. Who's going to make the the most amount of uh, saga tokens? Or who's going to be the bigger ones? Is it going to be the other one? Well, normally the the hammer deck is more heavy in artifacts, so probably those constructs are going to be bigger. Not currently on this battlefield, though, my friend. Well, maybe we'll be actually because they get to go search up a one off this saga. So deciding what they want to do. It looks like they're going to make another construct. And then they're going to go search. So now again, what are we going to go find? Are we going to... Like, the Liam's not on. So are we going to be playing around Unholy Heats here? Or Lightning Bolts? Or potentially... Okay, we're having a little look. Do we have a response to kill one of these constructs before a hammer comes down? Yeah. Turns out you do. Although Marco taps his uh, Dragon Rage's channel there. And then actually decides to fetch. I like <coughs> that. I like, you know, because we're going to survey anyway. If we leave a card on top, we're going to end up fetching and fetching it away. So might as well do this first. Yeah, you, you, this is also to play around Pithy Needle. You want to fetch and then activate your own Urza Saga to prevent Pithy Needle dropping from Arthur's Urza Saga mm -hmm. and naming Urza Saga so that you cannot make constructs any longer. Because you already kind of committed the mana to make the construct, so you want to, you don't want to open yourself to that uh, line, I assume. Although that also makes sense. In response <coughs> to the construct making ability, while the construct in the battlefield is still just a 1-1, one, one, you can see removal spell to remove it from the battlefield, so, so the other ones are... That's constructs made. So we could potentially, you know, as you, you spoke about, get Piff in your door here. We could, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could turn off that as was, a on the other I side. I was mistaken in, in what actually Marco was doing. Misunderstood the intent. I think more likely we're going to see something like a Colossus Hammer than a Piffing Needle because it is a pretty big commitment to Piffing Needle Urza Saga in your Hammer deck because 
it's really good in your deck it's much better in your deck than it is in your opponent's deck and you don't want to uh, cut yourself off of that possibility that looks like there's a, a spring if drum if we're both wrong there is no pivot needle and or hammer coming out on here it looks like they value the mana mm. more that than makes sense yeah especially if they don't have a second white source and they've got something like a lot of uh you know paladins stuck in their hand or not yeah, sometimes the Springleaf Drum is the best card to grab. It gives you <clears throat> the best amount of... Uh, gives you the most mana, so you can actually progress and continue doing stuff. Committing uh, a construct, a hammer to a construct is pretty risky, and if you see Urza Saga in a deck like your opponents, like the deck that Marco is running, I think you can guess that... Uh, Uh, you can you can guess that Aether Spellbomb is likely in the deck, so you don't want to commit into a big construct, even if it's not gonna get killed, it might get bounced by by an Aether Spellbomb, and that's a huge blowout. But it also makes sense if we had another Saga in hand that we don't want to get a Piffin Needle to to lock out those Sagas. But they are free freeze, and you know the whole idea is us to apply pressure on our opponent here, so be able to get free freeze. We are working on this sound issue chat for you all, so just you know bear with us while we. We do the multitasking that we do. We're going to go search up. What, what are we going to go find with the Sizer Saga? Yeah, I think likely it's going to be Aether Spellbomb. Although, let's uh, see exactly. Yeah. Getting Aether Spellbomb just protects you from the... Um, ink Moth sort of kill, right? Ink Moths and like just general hammer equipping in the future. If you want to play play around that. Let's see what's going on. Constructs come across. Get those tokens changed into the you know the nice prop ones. Another land for turn. And that leaves us what with two hands. Uh, t two hands. Two cards in hand. No, three. Three hands. Three hands. So yeah, the constructs on, on Marco's side actually, despite my, let's say, a bit, despite the fact that I took them down. Yeah, <clears throat> they are they are big ones. They are pretty they're big, big. 4-4s, yeah. 4 for a deck that doesn't base itself around, around artifacts. We can also, you know, potentially we can make, our, make these smaller and bounce the token out of the way if we really want to come across for, do we have Delirium on? I it's very likely. Yeah, yeah Saga's uh, in the bin, isn't Ur it? Urza Saga following to the graveyard makes it very easy to get Delirium. So, boom, trigger. This is an easy way of getting a blocker out of the way, but, you know, potentially if there's a hammer. Well, if there's a hammer, then you invite oh, yeah, Marco to use the Aether Spellbomb, so you set yourself back more so. Creature's gonna go to the graveyard. This is, looks like it's resolving. And it's gonna be a attack for a seven. And that gives us lethal next turn. Yeah. Arthur, of course, will be able to make a construct himself, etc. But he's certainly on the back foot right now, trying to to stabilize to to do something. And the Aether spell bomb is not gonna make it any easier. Maybe we we'll want to something here. Maybe. Playing Merc Tides is not the way to play Merc Tides. Who would have thought? Well, there's upsides and downsides to, to different threats. Like, for some so for some reason, there was some spark that just caused people to, I guess, reevaluate their basic ideas on, on uh, what exactly are the important cards in the Merc Tide deck and what other things can be done. And we see people experimenting with Underworld Breach. We see this player bringing Urza Saga as their alternative game game ending big threat there's many many ways to go around it about it it's working out well for them here but you know we're looking how can we get across are we i think we're looking trying to think of if we can get an ink moth win here they seem to be tapping one and touching the, the ink moth if they want to move it forward but obviously they know there's a spell bombs on the back foot that's not going to help them here I'm not quite sure what is in Arthur's hand because I cannot quite catch it. But uh, a possible line that would just win right now would be to activate Ink Moth, attack with it after blocks, which there will be no blocks as it has flying. 
equip a hammer to it and protect your ink bomb nexus with a blacksmith skill but that only works if uh, Arthur's hand has exactly those two cards see how they go about it, it looks like they are literally leaning forward towards that ink bomb maybe they've got nothing else you know it is potentially making a, a token next turn to block good enough because then we've got to try and survive another turn after that it's that it's still weak to do the spell bomb yeah that, 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 that <clears throat> so it looks like that's how we're, we're, we're going to go about it we're going to probably make a token once it gets bounced animate the ink moth something along those lines try and you know get back in this game but are we playing to win here or are we, or are we playing not to lose sometimes you've got to take those risks and hope your opponent either doesn't see the line or doesn't have the you know the card make them have it iteration though is a good chance that they're gonna have a good uh odds of finding what they're after being able to look at basically the top four cards of the library it's, it's pretty hard to just rely on your opponent not using the on board ether spell bomb though so weirder things have happened in magic come on we know people miss things all the time they that's do part, yeah part of the like game, you, right? you know you take the you take those when when they happen to you but i think you should hard you know it's pretty hard to rely on that Oh yeah, yeah. To just like expect. Okay, yes. I guess my opponent will not activate. Maybe their they will not see the card that they've in purposely put to one side, ready to answer the. If if no alternative play is available, sure, go for it. Go for it, right? But if that's uh, if there's other routes you can take that could plausibly result in you winning the game, then probably you should think twice about it. So what's the 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 out we're looking at here, right? Is is basically we make a construct. Or we're going to animate the Ink Moth. Make, no, I think we need to have an Ink Moth win here. Because yeah, we do get probably. the search up next turn to go find a hammer that we can equip. As is right now, Arthur is facing lethal damage, right? There's 8, this 11, 11 damage. This is exactly and this. he has 11 life points. So something needs to block. Oh, so <clears throat> what if we make a construct? They then bounce it. The constructs on the other side of the battlefield get smaller. Yeah. Or if you make a construct and it gets hit by a removal spell, then you can still activate the Inkmoth mm -hmm. to block, but then I'm not sure if there is a route for you to win. Okay, so we're going to animate the Inkmoth. Alright. Block. Block a construct, yeah. Uh... Are we do we float mana? I'm not sure if mana was floated. You cannot float mana through steps, so you cannot float mana right here. So seems like Arthur for okay foregone. Uh, so didn't making want... a construct. I'm not sure exactly what is the uh, line. I'm sure he's got a line in his head. He's you know, he thought about that long and hard of what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. Here he is just going to float a mana, not going to um, make a construct. It's not like a, a ginger brute. A ginger brute with two hammers and a skill to protect would work, but we did not see that move last turn, so I don't think he has those cards. I'm trying to think what else we could have it like. Obviously, we didn't know about Urza Saga, so I doubt we brought things in that can deal with opposing Urza Sagas. Not like there's much either to, to really deal with Urza Saga off of your Urza Saga. I guess you... They play marches, right? Like marches could yeah, deal with Yeah, you could use march or if you... Arthur is not doing that in his list, but some people are splashing for Haywire Might, which is a mm -hmm. way to deal with Urza Saga. Let's see what's going on. Obviously, feature match, a lot of pressure, and it is a... Oop, here comes the Ginger Brute. Here comes the ginger boot with one mana floating. All right. So yeah, so we've we've got the line. We've got the we could go hammer, hammer, protection. <clears throat> I kind of want to see it. Kind of want to see it. See how they go about it. So still one floating. Five cards in hand. It's more than possible that they've got the you know, double hammer. I see well, one but, hammer. The main the main card here is protection, right? They have to protect what they're going for this turn that they're going for. So otherwise it will just get bounced. It could be something like uh Hammer Shadow Spear. Yeah, Hammer Shadow Spear would keep you in the game. 
So we're going to play the Ink Moth. Still one mana floating. Mm -hmm. And just passing the turn back again. That might not be enough, actually. So, block, block. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think how we, how we can get through this. Well, we can block twice, I guess, but again, Marco is capable of using the spell bomb. So there's like end of turn spell bomb bounces ginger root. All right, finally Marco broke and just couldn't <laughs> wait any longer. I think you can you can smell blood in the water, right? You can see that they, you know they're on defensive strategies here. They're trying not to lose the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I think that's what. Spellbomb is pretty good at is actually keeping you alive. So it's pretty okay to bounce the ginger brood here because you most likely win with your attack. And uh, might very well be the correct play, but uh, a little bit oh. of a dangerous one in a way. Um, I think this might be it. Yes, I'm not sure if mm. there was a lightning bolt cast this game, but if there was, then you can just recast it. Again, if not, you can use Ooh, Misha's yeah. bubble to do dig towards it for through lots of cards. But it seems like just a simple use of a combat step is going to be enough to prompt uh, exactly any, any blockers that they make. They will just be able to get them out of the way. They've got so many unholy heats in there yeah. in delirium. We do have a backup feature match for you. So we have got the uh, four color elementals deck versus Azorius Hammer. Do you see a <laughs> Fury seems to be a good one. That is on the battlefield. So maybe that one got ephemerated. That seems like a horrible combo. Oh, okay. We're just we're just going straight into it, playing it all on the battlefield as we tune in here, ladies and gentlemen. This hammer looks like it is going to resolve on the battlefield. We're going to draw a card. Yeah, it seems like it might be a rather quick game. Given yeah, that could be a quick situation. Back. Hopefully, the judges are out there running around trying to find <laughs> another match just in case this one uh, finishes early. We'll see what uh, game they're actually in. This, they could, this could just be game one. This can't be game one. Not a free land on the battlefield. That doesn't make sense. We'll make sure we'll, we'll check out what game this is. Trial of Progenitus is mostly mostly a cyber cyber card. Gonna fetch chance. There is a few. Maybe the this is all in response to the fury. Mm, no, no, no. It was uh, the Hammer player turn. Hammer player's turn. Okay, so yeah, Fury yeah. is on the battlefield. Scary one. Fury probably ended up here through... I'm guessing it got flickered, right? Yeah, from some kind of flickering, but I don't see a flickering effect in the graveyard. Unless that card underneath is it not the, the Woodshot Heave is an Ephemerate. Which... Is it, there's the white one, right? The two-mana white one. The enchantment now that people use. It's like a free match. the Spirit Realm, but yeah. uh, it's probably not... In uh, Clement, Clement's uh, deck list. Let me look up the deck list real quick. You have a little look, obviously. But, the, you know, this board state after a Fury is still pretty scary over on the Hammer side. We've got a way to protect. We've got a way to tax. We've got the Paladin. So we've got a card advantage. We've got a Hammer on the battlefield. There's an Ink Moth. A lot going on, on this side. There's not even Ephemerates in the deck. How... Can you find a way how this got on the battlefield? Okay, the ephemerates are there in the sideboard. That does make sense. Okay. As a ley line, Bind's going to come down here and try and get rid of the protection of the the uh, giver of runes. Mm -hmm. It's going to target the pad in my looks of it. What do you give it protection from? I'm guessing white. Stops it from late things like... Oh, it was a path that... Uh, it was like a prismatic ending. ending. A ending. prismatic ending targeted the Giver of Runes as that's kind of a forced play. When you have a removal spell, your opponent mm. has an untapped Giver of Runes without summoning sickness, then it is fairly unwise for the most part to target <laughs> other creatures. You don't recommend, no? Yeah, yeah. So okay. you target Giver of Runes, and we can assume that uh, it targeted Pure Steel Paladin in response. Probably gave it protection from white to prevent another prismatic ending happening on the. Pure Steel Paladin, but for the most part it was just uh, to get rid of the first layer of protection, maybe let uh, so Clement this... uh, keep up some other interaction cards. So this is the other thing I was going to talk about then, is we could have put my end in the hammer. Yes, that is also a line of play that which you Which could... doesn't leave us open to these sort of lines, which um, I think they're asking about the interaction now about the flying. So once Hammer is equipped, it loses the flying. We pay an extra one, it regains the flying. 
and uh, I think we may it, maybe we didn't know this interaction beforehand and if we didn't we're about to find out the hard way looks like we've got something to add to this it's a rite of passage of sorts for every <laughs> every modern player although you certainly don't want that to happen at a at a tournament where you're uh, fighting for your wins and want to perform the best you can it does seem like uh, something is going to be cast as uh, this looks like a, is... a Bosseju oh. targeting not clear to me if it was pointed yeah, exactly. at it was kind of next to point the and then went, oh hold a minute do I want to go after, after the hammer here actually both please and oh, we see blackstone skill absolutely blown out given the hex proof and then that is going to be game two it looks like we're going to be going to a game three here rough you know what i mean here's my answer Kyle. Here's my answer, but i think that prismatic ending could have gone after the hammer and kind of maybe neg we don't know if they had another hammer in hand or to negate it but i think that's where i would have pointed it i'd say it was quite tricky if they've got a giver on the battlefield that you've, you've basically got a point at that but I could get rid of the hammer, which realistically in that situation is the bigger threat. And then I can still start blocking. But, you know, the line that they took, is, I'm sure they had reasons. There, there is some, some tension and friction, right? Because Prismatic Ending can target the Giver of Runes, but mm -hmm. Poseidon cannot target creatures. So, oh, it, so it can being... target the Ink Moth, but at the same time, Giver can protect the Ink Moth from the Poseidon. It does not, it is not able to protect... Uh, so you think basically they made the decision knowing that they had the Besage and they could cast the Besage. They thought they were safe, basically, yeah, with yeah, yeah. ending this, Besage you that, I'm safe, I don't think I can uh, lose I, the game. I, yeah, situation. I think if you, if you like don't expect your opponent to have a blacksmith skill, or if you want to bank on them not having a blacksmith skill in this spot, then it's reasonable to make that move. You It's kind of a clean way of dealing with the Giver of Runes, enabling all of your other removal spells to target whatever you wish, and still being safe from um, death by the Colossus Hammer immediately. So yeah, so look but of course, in hindsight, it does uh, yeah. look silly. Hindsight's a great thing. Looking at this cyborg, what what do you think we would bring in? I think, obviously, we saw the Ephemerates. We saw the Pseidus. There was a Fury in there. Uh, these are the sort of cards. I want to get these on the battlefield early. I want to deal with all these small little creatures before they can, uh, you know, put together the game plan of attaching everything they need to. There was uh, some Breakers in there as well. I think I want to bring them in to deal with the Hammers, deal with Sagas, deal with Sagala's Aids. Exactly. It all kind of lines up perfectly. But over on the Hammer side, that's the one that we, you know, how would I want to sideboard in this matchup? We're not going to get a chance to talk through that because the players are going to be way too quick for us. They want to go get some lunch in between rounds. Clearly, as you see, Sagala's Aids are going to come down there. For the hammer player, as we go back across to our four color element, I think I think you might want to still keep it pretty minimal and keep the base of your deck functioning when playing hammer, and then try to use the protection spells to fight off against the multitudes of uh, creature removal and artifact enchantment removal that the elemental stack has in it. And now we know there's ephemerates on the other side. We know there's furies. There's a good chance of solitude. So, you know, we've got to try and pick our points when we're going to start going for that big one shot kill with maybe an ink moth or a hammer. That's a drum. That's the new fancy uh, drum that's been printed. Springleaf drum. How else are we going to move forward here? An ink moth is pretty nice to develop a threat without exposing yourself to creature removal for a turn. So, you can pick your spots better and then try to fight when you're ready to fight and here comes ginger brute seeing this one yeah ginger brute might, maybe is going to be used for mana we see i think a pure sea paladin not sure what else so yeah we could be, basically we could be missing our second uh white source here this is gonna tap we're gonna hammer yeah a lightning bolt targeting the and this is where the solitude, this is a lot of cards to deal with a ginger brute. So ginger brute gets exiled, but then all this clears up. They're going to go up to 21 points of life. And we're going to untap to the elementals turn. Yeah, kind of kind of forcing the issue right now so that you free your mana on the later turns maybe. Although solid, the solid play is cost you zero mana anyway, so... We see. Just gonna pick the companion to yeah, hand. We see picking up the companion to hand. It's it's fine. Like it does help you a little bit. It can fuel your future solitude. Again, let's, let's see what where we're gonna move for this. We're just gonna get a planes. 
we've seen what like two or three hammer players now everyone's got different planes some people just got whatever's in the draft box some people go dig out blind what, what's your uh basics of choice when you play do uh in the finals i think there's uh, enough basics in the game right now and they're all relatively pretty so it's a shame to play with just like much much basics and I oh think you, you you mix them up you don't have all the same no no oh that's the sort of thing that tilts me i'm like nope they've all got to be the same or be perfect we're going to do the uh artifact count here we're going to activate the ink moth this gives us our third artifact one two three this hammer is probably going to start getting equipped do we have another solitude there is a solitude in hand Notably, I think we see the Paladin tap for the drum, activate the ink moth. So you have a window to kill the Paladin uh, in response to that. But uh, unfortunately, Clement didn't take it and uh, instead chosen to get rid of the ink moth uh, nexus, which now leaves the Paladin able to equip mm. itself with the hammer and still leave a humongous threat on the battlefield. That is two solitudes down as we're going to shock this thing, go to 15. People asking this is a closed deck list tournament. Once they get to the top eight, then they will have access to each other's deck list. But this whole weekend, it is a closed deck list tournament. Over 400 people turned up this weekend in Italy to battle it out, see who can take these big hits off the hammers, clearly, because there's a lot of them floating around the room, a lot of Mercs hide. And we're just going to see a Sentinel come down. Yeah, you could have considered maybe moving the hammer to the Esper Sentinel as that does work uh, well against non-creature spells, but it does expose the Paladin a bit more against Fury, etc. So you might uh, also decide not to do that. It's a pretty close decision. Let's see. So we're going to gain, gain land. Obviously, Omnath, we've seen this card before. Miracles in Modern. Brain 6 is going to come down. Tax is going to be paid. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to ping here. Uh, Ren 6 goes down to 2, not 1. Maybe it's a super pink. There you go. Oh, yeah, I think I'm quickly super fixes pink. the... There's one situation which Ren, Ren 6 minus is down to 1. It's when... Often happens when uh, the turn is controlled by your opponent because of Emrakul, the promised end or something. Pink. Ren tends to ping itself uh, on those turns very often. Another attack from this hammer. Block then fetch. Not oh. sure if the life totals are exactly updated. I think uh, Clement took a hit. Maybe I'm mistaken. But uh, seems it's, like it's risky here, right? Like if we don't block and there's another equipment in hand, we can just lose the game outright. So yeah, yeah, that's risky. But you don't, you don't want that. But it's also unclear if you're incentivized to block otherwise because your Omnath is valuable on the battlefield. But uh, Clement chooses to to do that, and it seems like it was a forced block because as the lifetime updates, we see that it drops to a lower amount. But now that empty hand, we see a pa another paladin and moving the hammer from the other one, which yeah, that's going to kill. Actually, it. should kill the paladin with damage marked on it. As uh, we're just passing that seems down. like the players have have missed that but yeah like that's something that it's pretty easy to miss and you don't shouldn't necessarily do that you have to keep track of the damage that your creatures take in combat and then we're, good. we're just sure chasing that, that up now that, that toughness doesn't change below the amount of toughness that there you go the judges are on it now the judges are sorting it out Gonna okay, we're just we're just basically we're not even asking, just yep, it's in the graveyard. Yeah, pretty no, simple fix, but yeah, you, yeah, nothing's changed really that, that's affected by it. Just had four damage on it, removed the hammer across, <laughs> it's got reanimated <laughs> only to die again. Draw for the turn. What have we got? What we what sort of cards are we looking for here? They're at 10. Are you looking for got five men are open? One saga, Stoneforge Mystic hammers because they draw cards with paladin mostly you just look to attack because your opponent is dead if they don't have anything oh but just <laughs> so, just, just yeah. a bit of toying oh and they did draw the uh stoneforge mystic anyway just for good measure mm. why play me i say make him have it make him have it 
But we're gonna that's, see. That's that's an important part of playing Hammer. You oftentimes have to make them have it, and frequently they will not. So we're gonna see if we've got any more feature matches, any more backups for you. I'm looking at the team. They're not looking at me though. Have we got any more backup feature matches? Nope. That that's gonna be it. Okay, cool. We'll come back to us in the booth. Then we'll. Uh, We've got the metagame breakdown that we spoke about before, so we'll just finish off talking about that, and then we'll go into uh, what people are playing for this weekend. So, by the, by the team, we'll go to the prizes, and then we'll do the metagame. So, chat, there's a bit of communication back and forth, but welcome back to the booth. My name is Will, this is Canister, needs no introduction, and this is the metagame that's going to be coming up on your screen really shortly, or we're going to oh, have the toy in with us. No, we're going to go over the prizes. This is what people are playing for this weekend. So if you come to one of the LMSs, obviously we play, we have a couple of these and then you can come to the finals and you try to win invites to these finals. This isn't the only way you can qualify for them. You can qualify them through playing for your local game store, win one of the tournaments there, you get an invite. But if you come to these, there's a bit more on the line if you manage to top eight or win these events. As you see there, there's a lot more. There's money, there's ticks, there's booster boxes. You get free entry to another LMS. You get entry to Athens, which is what this one's going to qualify people for. But hotel and flights that's the big one to me like when i'm playing back in the day especially when you know when we used to have pro tours used to get all this paid for you wizards decided to you know how they they want to do it now they want to take it away and give more prize money to everyone turning up but that, just, that used to be the slogan yeah play the game see the, see world. the world and you know legacy appearing that on so if you manage to come to one of these and do well and you manage to top eight you do get free flights and hotel as well as all the other prizes that come with it and when they do pay it all the way down to uh, top 64 which is normally basically if you make day two you basically cashed so that's what everyone's been playing for if you want to turn up to one of these why not you know come if you're, you're in chat and you're giving everyone a stick that's playing the feature match come here play let's see how well you can do on a, on a feature match with all the pressure i invite you all here and if you do maybe i'll have a selfie with you please but we'll go back to the metagame breakdown we'll show you what that, that was this weekend before we end this round and we move on to lily and uh philip so this is the mayor breakdown. We spoke about this before. For people just tuned in, Merc Tide, number one deck. Kind of assumed that. Hammer time. We've seen that quite a lot on camera so far, so I imagine it's doing quite well when I was look, walk around the table.
Welcome back, guys. We are here for the fourth round. Am I right? Five. Yeah, five. five. No, fourth. Five. Five round. Round five. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've stepped out one. Uh, five round of this uh, event. We are in Trieste. We are playing modern right yeah. now. And that's this true. event will qualify for Athens. Yes, that's all true. It's all true. We've got uh, many, many very good players here in the room. And we can uh, see the players to watch right now. Exactly. We've got Simon Nielsen and Andrea Mangucci. You probably know them. Oscar, which wo who won uh, Amsterdam, actually, with Young mm -hmm. and still playing Young Moth. We've got um, Jendrek Schmidt, a very, very powerful Polish uh, blue magician. Uh, Marcus Licht who is uh, Respect the Cat. You might know them from uh, MTGO results. And then we Mattia have Rizzi. Mattia Rizzi and Andrea Piemonti, yeah. who is two other Italian, two Italians, very exactly. good players. Exactly. So uh, we'll see how they do at the end of the day, because still anything, anything yeah. can happen from this point. And we've got players and shuffling up. Also for Italian players, I can tell you that uh, uh, Akira, Simone Akira, is 3-1-2. So he's also in... Uh, in a good spot. Okay, so we've got Merfolk versus, versus Jeskai Breach. That's a very powerful matchup. And, and the Merfolk one is, was uh, the one that you chose before? Uh, no, I mean, this yeah, is the, the same, same player, but I chose player. the, the Yeah, no, no, player. of course, but we yes. we know his decks yes, because we, we saw it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the Breach deck is an actual combo Breach, so we're not watching any, any fair Breaches today. Or in this matchup, we're watching combo breaches, which is a bit different than in TS2. Okay, so players are still shuffling up. The, the breach player is taking a mulligan. Now, from my experience, uh, having played a, a, a bit of breach, and having played against Merfolk multiple times, I can say that this matchup isn't the best for Breach. It's quite difficult to beat early pressure, unblockability, and disruption in the form of, you know, spell pierce, force of negation, uh, sometimes and a well-timed subtlety. And now, on the, f the fifth round, you know that your opponent uh, uh, know how to play his decks. Oh, certainly, yeah, certainly. Um, is the combo-less version <laughs> better? The, the, the combo version. Um, I think it's better to play the combo version. I'll tell you why. I personally play the combo version, but like 80% of the time I side out the combo anyways. So you have got the combo game one for those like linear matchups like Living End, you know, uh, Rhinos, I don't know, Boggles, Titan, what have you. And then you can just trim it, cut it completely or trim it and, and bring in the fair parts, fair elements. And that's 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 my preferred approach. Game one combo, game two your opponent never knows. <coughs> We've got Meanwhile. double powerful one drop. Vile mm -hmm. from Merfolk, Ragavan from, from Breach. It's always funny to me when uh, people fetch directly into the graveyard. Yeah, that's, without a, that's even a classic. touching the board. Yeah, that's a classic. I sometimes even see people tapping fetchlands because technically you tap yeah, them. Yeah, technically that's, that's it's correct. That just doesn't happen. Like if I see someone tapping fetchlands, I'm immediately thrown off and I don't know don't know what to think. <laughs> okay, pass the turn. Let's see if that Ragavan connects. I doubt it does. Now it, if it does, I can see that there might be some kind of turn to Teferis coming. Mm. Also, I took a glance at the bridge player's deck list and they play a card that I personally love a lot and I have got a bit of hate for, but also a lot of love, love for, uh, which is Monastery Mentor. That's a card I have been a huge fan of. I've told people to play. I play. Sometimes people say I, I play Jeskai Mentor basically post board and I know that this bridge player indeed has Monastery Mentor in the sideboard. And it's not very common? Or oh, is it? it's not. It's not. People people prefer third path iconoclast or just mm -hmm. not having not having any additional threats at all. But I think iconoclast, if it gets killed, having left like two tokens, um, doesn't doesn't add much to the game. 
while Monastery Mentor having left two tokens very much does. Okay, so we got some Bobble, Connive Trigger. Yep. He discarded another... The, the same creature. I... I can't remember the name of that creature at Ledger the time. Ledger Shredder. Thank you. Ledger Shredder. Right, so we've got Vile and Bobble Trigger. Now there was some... I, I saw some communication between players on how to stack the triggers and mm -hmm. the the active players trigger go on the stack first uh, and non active players second and so then uh, yeah so we got attack in pondering blocks now what could happen is a lot could be put in from the vile end yeah what the link hex catcher could be cast now the printing of, of, of the hex catcher allowed merfolk to actually be able to both flash in, actually play mm -hmm. lords, and also vial them in. Instant speed, that is. Right, but th there either isn't another lord, or that's like a trickery thing. What do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I do think that Breach will have problems, and okay. that's for multiple reasons. So first is this or disruption, right? Like, like for example, tr uh, Merfolk Trickster, like Vodalian Hexcatcher, la like making everything a uh, a force by as difficult. Yeah, vile. Yeah, lords value. Um, that is just an unblockability from their side. Like they can just play double load and bash in for like eight or what, what have you. Is difficult. Is difficult. You know, you want you might want to go for the combo, and they've got hex catcher to counter, force of negation to counter. It is winnable, but it's really difficult, and also it hedges a lot on whether you play fury in the sideboard because some players do, and and how your draw lines up. So we've got silver gill adept drawing a card. Now it's a three two with with hex catcher. considering whether to block mm -hmm. yeah of course he's blocking i'm both in the graveyard expressive iteration of course right yeah so what, what could happen is yeah, exactly that or not so any merfolk can be sacrificed to make make it pay to one and yeah yeah one course. won't be paid but there, there is another land, so that's not the end of the world. So basically, I mean, actually, I think that's a good, that's a good thing for the bridge player because they traded a two mana card which does not affect the battlefield for a creature that was on the battlefield. So because that's usually how breach loses, like there are a ton mm -hmm. of creatures bash in and you die. Now in this case, he traded this otherwise non-board affecting card for you no know, diminishing the damage output. That Merfolk could uh, could uh, show. Okay, so oh, that's that's a really good situation, actually. Yeah. Merfolk, no creatures. Ledger Shredder, trigger. Yeah, he even says, "Wait, I want to resolve the trigger first. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, very technically correct. Yeah. I think a land will be ditched. Yeah. Yeah. Kill it. So no counter on the shredder yeah exactly <laughs> i'm sorry for that but i used to call him the bird so uh -huh. <laughs> okay so we've got a draw and i get so no nothing flashed in on the end step i can see lord of atlantis in hand okay pass yeah, if that's the fairy resolves it's going to be really useful because it will it will allow to both bounce file uh, mm. and just make sure nothing can no trickery is going on basically yeah so the fairy on the stack of course he's trying okay so the, the, what what could happen is like if there could be like hard cast subtlety that we have seen already that beat respect the cat but we've got merfolk trickster turning off conive hex catcher that doesn't trigger conive because it's turned off uh, and lord of atlantis in hand wow that's that's like a such a stacked hand and uh, with perfect mana as well two two plus chalice on two 
such a good spot. Oh, and, and Cash is yeah. in Hexcatcher. Ooh, hoo, hoo, instead of uh, Trickster. Interesting. Interesting. I would I would normally assume that Trickster would be cashed in and the Lord would stay in. Okay, Waterlock Grove. Yeah, there was no bird trigger because <laughs> of because it was turned off by Trickster. No, no, no. No, it wasn't missed. It wasn't missed. It had no abilities because of the Trickster. Like oh, this, oh my goodness. Oh this Murf oh. Murfolk deck. Pure gas. And now we can see why he's on four zero. Yeah. Now the the bubble. Let's yeah. Let's see what let's see what's happening. Oh, we can. I think it was a spell. I think that was a spell. Mhm. Mm Portland. Uh, draw on upkeep. This could be red. Oh, it's saga. Uh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Another reason why this matchup is is bad is because Merfolk have got main deck ways of killing your saga. Mm -hmm. With like Merfolk and Spreading Seas. Mm, on top of that, I remember many games where I begin with either Ragavan or Emery, like very early, like 10 1 Emery even. And they always have this member. Oh, Sveilun, that's such a good draw. Yeah. Oh, Sveilun is just such a beating. Okay. So now the way. Uh, now the way the game could flip around is if there is any con any combo involved, but on two mana that's not possible. Yeah, but this Feyloon is just so good. No, even even if this iteration showed like double removal, then that's not mm. doable because of Ward, which Feyloon provides. So yeah. Okay, Saga yep. trigger. <coughs> okay, so his best bet was probably that the opponent would miss uh, the ward trigger. This resolves. Okay. Now, if of the bobble he draws another unholy heat, he can unholy heat Sveilun and then get one damage. Oh, bolt! Oh, that was so close. That's a bolt. If that wasn't holy heat, yeah, it could try it, but uh, well, it's just game one. Okay. That so was... we're going to game two, and let's see what happened. Yeah, I th I think it just it only gets worse for for breach really mm -hmm. because Merfolk have got again removal. <coughs> Land, land destruction, there. counter mm -hmm. magic, flash threats, um, unblockability, car advantage for in like Sveilun and Silver Guild Adept. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's going to be super tough, really. And again, not impossible, but but very tough. And no, even though Jeska Breach is on the uptick, we also have an uptick of Merfolk players. And so this matchup actually happens way, way more often. Like if if somebody told me like half a year ago that we would have this matchup, I would probably not believe. But now, yeah. And we have the deck list of the bridge. Yeah, of the bridge player. And uh, I have to say, I mean, I absolutely love <laughs> what this. Okay, okay. This looks like liter literally 75 I play. <sighs> no, literally, with like two bolts, three heats, three main deck Teferi, um, you know, the sideboard composition. Like, it is, this is a double station. Okay, this is literally what yeah. I personally play. So, <laughs> yes, yes, I really like this, this, uh, this version. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. Um, and so what, what can we expect? We could expect some trimmage of combo pieces because it's going to be quite difficult to go off. Mm, Murfo could have Force of Negation and you might expect that. Mm -hmm. Fury is excellent. Mystical Dispute is excellent. I really like Shadow Spear. 
So you won't be able to block, but you will be able to attack back, build mm -hmm. like a 4 4 or 5 5 construct, and get some life total back. Yeah. Engineered explosive such on 2 is going to uh, do a good job. Um, you could consider Monastery Mentor even uh, either as a way to block, and so you can, you don't you only worry about lords, which give mm, unblockability, but you don't care about anything else because you can keep blocking, and or as a way to actually win a fair game and just yeah win that way because you might not be able to actually mm, have the combo online. And so they were just finishing shuffling up. Ready for the game two. <laughs> game one took like ten ish minutes. We'll see. No, again, yeah, this matchup. Like, this Sorry. could take a long time. This could take a short time. You never know. Really, like they, this could be like a five minute game. This could be like a like a twenty minute game, depending on the specific draw. You know how much interaction both players have. Yeah, but we are ready for everything because even if they close the game very fast, we have table two and then we will search uh, some other games to go on and fill the entire turn with games of magic for the streams. Yeah, absolutely. So until the very end of the t of the round, you will be able to watch paper magic content. Until the very end of the day. That <laughs> is also true, yes. <laughs> yeah, the downtime is literally only when uh, the players are getting standings and they're getting sat down. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you know it's pure logistics. But other than that, and we have still magic. four uh, full round of magic. So for like four hours, something like what four hours because it's fifty minutes for every every round. Okay, we've got the opening sevens. Yeah. Okay, bridge player considering his options whether to keep. Uh, and I can see hmm. a. I think I can see double land. Uh, yeah. Okay, and as you said, immediately to the graveyard. <laughs> e on one to prevent any ether vial shenanigans. And of course, if I bought it in, as you were saying before, it, it yeah. was a good idea. So, so the most impactful EE is on two, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But E on one, turning off any any ether vials mm. is probably worth it. Now you don't have to even pop it on one. So yeah, so tight shaper is played, but because it's just a one one, you might not even pop it and just do your own thing. So, for example, ledger shredder right now would be great. Just establish a threat and then continue with the game. Showing this in, okay, life total getting kind of low. Oh, I forgot, yeah, yeah, Merfolk also plays Chalice. Yeah, yeah I mean, God, there's <laughs> so, so many <laughs> annoying cards from Merfolk. You know, Dismember, EE, Force of Negation, you know, uh, Vodalian Hexcatcher, just so, so many things. Um... Oh, they also play subtlety, uh, if that ever... Oh my god, subtlety now? Don't do this. Don't do this. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I can feel you, Breach Brother. I can feel you. This is just... Okay, put it on top again. I can see Teferi, Breach. Right, so th this way it's quite difficult to beat if if they play like you know, yeah they 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 draw a card now, their upper card, oh to get another yeah. adept ad ad to keep drawing. You know, bash in a bit now. To be fair, breach is down to thirteen because of the damage um, the player has dealt himself. Another Emery. Now it resolves, fury e, -E bubble, and dispute. Okay, so basically what I said would be sided in is sided in. <laughs> Um, now they can loop bubbles or, more, more importantly, loop EEs. Okay. Yeah, 
you can loop, loop E's every turn. So for example, pop E on one, get another E on two. But now, he might not have the time. Yeah, it's getting very low. And Michele is keeping a lot of pressure right now. It could be not, not a big problem, as we saw before, but could be. Yeah, right now is a very difficult spot. Mm -mm. Okay, play bubble. Potentially, yep. Probably use the bubble to scry, yep. And then use the removal spell because I saw unholy heat. To use, so use the unholy heat on the master of waves. And I hope there is no. There are no more lords coming. Now, if this strand finds an island, because it can't find a mountain, if it finds an island, then this doesn't really help in good top decks because you want to top deck removal and blue doesn't do it. Mm. You also don't want to fetch. Now we're down to five. That's super low. Yeah, you have to find some way to resolve at least one creature about a two. <coughs> I mean, what you could do is Unholy Heat, Master mm. of Waves, and then pop the EE on one to kill the Tide Shaper. And so, and in this position, you do not lose to a Lord. You, you wouldn't lose to two to Lords. Oh, passing the turn, okay. Uh, and just says wait. I don't know why you wouldn't use the removal spell on your own turn. That's much safer because here you could get caught by I mean whatever spell P is. So. Oh, fury would be excellent, of course. And I can see. Okay, Lord of Atlantis, uh, Silver Gill Adept, Ether Vial. Oh, Force of Negation. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, that's also why it's kind of difficult to play against Merfolk, because you have to play against for Spell Pierce, I know, Spreading Seas, Subtlety, Force of Negation. Yeah, Lord, bash in, kill the ones. Of course. Now, the best draw of the top would be a land, preferably Basic Mountain, so you can replay the, the E on 2 and immediately pop it. So, land one time. Yeah, I can see. Oh, he did. Nah. But it's a fetch. Oh, fetch land, yeah. Uh, this is town. So, you can you can fetch for a mountain and and do the thing. Zygol, well, spell piece is not played in Merfolk. I mean, I'm not sure how stock the deck itself is that you can say what is, like, whether a thing is stock. Um, Extra draw, you mean? I did if it not was catch the that. one from the bu the bubble, or you saying that is two cards from the bubbles in the I've upkeep of the opponent. I think what they mean is that the Merfolk player drew a card, then the bridge player stopped them, uh, and then they draw drew again. another card. Mm. Right, but I I d I do not recall that. I was focused on a different thing, so cannot confirm. Okay, Eon two pop. Well. This is how they might get back. I'm relooping, but they are at literally one life. Literally one life. And the turn is passed. Okay, Ether Spellum is a very good pickup because now you can, for example, play E on one, um, have Spell Bomb, and then you're isolated against anything that could happen. Also, looping bubbles is is fine. Potentially, the way the Breach player comes back is thanks to the Merfolk player missing land drops. Okay, immediately right. heat. Bubble draw. Okay, ether vial. Yeah, because the the Merfolk player knows that they have to start multi spelling. Mm. They can't just keep playing one spell a turn because, you know, Emery will keep that in check. I mean, if this if the bridge player comes back 
from this position. This now is he's wild. trying to ferry. Oh, this resolving is huge, yeah. because now he knows there is no like end step shenanigans. He's yeah. safe, so he can do whatever he wants now. So play a Tapland, use Emery. So to have oh, I think we're doing it. Breach brethren, we are doing it. Drop, drop. Now the Merfolk player has to play a, a spell main phase. That's probably going to be mm -mm -mm. main phase, uh, vial, and a creature. What? Some uncertainty? What? Okay. Show what Dalian Hexcatcher. That's a very good show because. Um, he knows that the opponent has seen that card. Okay, we've got mm -hmm. Island and now probably Vile. Okay, Uptick. Saga Saga. Sugar. Yeah, so basically, if if you make a play but no information has been exchanged, um, you can. Oh, 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 okay, 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 chat, okay, chat. <laughs> oh, la la, oh, la la, la la, la la, la la. Yes, yes, monastery mentor. Yes, let's go. Trigger. Yes, make a token. Trigger mentor. Let us go. <laughs> yes, Alf MTG. Literally. <laughs> oh my god. Pass. Draw. I mean, Monastery and Mentor, I mean. Again, is the second time that we saw someone at 1 HP, 1 life point, trying to come back. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm really happy that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So Tide Shape is going to kill Saga. Yeah, that's a very good interaction. I mean, people, people... I mean, laugh at Monastery Mentor. Don't. Don't. I mean, you can... This car just carries the game. Like, in, in, in a breach kind of, no you know, Emery Bobble deck, this is just wild. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I can see someone understands me. Thank you very much. Because we've got a reader in Tide Shaper, but, you know, Saga's going down. Who cares? You've got, you know, Emery plus Mentor on the battlefield. Okay, response or oh. bolt mm. trigger. Let Good me bolt. trigger my monastery mentor. Trigger. I'm announcing a trigger. And he actually does. So he read the he read tight shaper. Um and in response to the trigger, killed tight shaper, triggered monastery mentor, another tight shaper. Another shaper. Yeah, but now you have no mana left. Yeah. And the and the breach player has got mastery mentor, <laughs> so this would end pretty fast. Turn the corner, shall we? There are also like four cards in the hand for the breach player. Mm -mm. Okay, so it's just draw, just just draw of the of the ether spell. Room. How confident do you have to be, because you're dead to any... I mean, okay, if there is any Lord played, you can just preemptively play E on 2, and you know that you're never dead to a Lord, so I guess that makes sense. And and it's played on 1? Oh, okay, you can pop Tight Shaper plus Ether Vial right now. But again, it's still, still sketchy in the face of a potential Lord. Trigger Monastery Mentor. Okay, they're considering what could be done. Unfortunately, we can't see the hand. It's pushed back. Oh, po okay, pop once, pops once immediately. Resolve. Hmm. 
Ooh, let's go. Okay, okay. What did I tell you, chat? What did I tell you? Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this is beautiful. This Breach thing is a, is really funny because <laughs> you're really enjoying this game. Like, I am. for one card came on the battlefield and it was like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, because this is this is a card I love. This is a card I play. It's the card I think people should play. Yeah, I really, I really like this thing. I mean, let's let's go. Also, because it's always beautiful when we can see someone with so with one one life point that can still do something. Ooh, and a fury! Oh my god, Whoa. that was a sweep! That was a sweep! Really, really amazing this thing. Ha, ha! And now we go to game three. Yes, we're going to game three. Unfortunately, Breach is going to be on the draw. Mm. Fortunately for Merfolk. Um, but this was the game where, where I turned to Emery was subtleteed and Breach missed a third land drop. So mm -hmm. coming back from this position and at one life, that's huge. That's really, really huge. So let's see if they make any changes between games. For example, maybe on the draw, on the play. Yeah, of course. Um, I could imagine, for example, maybe Mentor comes out on the draw because you want to, you know, to play it more aggressively. Or maybe you keep it on the draw because you want to play it defensively. Mm. I guess. Um, because Makes sense. Mentor does everything. Okay. So they're just shuffling up. Yeah, okay. There may have been some changes between between uh, the configurations. Um, yes, I agree that subtlety is suboptimal versus breach. I mean, it, it's very backbreaking against specifically um, Emery, but if you expect maybe on stream mentor, then I guess. <laughs> uh, also, subtlety can actually be really good against Fury, and the question is whether Michele knew that there could be Fury or kept subtlety in in case there was a Fury anyways. But uh, subtlety in a Fury is a really, really solid, uh, solid proposition. Yeah, it was a really good comeback. Yeah, very good. I mean, <laughs> one life, missing the land drop, but stayed alive. And of course, they have to... Um, I I sometimes I forget in words in English. Uh, the life points are not correct, of course, because I mean, they have to yeah. start it. I mean, yeah, at this particular point, yeah. <laughs> The bridge player has to shuffle the deck a bit better because I know there is a mentor on the bottom and we do not want him on the bottom. Mm. Cut, cut the deck, cut the deck. Come on, come on. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, now mentor, mentor is like around the mil middle-ish. Okay, now we can play. Now, I said at the very beginning of this match that the player on the right is, a, is playing a combo deck. Well, you couldn't really see that, right? Mm -hmm. It did. It did not look like a combo deck. I really like the thing that also in the chat people are um, split in two. Someone is cheering up for uh, the player on the left. Someone for the player on the right. Yeah, it's kind of good. I love good magic when it's played like this and you can see something different and something uh, funny to watch like this comeback was really really funny yeah that was that was a great comeback <laughs> and I, i'm again i personally play play breach so of course i'm kind of a fanboy there <laughs> and the mentor was just such a solidified the the, the person of the deck i i'd be rooting for okay so we see the opening hands The deck lists are not public. They will be public af uh, during or after I've the asked, top eight tomorrow. I've asked, but um, I can't have uh, an answer. 
so probably I, I've asked the wrong person. I will ask again after. But not today. Not today. T tomorrow. Today you're not. There are no deck lists uh, disclosed. Okay, both players actually go down to five. So this game could have a completely different texture because both players are on limited resources. And which one performed better in in this case with less card in hands? Good question. I th I think breach actually, mm. because Merfolk if they have cards like a force of negation and subtlety, now they are much worse when you've got so many limited resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, if you keep a hand as like you no know, two lands, three creatures, and one of them is a tight shaper, then you go like turn one, one one creature what accomplishes nothing really. So, I really prefer breach because breach can keep like triple land removal iteration and go to town. Makes sense. Uh, Jess K Bridge is grinding station. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is the is the station variant. Now it's weird that people are asking because literally two weeks ago or a week ago the station variant was the default. So you would always assume it's the bridge variant. But now people have started adopting bridge in fur shells, and that's hmm. not obvious anymore. Oh, oh my! Oh, down! Huh? To f what? <laughs> what is happening? What? Both plays down to four? <laughs> this is really a shuffling game. <laughs> okay, I mean, and this is funny, actually. Okay, this is funny. What is that? I'm not sure I, I, I have seen... Because I saw the... Bri I thought the bridge play would keep, because he could keep, like, I was like, I think, Iteration, EE, e, Saga, and Lance. So, so, I, so unless I miss... A hand, do you think? I think, I mean, on five, I guess... <laughs> but I guess not. So, I mean, no, gentleman's agreement. I mulligan, you mulligan. Now, on a mull to four, um, as a breach, I would love to see land, land removal um, iteration or land, emery, bobble, bobble. Something like that. That would be great. For the Merfolk player, I don't know. Probably like land, vile, Two creatures and then nothing else ever. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I have <laughs> no idea what's <laughs> happening now. Okay, my fork is skipping. Uh, bottoming three cards because again they they move to four. Move to four. One, two. To be fair, I, I think I lost count. Yeah, they're moving they mul mul to four. Yeah, yeah. it was four. Okay, moving to four for both players. Wow, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure I have ever seen that. Like, like, like the both players mulligan down to four. Ooh, mutable pass. Oh, this hand has to be awful. Oh my god. So that yeah, was like, that, that's even a bad four. Would Would you mull to three? No, oh, actually, just... actually, no. There is an island. Okay, never mind. Oh, okay. okay, they just started with the muta vault. Okay, then it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, I think breach is much better than mulliganing. Yeah, because it can come back much easier. You know, I mean, oh, I mean, if they play like uh, Ragavan and they have like, oh, that would be good, like double land Ragavan mm. bolt. Mm. Whew. Okay, I can see Emery, I can see EE. E. Okay, so it's EE on one. So we could see turn one EE on one turn to Emery. And Emery, if you know, if any card is going to pull you back, oh, this member, of course. So this is what happens to me every time. So I play Emery and I get it dis dismembered. <laughs> uh, so that's a classic. I mean, I'm, I'm used to it. And this is going to happen to this poor soul. In the bubble? Yeah, there's going to be uh, yeah Emery, which is going to get killed by this, this disgustingly top deck dismember. Trigger. Bolt. Mm. Heat. Fury. Oh my god, that's a that's a ditch. Probably you. Shh. I mute a bolt. Pass. Draw. Draw. This member. This member. Yeah, this member is just so good. 
and there's another silver glider perfectly oh, i mean oh this merfolk deck or merfolk player i mean stacks up the deck <laughs> wow saga let's hope it's not saga pass let's hope it's saga something oh saga pass and the merfolk player draws <laughs> oh come on oh okay 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 i thought i thought that would be basically gg but it's not okay he's still fighting yeah yeah still fighting saga up actually so so we might have a game now if the merfolk player top decks an saga. island we're probably done here because island means yeah. load activate mutavolt. vault uh, okay Okay, make a two to token. <laughs> Possibly he might just make a token but not block anyways. And just find a shadow spear and bash back. That's a that's a that's a that's one way to do it. Yeah. But he have to find the shadow spear because I don't know the cards in his hand in his hands. I yeah, yeah, see. with saga. He would find this with saga. Okay, with saga. But yeah, he yeah, trades. Takes four passes. <coughs> Drop. Oh, there is a. M oh, I think there was a monastery mentor in hand. <laughs> <coughs> Just saying. So what he could do is like uh, make a creature find spring leaf drum maybe, so that he can cast mentor later. Uh, but mentor isn't going to help in the face of the unblockable creatures if they ever become unblockable. Let's see what's happened. I'm li I'm really curious about this game because it's it's very strange for me to see people mulligan to four <laughs> for everybody. I think. Yeah. But... Okay, so we've got a token. Okay, Ether spell. That's that's a very safe play. I like that. And also, it doesn't walk into your own EE because you can always, mm -hmm. um, you know, you use the spell bomb, and then you can E. But yeah, I mean, the Merfolk player is just seeing if they can top deck an island. Huh. Uh, uh. That's a spouse. <laughs> oh, another lord. <laughs> But okay. there is a spring leaf. Uh, the, the, yeah, yeah. Um, spreading seas, killing the saga. That's good. And then, let's see what the top deck is. Tut. Is it an island? No. Nope. Pass, no attacks. Oh, that's huge. No. Nope. Pass, no attacks is super huge. Touching again. Oh, down to six. And the mm -hmm. down to six is actually very important because he can never tap out without any interaction. Because an island of the top means they can play a load, animate Mutavolt, and attack for six with yeah. unblockability, which is exactly lethal, and it wouldn't have without a fetch. So now, the bridge player, I th again, I think they have a mentor in hand. So what could, should happen is like, I don't know, island mentor hold up bubble. Uh, oh, Otaw I think it was Otawara. So it's Otawara mentor hold up spell bomb. Please, yeah, 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 let's go, 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 now, to be fair, casting subtlety on a multi four, that's also ballsy. But, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I can see the <laughs> hands <laughs> breach. Oh my god. I mean, that's literally the best top deck. That's literally the best top deck. Like, if you never know what you should, what you can top deck to get back into a game, that's it. It's yeah, under one breach. So now multiple things can happen. Um, now there could be multiple bubbles to just recoup the mulligan. There could be some kind of emery shenanigans. 
um, there could be like a unholy heat. I think the best thing is unholy heat on the on the creature. Oh yeah, a bolt, bolt on, the, on the, creature, the creature, and then cast multiple bubbles. Uh, and you can still play Emery because you're not dead to a load on the mm -hmm. top. Yep. Of course. Exactly. And Emery also mills you four, which further fuels Underworld Breach. So now you play Emery, trigger, mill four. Okay. And now you can exile. I think you can play one bobble, maybe two. Wait. The first one? Oh, no. Okay. You can play exactly two bobbles. So that's good. So you, you go poop, poop, poop. Yeah, three cards, play a bubble, pop the bubble, and yeah, muta vault on top. That's a very good, uh, very good uh, thing for for the player. Now, one card can be left, and that's a bolt. Play another mushroom bubble. So to summarize, what happened is the breach player paid four mana to kill a creature, get emery, and draw two cards. I would say that's a that's a good deal. That's a good deal yeah. for four mana. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially that different things could have happened. Like, and there was this flexibility. Is passing? Remember some of the top of decks? Go, good, good. Yeah, I think this is being turned around. Mm. Um, well, two mana Yog will. Yogwill wouldn't allow you to loop the same bubble. So let's just say two mana better Yogwill. Uh poop, something on top. Oh, I don't remember. Okay, I think it's tight shaper. Mm. Okay, draw two. Of bubble and of the draw step. Yep. And now the hand is is Thassa's Oracle is saga, saga removal. Yeah. I, w I wouldn't... Well, multiple things could happen um, this turn. And I guess I will leave it to, to our bridge player to figure it out. <sighs> so many options here. Yeah, also because we have to be careful because, as you said before, six six uh, life points is yeah. pretty low. And now he has four mana, at least just one island, but he can start to do something. Yeah, th th another problem is that uh, the, the ether vial will be ticked up to two. Mm -mm. So there is a lord coming and double mutavolt activation. Mm. <laughs> I think the merfolk player might just be losing his sanity <laughs> um, because he can't <laughs> possibly draw an island. Well, that is possible. Yeah, even with the hand gestures before when he dropped the land, it was like, yeah. oh no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that was clearly visible. It's like, oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> right, considering the options. So he could like animate double muta vault and flash in the load and bash in. But the problem is that the bridge player can just bounce the load with ether vial, um, mm. ether spell bomb. Hence, making the creatures lose unblockability, block with the, with the token, uh, with the construct, and just making a whole mess. Combat yeah, he could. He could tight shaper his beautiful. That is not wrong. Okay, allowing blocks, that's weird. Okay. Well, allowing blocks, I'm not sure I, I, I <laughs> like... Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you didn't see nothing. No, no, no. Okay. Because the reason that allowing blocks is weird is that if he flashes in a load, um, Ether's Spellbomb doesn't have to be cracked uh, and they lose a Muta Vault. Mm. So that's why I'm kind of skeptical. While still opening the option for the bounce. The bounce, bounce. <laughs> yes. Oh. Um. Oof, oof, oof. And Sorry, bounce the other one. Oh la la. Bounce the other one. And you lose a cre you lose the creature. That is a good trade. Oh my gosh. A uh, bubble could be popped? No? No? Oh no. Not really? Okay. Mm. Keeping the creature big. 
sag ab, du. Tschö, tschö. So now, it's not magic, it's literally chess now. Oh, mm. popping, yeah, okay, you're right, absolutely, yeah, I forgot, yeah, mark damage, yeah, mark damage, good, good catch, Chad, good catch. Okay, Emery the spell bomb, and now uh, to be, like, multi-protected, okay, Construct comes in, okay, starting to turn the corner, there isn't much time on the clock. Yeah. Okay, draw off the top. Draw off the top. Yep. It's GG. GG. Wow, that was... That was good. That was really good, I mean. Really good. I mean, okay, chats, what do you think of this of this game? I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm not very happy because I was parting with, for the Merfolk guys, but uh, it, it was a really good game to, to oh, watch I this mean, one. Oh, I mean, this this whole match was excellent. I mean, it took the whole round. Yeah. It was excellent. It was... The comeback for the game two, the, all the game three with all the mulligans and all the stuff yeah. that is happening, really, really interesting. I mean, this, yeah. That was great. That was great. Um, I I'm really happy we could we could witness all of that. Yeah. And of uh, that's that's it. That's it. That's it for round and, five. Um, let's wait a little bit for the next round, and we see you later.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to round six of Modern Action live here in Italy. My name is Will. This is Canister. We're going to take you through more Modern Action, what decks and which players we're going to see in this round, Mr. Canister. First round. Well, the main feature match, rather. The main feature match, our main of one. This round is going to be Nouveau Thibault piloting Izzet Merktite facing off against uh, Moretti Andrea on uh, one of my favorite decks of all time. Amulet Titan. I and mean, it's a lot of math involved in that. You know, every time I play it, I feel like I've done something wrong. I feel like, especially if I play it on stream. Chat definitely tell me I've done something wrong. Oh, you, you missed Lethal, we've done this. Very complicated lines, but it rewards players for playing their decks well. Talking about players playing their decks well, here are players to watch. So at the top, we've got, you know, big names that everyone would have heard of. We've got Andrea Mangucci's 4 and 1. Simon Nielsen's 4 and 1. Oscar. Managed to take it going well with Yagmoth. I'm quite happy to see that 4 and 1. Obviously, our winner in Amsterdam. We've got uh, Pygon. He's dropped down to 3 2. Obviously, that was our Warsaw winner. Um, unfortunately, uh, Francesco's dropped. Who else we got on here? Yendrix, 2 and 3. I was speaking to him between rounds. He's, um, he's having a rough time out there playing combo, well, but you know. It does happen. It happens. You can't win them all. If you win them all, you'd be Reduke. That's the saying I've said for about 7 million years now. And uh, Amete, again, 4-1. So a lot, a lot of our players are following. They're doing quite well. A couple have dropped, but we'll keep following these throughout. We'll head down to the feature match now, where it looks like our players are both drawing that opening seven. I say, Titan versus Merktide. Who's your money on? Common knowledge dictates that it is not a favorable matchup for Titan, although it can go both ways. There is a variety of very different and weird uh, cyber plans and strategies and approaches that the Titan players turn to in the postborn games, which can which can turn the tide of the game. And uh, is that things like we'll Cavern of Souls being like having a big part in this? Cavern like, of Souls. How many? Like, I personally have gone to great lengths <coughs> to try to enable hydroid crosses at a certain uh, point in the past. Uh, there is there's some stuff you can do. Uh, so Blood like, Moon's quite big in this, right? But then that's nothing new to it, Amulet players. They yeah. they think no Blood Moon exists. They've played through it many times yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Blood Moon has been the bane of this deck's existence for for years, and it's actually gone better since the printing of Osedra. Like it's actually mm -hmm. something you can answer nowadays. And it used to be just lights out unless you sideboard specifically for it, and even then it was sketchy at best. Well, let's, let's get chat involved. Chat, if you would like to, uh, if you think, is it Merc side, if you're on their side, let's see some ones in chat. But if you want to go over across on the uh, Amulet time, let's see some twos in chat. Who do you think is going to take this match down? As the players look like they're rolling, see who goes first. Uh, what is it? Is it Tempo, Merc type, Breach, or something? Tempo, um, that's, I guess you're talking about the one that was last, when we last uh, streamed both of us. It was like a mix between the. Uh, Breach deck and a Merc Tide deck, but with no Merc Tides and no Breach combo. It also, important to note that uh, Nouveau Thibault is actually playing as a Merc Tide. So we're so watching an actual Merc Tide deck yeah. with Merc Tide in it. Uh, <clears throat> on, during one of the earlier rounds, one of the players showed up with a off the beaten path uh, mm. build of, let's say, blue red uh, mid range strategy. Where they used uh, Urza Saga, for example, instead of Merkleg region, and they used Mana League instead of Counter Spell, which also enabled Giganta. That was listed as uh, is a tempo on the MTG Melee website. That reminds me, I have to, I have to write down Mana League, then I have to make sure I take, tell Mike Seagrass that Mana League is and has been cast in 2023 you won't believe me you have to go back and watch the vod which for anybody watching if you you know if you're not following the stream make sure you hit that that follow button we do put all these are now slowly going up on youtube so if you've missed any of our past events or you want to watch us back make sure you jump on youtube go give them a follow there and lastly if you want to take part in one of these events go hit watch uh give them a follow on the twitters and you can stay up to date on all the latest places we're going to be going and what's happening and who's going special guests artists etc as we're going to see the uh, Jaguarnik channel come down. Not the first or last time this weekend we're going to see that bad boy come down. And that is a, that's a cavern. Yeah, in some ways, channel that on turn one actually matches up better against some amulet openings if they involve Arboreal Grazer, which we see right here. Yeah. Compared to Ragavan. Ragavan, if like there's very few weaknesses of Ragavan, but Arboreal Grazer is amongst them, I think. While Channeler, when enabled with Delirium, yeah. can fly right past through it. I'm just going to see the Ledger Shredder come down here, and here comes the triggers. It's a very strong opening that Mishra's Bubble making all the difference here, letting you put, what, three extra cards into the graveyard, getting you almost there with Delirium, 
instead of still being very far, far, far away. I'm just going to bubble, look at the top card. No idea what that was. I'm guessing it's a land. It was an Amulet of Vigor. <coughs> I was wrong. Very Ding. useful, very useful cards, you know, to speed up your Amulet deck a little bit. So I'm actually a really big fan of this, the of Amulet decks, right? I think that they are s genuinely, I think they're one of the best decks in modern. I just don't think the uh, it's got enough good pilots. Does that make sense? Not to knock anyone that plays it, but the difference between someone that's, this is their pet deck and someone that picks it up, it's like night or day when I see people play it. Some people, it's easy to get the wins when you go Titan, shoot you for a lot, but it's the really small little details and trying to work their way out of different scenarios where being an expert in a certain deck, and this goes for all modern really, but Titan, I, I always see, think this deck is just so powerful when I play against it. It's, it's certainly a deck with a relatively high barrier to entry, I guess. Uh, yeah. With, with like your level of understanding of it, you have to just kind of get the... The basics, which are a bit different than in most common decks, they're like lands that come into play and tap themselves, bounce your other lands. That just kind of works a little bit differently than what you're used to if you're just playing decks with fetch lands for your entire uh, Magic the Gathering uh, lifespan, let's say. But uh, also, there's also plenty of stuff that matches up kind of decently against uh, Amulet and Primal Titan. Printed in especially Modern Horizons 2, mm. maybe. At the same time, the deck keeps getting new tools, so I guess I partially would agree with you. Yeah. I I I just always I, I'm actually always been on the side, and I get a lot of stick for this on Twitter. Uh, you know when people talk about ban cards that need to be banned, I always think Summoner's Pack needs a ban. I think it enables way too many degenerate broken things when it's in a combo deck, but when it's in Titan, it's still like it's the fifth to eighth titan it's the whatever green creature that they need but there's always more broken cards printed than that card so it always goes underneath the radar come at me chat i know you're going to come at me for that one well that just depends also on what your goals are when you're trying to curate a, a ban list and if you uh, would uh, want to produce a fun environment to play in then obviously you would not ban sounders packs mm -hmm. and if you would go by some metrics that uh, are more of some some other more or less vague metrics and maybe you could arrive at the conclusion that that would be a wise thing to do but so anyway I'm not really sympathizing <laughs> with that point of view we, we should go back to uh you know the game not much has really changed we've seen that the, you know we've managed to turn through and burn through our deck a little bit sculpt our hand over on the amulet side we've got the amulet bigger that's the big one that's the scary card here realistically it means we're just a bounce sound away from being able to get that six mana that we need so over on the other side is it more side? There is a cavern there, so you know, are we holding up counter magic? Are we not holding up counter magic? Are we just going face, hoping we don't lose this big combo? Maybe we're just trying to hold up a unholy heat, which again, Modern Horizons two card that's been printed, which is very good and almost like an anti uh, Titan card, so to speak. One answering their six mana spell for one red mana, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, probably like the six. <coughs> the they're like number six being printed on unholy heat is no no mistake, right? <laughs> Probably it was made they know what they're doing. Than mine. But yeah, it's definitely Cavern of Souls poses a great challenge for the Mechlet player as to how exactly to approach the the game. Holding up counter spell can be really punishing if your opponent plays a Cavern of Souls into just a Titan from their hand and that just resolves. You cannot do anything about that with your counter spell. You have effectively wasted lots of mana. At the same time, you can still counter spell summoner's packs which also comes with another set of risks sometimes you sa you can raise summoner's pack just for your opponent to to smile as they see you tap down well they still haven't spent any of their mana and they're free to act in any way they will choose for the rest of the turn maybe they have another titan maybe they have another pack maybe they just you know wanted to trick you or something it looks like they've managed to put them they're back against the wall here obviously they've got uh, the amulet on the back foot they've got all the mana in play whatever is in their hand but on the battlefield there's a lot of lethal threats you need yeah. to get rid of two of these flies and also hope there's no lightning bolts on the other side because we are down at six doing a very good job at uh, pressuring here so here comes the bounce land generate two mana so that's going to be probably six mana and uh primal titan but what is that gonna get us have we got a combo kill here we don't have a combo kill here do we Pretty far away from killing. Just so a single amulet is rarely enough to to kill a player. The best you could do is deal eight damage. Hard to double strike from this point. 
on even if uh, so what we're gonna be find here even if uh, Andrea would be playing the double strike package but as I am investigating his deck list we see that the uh, haste land of choice is Hanover Battlement so yep that's the one that comes into play there <coughs> the Valakut a possible line that could happen would be to haste a titan attack with it grab let's say a Valakut and a bounce land bounce another tapped land to your hand and perhaps play a trial of the listen grove where does that get us though does that I say we're out of land drop so almost that point then we get one shoots something down one of the creatures in the air and that's us um yeah well shooting just one creature is not enough so you need to then cast an explore or an arboreal grazer to get to play another land so we see Tolaria West and a Vesuva. So From the placement of Vesuva, I'm assuming that it's targeting the well targeting. It's gonna copy the Valakut. So bounce the back. So we do have for the free mana up. Yeah. We've played our land drop for the turn. Titan's gonna come across for six. So what if we go something like we play Dryad? Bounce land, shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, so we basically have to have Dried Arbor, uh, not Dried Arbor, <laughs> hello. Um, dried Alyssum Grove plus one more way to add yeah. an extra land drop to the turn. Not it undoable. Does, it does some, seem like that to <coughs> me. Dryad comes down. So basically, six damage came across. Oh, another Valakut. Yeah, that also works. That also works. So that's why. Uh, Moretti search for a Vesuva to copy Valakut. Effectively, now he has three Valakuts, right, in play. So now he gets to shoot three times. So he gets to deal nine damage, six damage to the Merktide Regent, and three damage to the Dragon Raiders Channeler. That leaves only. Um, there was a Shredder. Knife trigger missed there, so that was the second spell for the turn. The uh... Yeah, that might have been a missed trigger. So we got. But basically, he needs a bolt right now. Well, yeah, as I said, we're looking for a lightning bolt. We're definitely at least a way to try and get this, and it's not enough. They managed to come out. That's so scary. They had an amulet and four land on the battlefield, and they lost the game, basically. put too much pressure on from there. Yeah. Love to see it. So, we'll, straight from that, we'll go straight to the sideboard. While we get up, while we get up the deck list, for you all, I'm just going to you know, remind you of what we do this weekend, how we do it at Legacy. We do have two main feature matches. We have a table one and a table two. Kind of generic. Everyone has them. We'll eventually watch. But we also, when they finish, we do go out onto the the, gra uh, the floor and we choose tables that are sideboarding. From the top tables, we move them across. So we do get to give you the maximum amount of paper coverage every round that we possibly can. Okay, off that one. How are we going to sideboard in this one, Mr. Canister? Blood Moon definitely <laughs> coming in. But then we also see Dress Down. Dress Down is a pretty powerful effect against Titan. Just like Cavern of Souls kind of trumps Counter Spell. Dress down does the same thing to to ca to cover like kind of traps it again, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it makes Titan enters with no ability, so they're much less uh, threatening and can be answered with unholy heat easily. On top of that, so it's just kind of hard to sidestep for the for the amulet deck. So it's pretty good in racing situations in general. Yeah. So we're definitely going to see that come in. Uh, How high do you like lean on things like a braid? Like obviously, amulet is kind of the, the, the scary card, right? If they manage to get that on the battlefield, it's quite scary. Do we prioritize it, or do we just go if it happens, it happens? We'll, you know, we'll, I've got other answers like dress down that and bring it in, etc. Or do we actually have to bring answers in like a braid? I think a braid is a is a justifiable card to bring to your deck. Uh, I don't think it's like insane or anything. I think it's uh, acceptable to have, but the rate at which it answers the amulets is pretty. Pretty rough, right? You like pay two mana to answer the one mana card. Mm -hmm. It's not always the greatest. But uh, if you decide that you would want it over some of your other cards, for example, spell pierce can be pretty bad. Counter spell can be ranged from very good to just blank, depending on if your opponent draws uh, a cavern of souls. So you can take different decisions here. Okay, so on the other side of the battlefield, we've got uh, an array of different cards that we can bring in here. Are we hedging against Blood Moon? Is that that in my head? That's what I'm. Mean. I've got right. Okay, I'm against Merc Tide. There's a good chance Blood Moon's coming. In. I need to bring something in like these four figures. We see a full four <coughs> set of uh, Bosages in the deck, so assuredly 
Oh yeah, yeah you will Bosages. acknowledge Blood Moon through using however many Bosages you think is appropriate for the matchup, which is a number that might vary, but uh, like I would not be surprised for uh, Andrea to have three to four Bosages post board. Cultivator Colossus is often not the best against uh, the post board dress downs. Uh, stress down not only negates the effect of Cultivator Colossus, it also just straight up kills the monster. So it's really rough against that. And besides that, it's a question of whether uh, Andrea just wants to focus on being um, a combo Titan deck, like mm -hmm. like the deck normally is, or if he just wants to maybe sidestep the interaction a little bit, or like play through the interaction a little bit with the help of Tile Strikers, uh, Endurances, some Graveyard Hayden, Bojuka Bok, and Relic of Agentus. Maybe even Radiant Fountain is a is a something uh, is a card you would want to look uh, towards. So really, just a matter of what approach uh, Andrea will go with. Uh, I um, personally have not found any of the approaches to be vastly better than others, honestly. Yeah, well, they didn't. I can imagine they didn't come in this weekend not knowing they're not going to play against Merc Tide. So they must have some sort of a pitch or path that they want to go, some sort exactly. of cycle plan. So exactly, but that path might be. To keep it different. the way it is, right? Yeah, the match could be. You got Blood Moon, you got Blood Moon. It's fine. I'll just change out a few of these lands. It might also be play draw dependent. Some cards like Urza's Saga get much less vulnerable to, to Blood Moon when you can play them before your opponent either reaches free mana and yeah. fetch your amulet. <clears throat> and we see that not many decks would start off with a turn one as a saga besides this deck because it, you know, it wants that amulet so valuable it doesn't mind not getting the construct tokens. The idea of it is it's almost a tutor, right? It's a tutor that can make, make a bit of mana to help me cast my spells. Realistically, I want to try and get that amulet. We're going to do a big shuffle here by the looks of it. Are you a fan of the power shuffling? A fun. Hmm. <laughs> do you do it on a regular basis, or are you just like won a game and that's you done? I pile shuffle my deck, after which I shuffle my deck properly. Pile shuffling does not actually randomize your deck properly, so there is not much reason to do that besides uh, maybe some, uh, let's say, ritualistic reasons. Or if you want to count cards or something, but didn't we st didn't we talk about this last time? And Frank Carlson came in and started going off about it. I feel like I feel like that happened. With like yeah. eighty card decks, and then I think that's when we had someone with sixty eight cards in their deck, and we were talking about all the different randomizations that you could have. But like you know, they each their own. You're allowed to do it once a turn. When that people used to do it like multiple times between each each game, it was like okay, come on, we're killing way too much time now. Especially when yeah. you get things like Yog, uh, not Yog, what's been banned, uh, Yorian's been banned now to quote unquote stop the amount of shuffling that happens. Maybe not limit the amount of shuffling, but I guess reduce the severity of it, right? As you shuffle, mm. just a lesser amount of cards on average than than what you did. The Yorian decks were fairly inconvenient, pretty big, pretty like too big for normal people's hands, I think. See, that's why I played it. I got got these big, big bear paws. Worked out well for me. So it's always taking a mulligan over on the Isaac side. What sort of cards do you want to be leading with? We spoke about Ragavan. You know, it kind of gets brick walled against a zero yeah, three. But there like, is there is a chance you might want to sideboard out Ragavan, depending on how many cards you think are exactly good to bring. Oh, yeah, because mm. of the unfortunate matchup against the card uh, Arboreal Grazer, uh, that also ties into how valuable do you find lightning bolt because it mostly goes face and answers grazer so like if you have bolts then your ragavan can go through so you can keep ragavan and bolts and that is kind of cohesive mm -hmm. uh, at the same time if you like cut all of your bolts and you keep your ragavans then your ragavan will literally never get passed through an arboreal grazer so you do, it is magic right? you do need your cards of, yeah. to line up yeah, well against you, you your need opponent. them to line up you need to answer lots of questions to to yourself you need to answer them honestly when sideboarding and uh, we'll see which strat uh, will never go with so it looks like both players are gonna uh mulligan down six gonna draw that opening seven mind if anyone just tuning in welcome where, where have you been we're on round six already we've got uh we're gonna have nine rounds today so you know three more after this round then we'll come back tomorrow with another six we have a cut to top eight and we'll see all those players that are going to be able to get that invite to athens win flights win accommodation all the goodies that come with it there was 400 people turned up this weekend to battle it out to try and win themselves 
invites to Athens. But I want to know if you were coming this weekend or if you come to a future event. We've got Prague in a couple of weeks. That is also modern. What deck are you going to be bringing? I don't think there's a new set out by the time the... the is there a new set out by, by the time there's Prague There's going to be a new set, yeah. It's actually, I would say, a few months rather than a few weeks, I think. Ah, okay, okay. Given that uh, I believe it happens on the weekend of 31st March to 1st uh, April. Yes, it does. So, so, yeah, so I would personally not uh, make any... I would not declare what deck I'm going to bring for yeah. for such an event yet. I would give myself more time. I don't know. What, I'm getting blamed for something in the chat. I don't know what I'm getting blamed for. But I'll take full responsibility, kind of. And we're going to go down to five cards here. How well does Amulet Titan normally like mulligan down? Obviously, it needs some ramp spells. It needs the land to ramp into. Then it needs its big payoffs. It also needs an amulet. Like, does it take? Does it mulligan worse than some other decks? Say, like, like some of the generic decks. It might mulligan slightly worse than average. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, on there is some hands of amulet that can work very well, even from a very small amount of cards. Those typically involve like two copies of amulet of vigor and. Just replaying the same semi growth chamber over and over. Mm -hmm. Then that those those hands they can definitely work on five cards uh, just fine. Some of the other hands that intend to play the lands fairly suffer a lot from all getting to to even six five. That can be really bad because if you plan on casting a six mana card, you just need six cards committed to your mana. The bounce lands help a little bit with that. They can act as doubles, but uh, you still need the uh, sheer amount of uh, mana, so depending how the la how the hand lands up, it actually can can pretty pretty hard to say if Amulet Morgans well or not. I think on average, it maybe probably just Morgans like an average yeah. deck. <laughs> I don't know. I always think like it it needs like a vast variety, like kind of like burn like needs you know it needs more cards than than not. And this is going to answer our question that we're talking about: uh, Do these Ragavans stay in, and does it get brick wall by not free? So I goes. I suppose the next answer is. Are the lightning bolts still in? Can we get yeah. that off the battlefield? Well, let's see. This does. This is three cards of, out of our opening five. So you know, successfully stopped monkey. Stopped the monkey. <laughs> Which one's more powerful? Here's our basics. So you know, we've got kind of got blood beams like kind of covered here. You know, we still. It's not going to be game over. We can cast our spells. Yeah, at least that. Although, you know, the unique feature of the amulet deck is that blood moon even if it does not prevent you from casting your spells to begin with it still prevents you from achieving much that's very impressive passing the turn back after playing dragon age channel no third lands though giving us an open opportunity to be able to play this dryad and then uh there's now only one land for the turn so far an amulet okay how's this so far we, we haven't okay so we haven't got the fifth land right we had the opportunity to make two land drops this turn we only made one a little bit of information around behind uh, away so potentially we maybe have a titan or something in hand this is quite scary delirium's not on so holy heat is turned off currently Looks yeah like yeah well, yeah moretti has only one card in hand <coughs> so needs both a, both a bounce land and a titan or a, another threat and also needs a way to push it through counter magic or if that is in Nevo Nevo's uh, hand, so it's a little bit rough actually for for Moretti. Like for now, the board is stopped, but mm. needs to Moretti needs to find something, right? I think I can smell a blood moon coming. Fetch and double island. Yeah, that's rough too. So people at home, that, like you know, maybe they're new to modern, don't know how the layering system works. We have a dryad on the battlefield and blood moon. Which one would take priority? It is timestamps based. So the freshest, newest object on the battlefield from among those two will override the other, let's say. Still, uh, Moretti controls two, actually even three basic lands. The Vesuva is, I believe, a basic forest. So there's three basic forests which can tap for all the land types, but it just does not uh, do that much. And then we're just going to play the the bounce land, which is going to be a basic mountain. We're kind of dawdling here, like you know, we're, we're, the, yes, blood moon's on the battlefield, but we're you know our planet is also molding it down to five. I don't, this is where the card resources are going to start coming into it. They've 
put it all on the battlefield. They don't really have much else to do right now. Can cast a Titan if they manage to get that sixth land drop. Let's see what we're going to do. We could have something like Force of Vigors maybe came in. Let's just have uh, a Dryad. That's going to eat a counter spell. Like dry that extra dryer there doesn't really do too much. Does this show strength over on or you know on the is it merciful that they've got multiple counter spells that they're willing to fire one off like that? Possibly. Either multiple counter spell or the willingness to <coughs> speed up the clock and start uh, dealing damage with the DRC delirium getting uh, <coughs> achieved and with the dryers being removed so that they cannot block the Ragavan. They still have to do to deal with the um, Arboreal Grazer to attack with your monkey, so I guess that's not happening. Here's another one. Here's yeah. another counter spell. Counter spell goes to the graveyard card, stays on top. We're going to draw that for the turn. And it is a, and another Unholy Heat. We're going to get rid of this uh -huh. just so we can get in there with that Ragavan. Yeah, and we see a fast clock now, five damage per turn. And we start making some of these treasure tokens. <coughs> Oops, sorry, something's going on with the light there. But yeah, that's kind of like what I find so problematic about this matchup from the amulet side. That you sometimes tend to run into the situations where just everything from the from the blue red deck is problematic, right? So it's gonna be a third counter spell? Yeah. The counter spell can be problematic, the blood moon can be problematic, like the clock can be problematic, and you can beat all of those, but individually, and when they do pile up, then this kind of tends to happen. It does what Merktai does. This is kind of Merktai's game plan, right? Get threats yeah, on yeah. the battlefield early, control the battlefield after that with counter magic, dress downs, kill spells, and just get this chip damage in. That's why Ragavan's so good in this deck that, you know, not only that, it also ramps you. There's the card that I feel like should have got banned, but doesn't. Don't at me. Only at seven. We haven't seen any lightning bolts, so maybe they haven't stayed in. Don't quite understand what that is. It might be another blood moon. It's just off the table. We'll see if we can get it moved across for you all, just to make sure. But I'm not. You know, it might that might just be game. To be fair, like, <coughs> oh no, monkey's going to come down. That kid block. Solid. A solid blocker all round. We've seen uh, the Vault actually steal a Summoner's Pact on an earlier turn. And that's that's going to be it. Yeah, which is not a card you normally cast when you when you steal it with a Ragavan. It's very rare that you also have green creatures in your deck when you are playing Ragavan. Although it does remind me of one time I have played against Amulet in a Magic Online challenge while I was playing a Yorion Omnath Folklore deck. And I've been running Ragavans in, in it for that challenge and... Uh, by hitting a Sounders Pact of the Amulet's deck, I was actually able to fetch up an Omnath for my own, which was just pretty funny. And uh, So after that game two, going to the game three, is there anything you think we should uh, sideboard differently here? Like, I'm pretty sure the forces are in any way with the Pesagi, just because, you know, it's not... We all knew there was going to be Blood Moons coming in. Do we had hedge against that, but are we watering our deck too much? Or do you think we just... Shuffle, uh, shuffle it back up and hand it back across. Well, you're going to have Bosages in your deck still, just like you did. I think Force would be kind of an overkill because it's the type of a card that is really bad in every other scenario other than killing a Blood Moon. And it's not even that good at killing a Blood Moon. Okay. Right? So I think you probably want to avoid that, although different players have different opinions. So we are going to, to see... We'll see what is uh, Andrea's approach. Uh, one thing that we might see is Urza Saga being kept into the in the deck on the play, as it's much better on the play. As we have said, uh, being able to dodge Blood Moon and resolve fully, letting you let letting you fetch your amulet and playing the more into the combo angle is certainly an approach that you can take. What about over on the other side? We change anything? No, think like. Pretty side right, Blood Moon, Stress Downs, a Braid. Is there any, do we want, no we don't, I don't think we'd want anything like Brother's End to deal with the fact that they, maybe the Sagas are coming back in, maybe there is Amulets, etc. Maybe we can try and sweep all those Constructs up and the and the Amulet, you don't, 
there's no point bringing that in or out or is there even a debate for it or are we just diluting our game plan yeah, there might be a debate i like i think a bigger like factor as to whether you want the certain card in your deck in a, in this matchup specifically for Merktite is whether you think you want Ragavans in your deck on the draw to begin with because I think I could sympathize with the argument for not playing them on the draw especially and they're gonna be much better on the play much worse on the draw much less likely to get a hit in but then on the on the other side of if we keep Ragavans in there's a chance if we turn one it we've got and it connects we get the the mana which gets us back out of like exactly the it's it's always it's that, so yeah it's like very hit or miss and like, yeah that's magic there's, there's so many different ways you can play it so many different lines you can see some are more optimal than others some pay off a lot better than others sometimes your deck just doesn't incorporate other times it gives you the perfects exactly exactly but like to bring it back to the to the brotherhood's end or mm -hmm. whatnot that was mentioned i think it's uh just kind of a, like I think it's more about choosing about the lesser evil than than a card you actively want very much when you're choosing between like your Ragavan or Brotherhood's End on the draw. I think I would still lean Ragavan. So Amulet will be on the play in this one as we're going to see the Fountain come in. They're going to gain a little bit of life, and here is the Amulet. Looks like they kept a, a seven. Merktide managed to go down to six, and they're going to lead off with the powerful one drop. Yeah, we see Ragavan still here. Radiant Fountain notably brought uh, from the sideboard. Signed? Where are you with signed cards? Do you like your cards to be signed? I know you like your alternate arts online. <laughs> but uh, do you like signed cards in your paper? Or are you just, you know, whatever whatever art I can get? Do you have certain arts you, you like? Or do you like signed? Do you like foiled? I don't, I don't actively pursue signed cards. And uh, I think they're fine if you like them. I... Mostly play with the cards I have, which is a random mishmash of uh, of cards. That is my style in paper. Online, I am more deliberate about uh, choosing the playing the largest possible amount of artworks, given that I like them. So we do see a uh, map was cast last turn, and a ragged then we pass turn back. Ragavan connects and gets a Valakut off the top. Now that how, that's got to be good information. That's one of the, one of the better ones you could hit, so to speak gets one of the combo pieces for that big finish out of the deck yes they've got another one yes they have a way to copy it but where we saw in game one where they were able to do nine damage that's now off the battlefield right they can only do a max of six true true that exact line of play is like off the table for now we also see the map in the deck which might indicate that saga is maybe still in there or that they're still like is back in there because uh, i think most often when you cut <coughs> Urza Saga, you're going to get rid of your expedition map, which is mostly a tutor target for the last chapter of Urza Saga. Although it does help you find a basic forest if a blood moon comes down. True, true. Bosaju to answer it, or Cavern of Souls if you want to get your creature uncounterable. So the cavern does come down here, but I suppose last time we had the option to cast the blood moon, but we choose against it if we had it. So on that one, we, you know, we're still playing this cavern out into it. Two mana. Here's another ledge shredder. And this is why the, the uh, Ragavan is so scary, right? Like, we've literally... Okay. We've uh, got an Endurance Flash down here that's going to block that, that uh, Ragavan. As a Lightning oh. Bolt, it's going to finish it off using these two's triggers as the second spell for the turn. Got knives, yeah. So it was kind of phased out because <coughs> Moretti had to name Elemental with his Cavern of Souls, right? Because uh, so, so, otherwise yeah. he cannot pay for the double green on Endurance. So we kind of knew it was coming, right? We we hedged up it. There's not many other elementals that it could cast on that side of the battlefield. So it is going to block the Ragavan. The Ragavan will yeah. die. And then after the damage from the Ragavan has happened, the Vault will finish it off. And that does not give us Delirium yet. That's only three different types in the graveyard as we're going to pass the turn back. Exactly. Draw for the turn. What have we got? The, I think that is, is that Saga? Not quite. I think there might be another endurance in hand as well. <coughs> Let's have a little see how they want to play this out. Endurance got reach. Doesn't come up too often, but you know, here we go. Well, we're going to start off with a dryad. Pretty relevant in this matchup, right? To yeah. have reach against Dragon Rage's Chandler. So, it's another one. What is that land? Come on, chat. Do you know which land that is? It is Terran Timber. 
Ethereum, I knew you'd know it. Which is the backside of the Term Timber Symbiosis. Don't know the name of it though. Term Timber Serpentine Wood, maybe. Not sure. Is there anything you don't know? What's the flavor text on it? Is the flavor text on it? This is the other question I should probably ask of that. Oh snap. I'm trying to look at the small small image of the card and I actually <laughs> don't know. There, I think there is no flavor text. Maybe there is. Okay. Well we're gonna you know, the iterations resolved. We're now going to fetch or play the land and fetch. Delirium is now on, that's instant creature sorcery land. Making the unholy heat's gonna be turned on here. I can see a dress down is in the deck, so we can confirm that. And the mix matching basics, just to make you happy. Oh, very nice. It is nine rounds today, then another six tomorrow, followed by a cut to top eight. It's basically nine today, nine tomorrow. There's a small chance tomorrow for the uh, quarters, no, semis. We might be able to play the semis back to back, so maybe we'll get 10 rounds tomorrow, depending on uh, what the players need to do, if they need to catch flights, etc. But that's, uh, that's a tomorrow problem. Right now, we've got these legislators growing as a lightning bolt goes into the graveyard. A land goes into the graveyard, it doesn't grow the second one. Two bolts uh, already played this game, so yeah, seems like three bolts opted to keep both Ragavans and bolts and just be able to use the basics uh, of his deck to to fight through grazers and just through life totals and just to function. Consider goes to the graveyard, they're going to keep that card on top and here comes across for four points of damage, dropping him down to 14. And we're holding up counter spell here, right? Like we've got, we've got two mana open. Yeah. There's an amulet on the battlefield. The cavern is, is in there, but still on elemental. Well, one, one bounce land. I suppose it would take us two to... Oh, no, because we've got a drive on the battlefield. So technically, yeah. we could go bounce land, bounce it back, replay it, rename it. That's true. Oh, I'm slowly learning how to play this deck, look. I have tried. I actually uh, went on the Titan podcast, but they'd only let me on if I managed to 4-1 uh, five leagues or four leagues with Titan, but different builds of Titan or something. It was, mm. it was a couple of years ago. It was, it, was, it was a fun little project to stream. I definitely played it wrong. A lot worse than... Uh, we're seeing here as they're going to crack. No, we're not. We are. We're looking what we're going to do here. Could N see. And this is where it goes wrong cracking, for me, right? Yeah. Is, am I cracking the map for yeah. uh, maybe a bounce land to reset the cavern? <clears throat> maybe Valaku to set up for for the dry up damage. So it is bounce land. Yeah, but assuming growth chamber. We could play a titan this turn, but we won't be able to play it with a cavern, right? Yeah. Because we we haven't had any land drops yet, but we get two. But if we use We've only got two men on the battlefield. We play the bounce land, gives us four. Play it again, gives us six. But then maybe if we've got multiple. No, because then the cavern still doesn't go back to our hand. I suppose it can go back on the last trigger. Yeah, you, I mean, it just costs you a land drop to play cavern, which uh, means that you spend a land drop on getting one mana. So you will get to five mana this way if you play cavern this, this turn. Just no way around it. So. I think we have three cards in hand, and we haven't. We've seen one counter spell so far. So it might be a setup turn. Just you know, try to do some stuff and then pass. Just advance up. Well, like we're not in any threat of dying next turn. We're at fourteen life. That's quite reasonable at the minute. I suppose, especially when you're looking against four power on the other side of the battlefield. Here comes the bounce land. See players probably recounting something, counting some something we don't know what. I think that it's counting in their head like how much mana can I make? So here we're gonna bounce the The turn oh. timber symbiosis is alright, so it does seem like Moretti is looking for threats more so than anything else. As bouncing the symbiosis is a way to Assure that you have something big to do on the next turn that does not match up well at all against counter spell. But that, like, this is this is where my experience of this deck comes into play. To me, though, we had the opportunity to ca have two land drops, right? And we chose against it. We don't now. We don't have a bounce land in our hand, which I thought you always keep the bounce land in your hand until, like, you know, maybe if you have multiple of them. Because now we're just stuck with a a seven drop spell, eight so, uh, drop spell in our hand, which we still can't cast. 
where if, if we generated some mana, bounced the cavern back or something along those lines, maybe next turn we could at least resolve a titan. Yeah, I'm this not, is quite, my sure, experience comes not in. quite sure what's left in <coughs> Moretti's hand, but that line of play might indicate another bounce land, yeah. Although, in that case, it is a yep. bit weird to to search for it at sorcery speed mm. with expedition map, so I'm not entirely sure what is the plan here. I think they might be short on land. I think that that's the problem, because we missed the land drop last turn. It does, maybe, it does maybe give you... Maybe threats and land, maybe we're missing? Yeah, maybe. It does give you the option to top deck a bounce land and be in a nice spot, so... What's the general number that they end up playing in these decks? Like, how many bounce lands do they normally play? Is it like six or seven? Eight, nine. Eight, nine? Maybe even okay. ten, yeah. It's pretty large. The bounce lands are pretty good and like pretty crucial towards this deck. Beautiful game so. plan, yeah. So... That seems to be Serpentine uh, Phantom Resumbizers again, and we see Serpentine. six mana to play Titan, but... No cavern on, on Giants, so counter spell. I feel like we could have played around that one. But what do I know? I just think that you... Yeah. We could have bounced the cavern on the previous turn. Maybe. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, but that is enough, and I'm just gonna the turn. game ends with a handshake. So yeah, it's not going to be time. Let's see if we've got a backup feature match for you all. Backup feature match? Looks like we do have a backup feature match, so we go, we'll be heading across to that fuel. Uh, it's finished. Okay, that absolutely ignored what I just said. Are they are they finding another person, another table or not? No. Okay. Well, on that one, we're just gonna have to come back to the booth and we're gonna have to talk for a little bit. So, if you've got any questions for us, chat, make sure you let us know in the chat because otherwise, how else can we answer them? But while we do that, we'll try and get some uh, uh, slides up. So we'll go through. Maybe the players to watch. No, we won't be players to watch. Let's go through what players are playing for this weekend. To see if we can get that slide up. So I'm looking at the team behind it as, as they're rushing across. Trying to sort it all out. So we're just going to move it across for us now. And this is what people are playing for. So they turn up this weekend. Everyone's battling out. for. The, realistically, the first thing you need to do is try and make day two, right? There's 400 players. Day two is roughly an X and two. Maybe some X and threes will get in. But re you want to get try and get in that six top 64 slot. So you come back for day two and you start winning yourself a little bit of money and some prizes. Then you start battling out even more to try and get into, you know, the higher you go, the more money you get. Sometimes you get free entry. So it says free entry there. That's to uh, an LMS to, you know, for the one, the next one. So like Pi Gonti won one. He got a free invite for today. So he used that for today's one for like next seasons. The more you go up that chain there, five and a half grand in US dollars. 2,400 ticks that can get you something nice on the prize wall, maybe a big card, etc. 25 booster boxes. Like, that's a lot of drafts, especially if you know you've got a new set coming up or something like that. 25 booster boxes, a lot of money, or you sell them. A lot make a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know what the uh, expense on my flight home would be if I had to, if I had to get them home, <laughs> but that's that, that's, you know, that's another thing. But the most important bit there is you get the invite to Athens. Okay, that is where the finals is going to be. We've got Naples in a couple of uh, couple of weeks, but then after that, this is qualifying everything for season three. So that will be in Athens. So the, whoever manages to make the top 32 this weekend will get invites to Athens. But the big thing on there, and a little throwback to the old PC days, is if you top eight this event, you will get free flight and free accommodation to Athens. So all you, if you just top eight one of these events, bam, you don't have to worry about it. You just have to turn up to the airport at the right time with the right cards, tested with the right people, turn up to Athens, win that, go to the Pro Tour, get a Worlds invite maybe, because like, you know that's the big thing of them. I still can't get my brain through that, the fact that you can turn up to one of them and get straight to Worlds. Which yeah, is, that's crazy. It's also, so good. Yeah, pretty nice to, to get a weekend of holidays in um, playing Magic, in, you know what I mean? Athens. Pretty good place. Okay. Have you ever been to Athens? I have not. I'm looking Fortunately. forward to going to Athens. I think yeah. it's where the gods are, right? That's where I belong. Where the gods are. Okay, so this is going to be our meta game breakdown. So this is what the 400 players this weekend brought. Obviously, this is from uh, MTG Millie. Some players did bring their paper deck list. So unfortunately, they get, we had to put them down into the others bracket. And a couple of these could realistically get merged together. Like we've got Azorius Hammer, Mono White Hammer. I would creativity. like to make one clarification. Go for it. A colorless goblins category. I have checked personally. The colorless goblins are not, in fact, colorless. They're fully colored, black, <laughs> red goblins. So, why is it even an option for colorless goblins? Is there even a colorless goblin? <laughs> I don't also don't want to say that too many times because the chat's going to get me. 
technically they are, but also when it says um like things like eight rack and ten rack or not this is because that's the first option on m2g mini and unfortunately people selected the wrong one but really at the top of that one is mosin merc time there's a lot of it here today expected a lot of it that a lot of people have turned up with it and then the flip side of that is the counter to it almost which is the hammer time hammer time directly men have a good matchup against merc tide their damage based removal 10 power pummet spells that lines up quite well then we go down to like you know everyone's kind of like you know, goodish meta decks that they're happy with. We've got Scam, Breach, Rhino's Creativity. We just saw Amulet Titan there. Creative, Gen Creativity, they can move up. Rhino's, we can put that in another category. Five three, colors. Three and a half percent of Tron. Mm, yeah. It's, you know, it, the, the, someone has to. If those the people try to play the villain today, that's where they are. But look just below them is Burn. Horrible matchup, I believe, for uh, over on the Tron side for that. Only 3% from Yargmoth. A couple of months ago, Yagmoth was one of the most played decks in modern. When we used to go, when we had uh, maybe like Amsterdam, that's what Oscar won. He was actually playing Yagmoth that weekend. Managed to win. Now it's falling all the way down because it's got such a bad Racto scan matchup. Mm. It hurts. Yeah, it really actually right. hurts. Fury, Fury, Fury Leyline, really Dolphy, Void Walkers, all these cards laying up. But what we have been seeing doing quite well this weekend, especially on these top tables, Merfolk. We were talking about this in between the rounds, that how on the top tables there's two or three Merfolk players that were 4-0, and 5-0 going into this round, doing really well, Pinch, put that tempo on. You know, I know Nikachu will be over the moon with the information when I message him later saying Merfolk's doing really well, but it's got that good like pressure plan. It's just got the new Lord printed that can then uh, sacrifice to counter spells. If it, But then on the other side, we, I think we, last round they saw it on camera, they just drew all the Mutavolts and couldn't get their second blue, so... Kind of a double-edged weapon, you know, it's not free being sure, able to sure. play these uh, creature lands, but here we go. Is it tempo? That could just come under the save of, of like the Merc, Kite, Tides decks, or maybe what we saw before with Urza's Sagas in. That sort of blend would be interesting to see how well they're doing. But on that one, a lot of people are moving in the room, so I think everyone wants us to finish for the round. So on that one, that's going to be it for me. Canister will be back with uh, Lily and Philip at round seven uh, of more One Action. See you all soon.
welcome back everybody we are here from trieste today is the uh, the modern tournament yes. that will qualify for a things yes and stage three stage three stage yeah three, yeah and now we've got round seven and there will also be round eight and there will also be round, round nine, nine. <laughs> ton of ten ton more paper magic coming your way so uh yeah don't tune out still a lot to cover yeah there will be a lot of magic we started tomorrow tomorrow today morning <laughs> in 9 a.m exactly and yeah. we will start again tomorrow morning yeah at 9 a.m Pro yeah probably today we'll finish at like 6 p.m yeah it's like uh, uh, three hours later yeah actually later later than that like um, one hour for round so we have around seven around eight yeah, around, around eight yeah and we've got 400 players today in the main event and uh, they've got plenty to play for because the top eight of this tournament will get free accommodation and yeah. free flight to our theme and it's, a, it, it's something i really like this this thing because you play yeah. not only for the um the invitation but also for a lot of money because oh, yeah <laughs> there's like it's five thousand bucks for the first place yeah i think like two thousand tickets um and you've got some boxes and you've got the the you know the accommodation flight. Yeah. Thank you, Zerk, the official Polish national magic champion. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got players getting ready and um yeah, we yeah. have a four color elementus and the Golgari Yagmoth. Golgari Yagmoth, yeah. The player on the right uh is Oscar. I'm not sure if you if you know Oscar, but he actually won LMS Amsterdam. Oh yes, and I I was I was I remember there. him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were there. We could see him play. We could see him win the finals. He won against Scam, and I remember that the Scam opponent told him that well, Scam has a great great matchup against Yogmoth. And then Oscar actually said, "Yes, I agree. Yogmoth has a terrible matchup with with Scam," and then Oscar took it down anyways. That was uh, very very a great storyline. Then now. He's five and one, so he's back and he wants to win another another LMS event. And I can't remember Amsterdam was qualifying for Sofia. Uh, yes, I think Sofia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, sorry. <laughs> that was that was a bit of time ago, and okay, now I think they're considering their Mulligan decisions. The decklist will be tomorrow. You'll see the decklist tomorrow. Today, everything is closed. Decklists. <coughs> right. Still but we can assume that probably it would be similar to the last one. Not the same decklist for uh, Golgari Yakmoth, but similar, probably. I think it will be very similar, yeah. I mean, those Yakmoth lists in general don't change much. Mm -hmm. He might change uh, like a slot or two in the sideboard, you know, a few, a few cards in the main deck. But generally, I would say like probably 70 out of 75 cards would be the same. Yeah, also because I, I think, but I can be wrong, that you can adjust your sideboard. Um, depends on what you think you will... Uh, uh, find in the tournament. Yeah, exactly. And and the cards that he might expect, the decks I he come he might mm -hmm. expect is Scam, is Merktide, is Hammer, Cascade, those types of decks. And I'm not sure if he's ready for Elementals, um, but he's got such a good linear plan that it might be good. And I think actually the money he won in Amsterdam served him very well because now his deck is like all retro fun. <laughs> he's got like old frame Ignoble, yeah. old frame fetches. I saw him playing old frame Yogmoths, so he did put the money into very good use. Yeah, because in, in Amsterdam it wasn't old framed. No, 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 no. He, he just had a deck, and now he's got a really nice pimped deck. Uh, I mean, much to my personal satisfaction, because I like. Retro yeah, no, I totally agree. Totally. Okay, so four color elementals. The best card in that deck. The best, the best cards in that deck are Furies and Solitudes. Solitude can always kill Exile. Yogmoth, Fury can kill those, those, all those mana dogs. Oh my god, this is just worth. And we yeah. start with Ken. <laughs> I feel bad for Oscar now. I mean, on the draw with your one drop and it gets rend. So if Oscar has got Stranglerod Geist, which can kill Ren immediately because of haste, 
then it's okay. I think then we're in an okay-ish spot. But if Oscar just lets this friend live, mm. it might be a bit tougher. The fetch shock of a grown tomb, of course, the OG of a grown tomb again, showing the, the bling. Okay, there is Stranglord Geist and Stranglord Geist. Yeah, okay, we're we're okay now. <laughs> it's not terrible because it means that the Ren traded for just uh, for the one drop. Uh, uh, unsure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shock this one in. I have some doubt. Um. I don't know. Okay. It's outside of the battlefield. The the cards on the um, the right of the player. Oh, it is is the companion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the companion. Okay. okay. So we got the Risen Reef. Puts the fashion off the top, onto the battlefield. Four lands now. So we could see a kind of Omnath action, maybe Hardcast mm -hmm. Fury action soon enough. <coughs> I really like uh, Omnath as a creature. I used to play that card a lot because it does a, a lot of stuff, a lot of funny stuff. And with the second trigger, you can do more stuff. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's absolutely true. Okay, we've got oh, over evolution. Okay, okay. So now we're getting a Yogmoth immediately. I would assume Yogmoth. <coughs> yep. Yeah, of course. Old frame, Yogmoth. Now you can't convert it that well. Um, I mean, you could you could cash in the Geist for Risen Reef, which could be good enough. No, just mm. passes. Okay, that's fine. Next turn, if there is something like like a Young Wolf or another Geist, we could see a win immediately on turn four. So the big question is whether whether the Elementals player has got something rolled up with a you know a more linear draw or more interactive draw. Interactive draw would be better mm. because like yearly, Yomoth will be ahead once it taps mm. uh, uh, untaps. Okay, some calculations. Fetching. Okay, just the planes. He already at eleven, so probably doesn't want to doesn't want to yeah, shock no, in further. Um, okay, Omnath has to be Omnath, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. That mana. Four color. Of yeah. course, Omnath. And, and pass. Omnath will also trigger Risen Reef. Yeah. With an elemental. Right. And also, actually, the four color elemental player has not made a land drop yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, they might it draw a life. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Stacking, stacking uh, triggers. Draw, use Risen Reef, draw... No, okay, put into play. And this counts as the first land drop, so gain four. And any land from hand will now trigger Omnath the, the second. second time. Yep. And yeah, it it's seems like... It's an open land, so now we have five mana. Yeah. Now, cannot cast Fury, because this is a forest, right? And the mana yeah. floating is blue, white, red, green. Yeah, exactly. So we would need a, a, a mountain. Yeah, I can't say, okay, I think there could be some kind of pitch elemental action going on. Ooh, Ooh. Tefe oh, Teferi is good. Teferi is good. Okay, Teferi is good. We don't know what mana is being floated. One oh. white and one blue for sure, but he could have a red or a second green yeah. still. Exactly. <coughs> so bouncing Yogmoth will be yeah. Oh, of course. That's a, that's a, that's a good play because in this spot now um Oscar will, would have to pay four mana to redeploy it, which is very slow in the face of what's happening right now on the battlefield. Oh, and another two mana and it was a a, month, uh, a red mana, I think that it was he floated open. yeah. Yep. Exactly. And now it's an a ran and six. It will take another land. Oh my god. Okay, that looks very bad for Yogmoth. I'm sorry, but I really love Homnet. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy right now. Yeah. Yeah, and attack. Mm -hmm. attack. With the right away. Yeah, I, I don't see the I don't see a way for Yogmoth to come back realistically, but 
no, Oscar was, was the no. one who, who won who won Amsterdam LMS. So. Yeah, exactly. Let's see what he can master here. I mean, he could play to a situation where he just taps out for Yogmoth, and then uh, the opponent does not have any interaction for Yogmoth, which is possible. Like, Ren doesn't kill it, mm -hmm. the fairy doesn't bounce anymore, you know. Um, and then you ant up and do stuff, right? So you might mm -hmm. just need to tap out for Yogmoth and just literally just ho hope for the best. Let's see if that's going to be. Yeah, the case. it's very difficult for him, but it's not impossible right now, so. Let's see, maybe. It's also difficult because uh, right now, um, for the four color elements, he has a lot of lands, a lot of mana in on the board. So he can start to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Also, from yeah. the hand, not only from the board. <coughs> um, another, another thing that could be done is cycling the horizon land and then rebuying it with Renan 6 and playing it again, which is one way to keep having, oh, another like Reef, reef. Oh, that's good. The double trigger and those Risen Reef might allow you to make additional land drops. They do not, but it means then the hand is gas. But again, who knows? He might be drawing, you know, more Risen Reefs, you know, and... and yeah, we, we already saw two incredibles come back before yeah exactly today. at one life yeah okay fetches and that that fetch land allows them to make four mana so now up to eight and three life points because four for 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 Amnat because no it was on the no he, he'll land drop fetch it right yeah okay so that, that that's net three life that's net three life. Now we've got uh, the Omnath mana beautifully indicated by those bent basic <laughs> islands, basic uh, basic lands. Great way for for us to understand which one is spending every time. Yeah. Okay. Spend okay. Spending everything on the Yagamot. Yeah, and now I think that now this is. Uh, and come back from I think. Mm -mm. Without without that, the, oh the third my god! Reef. Oh my god! This is just trigger, trigger, trigger. And trigger. Woof! And there is a solid, there are double solitude in hand. Another Teferi. I think Wooded Fort Hills was there as well. Um, this again remembers to take up the the Teferi. This spot looks terrible for Oscar, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I really can't imagine how he could come back in this game, at least. Yeah, I mean, now that we know that to Solitudes, there is no way to come back. Yeah, of course. He, but so he doesn't know, so yikes. maybe he, he can think something oh. and hope for the best. Yeah, some attacks, I think, are in place. Of course. Yeah, attack for four. Take the damage, yep. Drop. Right. So from his perspective, he might want to try, you know, another tap out Yogmoth yeah. and hope for the best. But again, <laughs> we know that there is a double solitude just waiting to eat another Yogmoth. He has solution for everything right now. Okay, Wall of Roots, yep. Wall of Roots, lose one life. Three mana, four mana, Young Moth, okay. Yeah. So again, this is this is the best thing that... Uh, and of uh, course, his opponent is... Wait a second. Yeah. Oh, he's thinking about it. Now, to be fair, the Elementals player could just ant up and hardcast Solitude. Uh, but he prefers doing it now. Oh, he's doing it in response to Young Moth getting rid of the Geist, and then he will untap. Oh my god, oh, this was so much happening. Okay. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. This is just devastating. I mean, <laughs> Solitude basically was pitched but draws three cards. And then there will be another Solitude now that gets rid of the Yogmoth himself. Warm trigger for Omnath, so <laughs> yeah, he continues yeah. to gain life. Exactly, also some life on top of that. And now it's his turn. Hmm. Yep. Land. land. Probably fetch. Get four mana again. Get four life. Yes, three, four, seven, eight lands on the board. Nine with this one. Yeah, can easily four mana. pay two for the chocolate. Yeah. And this game will be will be soon. I mean, probably this turn or the latest next turn. Yeah. I'm trying to we'll see if Here Oscar will, will want to continue playing. Yeah. So there are triple, triple um, Risen Reef trigger. Yep. Yeah, they're checking everything is right. And another land. Yeah, they're checking if, you know, the, the order. Like, mm -hmm. do you exile first? Do you trigger Risen Reef exactly. first? And they, they, you know, the body language indicates that they are absolutely discussing this. This sequentialism. Okay. So we've got second trigger. And I think a third Risen yeah, Reef trigger exactly. is coming. They're probably discussing... Uh, technicalities, but I'm really not sure if they even matter. Yeah, no, I don't think. Not right now, at least. <coughs> okay, we are reading Omnath to make sure that everything is right. We are not sure if that Boseju, which entered play, triggered Omnath and dealt for damage. Yeah. He did, because now he's standing was 14. Oath of Lisa. Okay, let's try to find something. Okay, another Solitude. Oh my god. I mean... Attack. With, with everything and yeah. now... He will, of course, block. But still, a lot of damages. Okay. Drop. And uh, to be fair, what, what the Elementals play can do to ensure that we don't have to continue watching this massacre is just take a hero, play a hero, and just actually bash in for damage. Mm -hmm. That could be one way to uh, to make sure that the game ends next turn. Okay, yeah, Geist. <coughs> Land, okay. Pass. Okay, end step. And by the way, right now he's at four mana. Yeah, four mana, sorry, four life points. So if he can uh, put the, f the third land on the battlefield, he could just kill him without not. This is another way. Okay, so they're discussing the triggers again. How many rounds on day one and the cut? So we have nine rounds today. So this round and two more. And the cut is X and two, if I'm not mistaken. For top, for to, uh, for, for day two. Okay. Yeah, the Elementals player is still looking at the mana. Yeah, found. Exile. There could... Could it be an option for the Yagmoth player to continue to to play just for uh, see what his opponent is playing and Potentially, be sure? yes. Potentially, yes. So Could be an option. It's perfectly, pli perfectly fine with the rules. Until you go on, it's not a... Not a big deal. Yeah, and they still have got over half an hour for yeah. two for two games. So that's so it's be... not a problem. Yeah. Mm. 
so we've got the deck that uh, the Elementals player is playing and we can see a ton of Elementals that you would expect so we've got Fury, Solitude, mm. Om uh, Omnath, Risen Reef mm. now there's a, there are three copies of Ending and three copies of Bolt to have the proper interaction a Ladauri is called to find the perfect Elemental that you can immediately play pitched Oath of the Sephosaphim, Filtration and Planeswalkers <laughs> Now the sideboard for Yoggmoth uh, would probably include the Dress Down, Ephemerates, you know, Ephemerating Fury or Solitude is, is cracked in this matchup, potentially Veil of Summer if they expect Thought Seizes, Endurance breaks up the combo, and Fury. Uh, what you wouldn't want, I think Lightning Bolt is kind of lackluster, unless you really want to ensure that you kill the early creatures, mm -hmm. so that could be an option. Um, Prismatic Ending is again okay if you're expecting the the early creatures and you want to get rid of them that way you can also ending yogmoth and one of the most interesting interactions is teferi uptick and then use this plus ability to play um, prismatic ending instant speed and this play actually plays um quadruple boseju in the deck so yeah that's a, that's a huge huge difference between most lists which can play like you know maybe two both issues now we've got oscars yogmoth now let's see what the current iteration is so all four uh, all four evolutions three grists and not four uh we've got artist and not cutthroat and we've got single ooze and single hapatra no endurance is main double and uh both in the main deck in the sideboard though Got triple endurance, one haywire might, um, crime punishment, necromancia, thought seas, force of vigor, and hearses. I really like this sideboard overall. Yeah, Hapatra. Hapatra's making a comeback. Apparently. Now against elemental specifically, I think just thought seas. And hope for the best, I guess. Because all the other tools are kind of trying to mm. attack a very specific specific decks. And this sideboard does does not seem well suited for elemental specifically. So he's going to just hope for a f fast draw or a fast Yogmoth that gets going. Maybe, you know, even if it's removed, he draws like two, three, four cards. I see we're ready for the game too. Do you think that it, w it will change a lot for a Golgari Yagmoth to be on the play on this on this game? Yes, a ton. Because in the previous game, the fact that he was on the draw means that the the mana dog gets killed by Renan 6. Mm -hmm. And on the play, that's not the case. Because on the play, you go mana dog, and even let's say they even react with a removal spell, then you play a 2-drop like, like Geist, and then Renan 6 is not as effective anymore. So being on the play on the draw changes a ton, specifically in the um, in the Ren aspect. Uh, is it possible to watch the stream later? Yes, uh, you will be. You will, you will have access to the VOD uh, archive on Twitch, and it will be re-uploaded on YouTube. And a mulligan again for hmm. you. Probably is searching for. Is Yagmot one of the decks who is uh, uh, looking for a specific hand? Or it could adapt a little bit more than others? Yeah, I, th I think the range of hands is quite quite wide because the deck plays around 12 Yagmoths. <coughs> four okay. Yagmoth, uh, four Evolution, four Court of Calling. And so. You know, and so even if your hand doesn't include one of them, it's quite likely that you'll draw mm -hmm. one of them. Of so your hand could include, you know, you know, like one mana dog, you know, two undying creatures, and a tutor. That's fine. Maybe two tutors, three mana dogs. That's also fine. Yogmoth. You know, there's so many different permutations of hands that are keepable, that shouldn't be a problem. Now in this particular matchup, you wouldn't want to draw like you now young wolf into geist because that doesn't accomplish much you you want to go for a fast kill or a hand that draws cards just pure pressure doesn't doesn't really you know okay 
keep six. And of course. Okay, for young wolf, so no mana dog. Pass. One and pass. Turn one young wolf is great at punishing people who want to hold up interaction for the dog. I can hold heat, lightning bolt. Oh, but we've got turn two pass. It indicates to me that the hand contains now some number of Grace, Diogmoth, and, and tutors. Because, you know, he hasn't played a one drop or a two drop now. Mm. So it has to be three drops plus. <laughs> Sorry for the playmat, but the problem right now is not a playmat, it's the table that it's slightly turned on the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not fully symmetrical. We will fix it. Yeah. Yeah, move your head. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, so let's see what happens now. No, a Ren and Six wouldn't be wouldn't be great here. I to be fair, actually, Ren and Six could be good if you just uptick it, and then it just keeps surviving because Oscar doesn't have proper pressure. We keep stacking with the young wolf. Third mana, and... I assume Grist? Yeah, it is Grist. Of course. Yep, get a token. Okay, now we've got some kind of board state. We can start to do something. And on the hand... Lightning strike. Strike or bolt is this one? Bolt. Bolt, sorry. So I can ex I expect something like a fury coming down next turn, that that you know can you know, deal deal one to grist, one to insect, one to young wolf. Potentially with eph ephemerate, and to be honest, fury with ephemerate is just like just super strong as a, as a three three double striker. Draw. Okay, Cavern, surely names Elementals. Okay, this, okay, Resident Reef. No. And now a Fury would be great. Oh? Let's see what happened. Yep. Fury. <laughs> and trigger from Resident Reef. Fury is just so obnoxious. Yeah, they yeah. did. <laughs> they're gesturing. The stack is yeah. And they even draw a card because of Risen Reef. Um, I'm not sure what he pitched for Fury, though. It must be off camera. Yeah, I I will yeah. I will assume something was pitched. I I couldn't see, I can't see it. it. Must be off camera. Yeah, there is two judges dedicated for the two ti tables, so I I guess it's off camera. We will uh, we will ask. What is what is going on? I, I will I will ask, yeah. Okay, perfect. And I'm not It's going down, trigger in the razor reef. Okay, I can see the whole chat has no idea if <laughs> something was pitched or not. We've just put forward the question and we'll get an answer shortly. Let's see, of course. Uh but I fully doubt that Oscar would would let the opponent not pitch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty difficult. Yeah, it seems now there's another Fury and another pitch. Uh, I mean, this game, I mean, just looks over already.
the first fury. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> it was your response. <laughs> okay. So <coughs> now we've got Risen Reef Kill. But again, I really don't see don't see the uh, the Yogmoth play coming back now. Mm -mm. Because the battlefield is clear, but there is a nominal on the battlefield and still like four cards in the four color hand and five lands in play, so like ahead on all the fronts. Tough seeds and now just two lands. Okay, okay. So maybe we're playing this game still. Okay. One card in Oscar's hand. Let's hope it's a pretty good one. Okay. Oh god. Okay. So I mean, mm. I see. I see. Oh god, because I can see pile tapping. Uh, but other than that, we've got Kahira coming down. How many players go to day two? 64. And the top 32 gets the invitation for Athens. The top eight get the flight and the accommodation. For day. Athens, yeah, as well. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, we'll see. Okay, canopy crack. Yeah, but but uh, unfortunately, Oscar did not play a lot, actually, in this game. In both games, he's been like completely, you know, demolished. I mean, he chose Yogmoth because he won Amsterdam with Yogmoth. So he can play it. <laughs> exactly. Of course. He knows how to beat. You know, the probably the, the very tier confident decks. also with this deck because he know the deck kind of well. Oh, I can see evolution. So my he might evolve Wall of Roots. Yep. Mm, and yeah, Yogmoth has got a very good uh, Hammer matchup. And okay, Murktai matchup. As Murktai, I really don't want to play against Yogmoth. It's pretty annoying. Let's see if we can. Find a solution right now. Yeah, about yeah. So now he's trying, but yeah, of course he's trying. Okay, a land. So the other land that they knew was in the hand probably will follow. Will follow it up with a draw of that canopy land. Let's see, first draw. He's trying to understand if, okay, he wants to attack. Yeah, with Vigilance. Yeah, probably block and, and then sacrifice onto Kahira, yep. Of course. Get a draw. I mean, if he untaps with this Yogmoth, I guess we could continue this game. Because, you no. Know, Okay, okay. I mean, untapping with Yogmoth is ah, uh, that two lands in hand. Oh mm. my gosh! So he needs to draw something like yeah, proliferate. He just proliferates and kills Kahira. Yeah, that's nice. And I think the, one of the best draws would be like like Young Wolf just convert. Yeah. Uh, con oh, oh, oh! It is a Young Wolf. It's a Young Wolf. Okay, okay, called it. Okay. And then the best draw of the top now is another young wolf. And then you can draw into Blood Artist. Actually, even if it's Stangle Root, guys, you can also draw into yeah, uh, Blood Artist. Okay, okay. Now he can sacrifice onto young wolf, reset young wolf, draw a card, and then use young wolf again. So that's two cards coming in. 
Okay, so now... Yeah, yeah, I know he needs to undying, that's what I'm saying. So now if in this particular spot, if he if he plays uh, another wolf. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, we saw uh, the four color elementals player before in the second ah. uh, the second table, table two of the feature match. I was rooting for that uh, Yagmoth player to actually get something done here. It, it looked like a comeback. I mean, it might still be a comeback, actually. Yogmoth cleanly blocks Endurance, so... But yeah, there is still that, that draw in the air. Okay. Okay, there, there are Birds of Paradise. And this Omnath does have two counters. So there is Birds of Paradise. Stop, draw. Okay, so now let's see what. Okay, so we've got one card in in a hand for for, for Oscar. Two mana uh, open. Yeah, potentially could proliferate uh, the the omnath. So what he could do is sacrifice the birds onto endurance, and then proliferate both, which is something I foresee happening. No, no, no. Yes, no, yes. No? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I think now he will like Yogmoth block Somnath, Birds blocks Endurance, uh, and then sacrifice Prolif. Yeah, Oscar. Yeah. Os yeah, so, yeah, so this attack is so weird that it must do. Yeah, I fully agree with chat. Oh, and he just doesn't block. Oh, I like. Oh. Oscar, heads up, heads up, no blocks from Yogmoth. That's nice. Playing around the bolt. Prolif. Tit. Three, two. And just taking one damage in the process. That's a heads up read by Oscar. Five HP. So, actually, what could have been drawn is not only. Uh, is not only bold but also a second omnath. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, nice. Could all could also have been Renin six, right? Mm -hmm. Another omnath, and I think a pass. Yes, okay. Oscar can k still come back from this. Okay, okay. Chat, I need your energy. <laughs> I remember I said that they still have half an hour, and I I'm, I'm really not sure when fifteen minutes have passed. I mean this. Uh, yeah, this particular I, game is awesome. I don't agree. I really hope for the best for the uh, the Omnath. Huh. Because, just because Omnath. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. This is a goodie. Yeah. Oh, baby. Let's go. Okay, so now birds can ki can put a minus count on a creature and then get an insect, uh, uh, a snake. And that snake and our insect and still be sacrificed. The, literally, the only problem is that there isn't that much life total to work with. Right? This is this is the main problem. But he can still pro prolif proliferate. <gasps> Ooh! And oh. now he finds blood artist. Now he finds blood artist. Now he finds blood artist. Yep. This is wild. Oh my god. What a game. What a game, chat. Yep, and now, minus an Omnath, get a snake, yeah, Arta's so... trigger. Yeah, yeah. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> well said, chat. Exactly. Drop, get a snake. Oh, I got a snake. So maybe I will get sacrifice <laughs> a snake. <laughs> yeah, some kind of explanation. Joop, yeah, back and forth. 
No, we are joking about uh, which one we are rooting for. We are just hoping for the best games and the best co the best um, yeah games to watch for us. And uh, and this is you. a great twist. I mean, I really yeah, like, of course. like this is the underdog story. You know, Yogmoth gets pounded, and then says, "Well, maybe I can still play through it," and seems to do. Seems to do exactly that. And Come now back. we can see, hopefully, game three. Okay, okay. Okay, still unsure how to do everything. Now he can easily kill that endurance. Because again, he can pay one life and gets one life back and then gets another snake again. Yep, so now the battlefield is clear. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good position for Yogmoth and... Mm. Did he miss the Blood Artist trigger when Omnith died? Oh, that's a good question. Because there are two things happening. So, so Blood Artist triggers not only on your own creatures, but also on, on the opponent's creatures. So he should also get two life for Endurance and Omnath. I mean, one for each, so two total. So if he remembered to be at 6 life, I think um, that will be corrected, unless that, would, that was missed. Okay, so now... Let's see, let's see. Oath of Nis. Okay, that's a good start, right? Just look at the top three. Scout the draw. Now, I'm not sure really what the draw could be. Hmm. I mean, f I guess Fury. Just Fury 4 to Yogamoth and just dominate the battlefield. I guess that could be fine. Uh, but again, it wouldn't really dominate because in response to Fury's trigger, it would get killed. So any any creature basically will get killed. Let's see what it what he's deciding. <coughs> Solitude. Okay, but again, doesn't doesn't solve the problem long term, because even if it kills Yogmoth, then Oscar will draw you know another five cards. I can see that the chat is really passionate about this feud between <laughs> young wolf and joyers and you know elementals I don't know what well, players. E solitude trigger on Yogmoth. I I assume in response the snake shall be sacrificed targeting solitude. Okay, lose and gain life, put a counter, do it again, yep, draw. Now he could sacrifice the snake targeting nothing, he could target, uh, he could, yeah, so this could be done, but no. He decides not. And now he's got like what? Six cards in hand? Seven? It's full grip. All the options in the world available now. Eight minutes left. That's not much. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, we are we are unsure if the creatures uh, if the creatures dying have been triggering. Okay, we've got one undying, and I assume Stranglerod guys will find Joggy Boy. Joggy 
JJ. Yep. I mean, this is such a good position for Yangmol. I mean, to be fair, I'm really... Okay, GG. GG. Mm -hmm. Another Yangmol. Yeah, so what you do now is sacrifice... I mean, he can just kill in response. Okay, I mean, yeah. he can <laughs> kill in response in multiple ways then. Uh, but the point is that you sacrifice Yangwolf, put a minus count on Geist, hence resetting it. Then Yangwolf comes back with a counter and the Geist without a counter. So you sacrifice that Geist now and reset Yangwolf. So you keep sacrificing one and resetting the other. And you pay one life with each iteration, draw a card. But because there is Blood Artist, it means that you're not actually losing life because you're getting life. Yep. But the opponent is losing life. So you you do that iteration, let's say, 20 times, and elementals die. Whoa! And and this solitude doesn't even change anything, because um, Yogmoth can just do this, the same thing in response. And now wow. we, we have six minutes for the third, third round, so they will for sure go to, to rounds. It is possible. Now, yeah, it is possible. Now, it is also possible that they've got some extra time because it's the feature match no we no the, sure. the, the time that we saw is the the right one okay it's the second table that have five minutes more okay so we will see what happens here yeah but yeah yog is one of the decks that could actually win from this position with that amount of time. So... Yeah. We just saw that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and Elementals is the deck that can force a draw if they want to just kill everything on site. Probably unable to actually win with that much allotted time. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, now both players are 5 and 1, and they do not want a draw. They do not want a draw. Five minutes left. They are yeah, trying yeah. their best. Yeah, exactly five minutes. And five turns. Okay. Let's see. So yeah, let's see let's see how they start off now. Golgari Mulligans. No, there is just one blood artist in the deck. Typically, uh, those decks play one artist, but also one Gerald's Messenger as another way to win. Uh, that is true. Like, this mulligan has taken one full minute, which is literally a fifth of the allotted time. It's 20% uh, if we're going relative. Thinking. Thinking. Th thinking. We'll see what the decision is. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. So, up. Uh, Put one card on the bottom and now play. Yeah, this side, yeah. Okay, three minutes and a half. Land go. <laughs> Birds go. Now let's see if we see Renan 6. Because Renan 6 is the card that could make this whole thing fall apart. And as we all know, Renan 6 players always have Renan 6 turn 2 on the play. Second land. Yeah, 100% Renan 6. Of course, they yeah. always do that. They always have Renan 6. Let's see if we see again the Geist play. Oh. Young Wolf. Uh, Double Young Wolf. Uh, okay. I'll take it. Third land. And 
the fairy? Oh, no, the there is a reef. Okay, resin reef. Hand. Now resin six, probably uptake to three. Oh, trying to find the three, <laughs> yeah. No, if we don't have that much time to try to find the three. You could just say tick up to three pass and just find your three. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty difficult for Almanoth to win two minutes. Attack ran down. Well, and if they draw, down. then they both become one, five, one, and one. Which, again, it's still an excellent position, um, but it's still a draw and not a win, right? Mm -hmm. So it could matter tomorrow when you're playing for top eight. It is one point each, yes. And wh again, one point is not three points. Okay, I assume just slam on Nath, yeah, on Nath trigger. Now let's see if if, uh, if we reveal a land, we don't, okay. Take off the run. Okay. So now we won't see any Yogmoths because it's impossible. Grist? Oh, okay. Grist, um, sacrifice Young Wolf, kill Omnath, and then play Yogmoth. Oh. Oh, something's happening. We're doing things. We're doing things. Yeah, because next turn you could go plus Grist, get an insect, slam Yogmoth. <laughs> yes, I mean, draw is bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, draw is... I mean, yes. if we're considering day twoing and top eighting, it could kind of be considered as a loss. Now, right now, right now, <coughs> they both really want to win this game. Don't draw. And we are in turn. I mean, yeah, it, we could also see just Fury Ephemerate and then all those dreams would, you know, go horribly awry. Bo Seiju doesn't help much. In this spot, it will probably just act as a land. Okay, I can see that Chad now has turned Italian suddenly. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now we're basically waiting to see if Oscar can. Oh my God! Oh, I saw this. Chat, chat. Don't, don't look. Don't look. <laughs> don't just don't look. Chat. I I know what's in his hand. In addition to fury, chat. Don't look. Yeah, chat, chat, oh no, oh no, Ooh. oh no, oh no, yep, yep, whoop, whoop, <laughs> whoop, yup, yup, I mean, oh my, so, uh, you, 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 here, there, here, there. So, well, very well played Elementals player. Three mana, I know, Teferi. Oh, another reason. Woof. Woof. <laughs> I, I hope now that exiling for Fury will become like a rolling <laughs> meme. Gosh. Um, I will be very happy to open Reddit to, today evening and see that people just yeah. don't hate <laughs> things to Fury. I mean. Yeah, but we had confirmed that in the first the first game, uh, he did exile things. And yeah, ephemerate should be on on exile now, being rebound, rather than in the graveyard. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> I 
Now the attack is for 6, plus 2, so it's 8, so I guess the Elementus player could win, actually. So it's, it could be possible. Yeah, t yeah exactly, Fury has double strike, maybe some, like, uh, take Kahira, play Kahira action. E uh, okay, Omnath. Okay, Omnath, fetch land. And then, Tringers. and Both then, take Kahira, play Kahira. Oh, 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 me, okay, 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 wait. Okay, a bit of mistapping. Now, from, from the Yogmoth's position, um, there is no reason to concede, because he'd rather have a draw than an actual loss. So he'll just make the opponent play through it, and let's see what happens. Yes, judges are allowed to touch player's card for checking. Of course, they usually ask. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're getting the colored mana tokens. So let's see what can happen now. Again, I assume this is going to be take Kahira, play Kahira, bash mm. in, uh, which would be how much? 8 plus 2 plus 2 is 12. Are judges judges? <laughs> That's a good question. F finally, someone has asked it. Okay, another fury. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, I, to be fair, I barely know what's happening this game. Whoa. Things are happening. Yeah, things are happening. <laughs> this is this is exactly what I had in mind. Things are happening. We are in turn three, so we have one and two more for trying to. Close the game. Oh, that is true, actually. Misty Rainforest found Sacred Foundry, which is, uh, let's say, not doable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hey, it's a, it's yeah, this is GG. Um, well, so this is it. That was that was a that was a round. Like yeah. this was <laughs> very much a round. There was so um, many things happening, and yeah, wild. of course. But there was the judge at the table, so he was counting with the dice. So it was pretty uh, on the table. So. What can we say more than that? <laughs> yeah, what we can say is uh, thank you that we can could all yeah. experience <laughs> that match. Uh, you and it was us. pretty funny, though. Yes, beautiful experience. And uh, yeah, now, we're yeah. finishing this round. We're finishing this round. Soon enough, you will have back uh, Callister and Will for the round eight. eight of today. And then the last round, uh, round nine. was the nine. Yeah. Exactly. And so, see ya. See ya.
would hit you on turn one. <clears throat> Looking at that opening hand there, it looks like we've got Stoneforge Mystic, we've got some protection, we've got the hammer, we've got Sentinel, but only one land. Yeah, and I'm taking the Esper Sentinel, I guess, probably indicating a not super land heavy hand from um, Klingsheim Harald. So there we go. That was the choice. Leaving uh, Simon with a hammer, with a way to equip it, with some extra creatures. So a pretty interesting and strong hand on, on Simon's end. Let's see if uh, Harald is going to be able to retaliate with something, some powerful plays. So I feel like th this matchup can go like one or two ways, right? It's very dependent on if we have instant ways to equip our cre uh, things with like Sigala's aid. Because things like Fury getting flickered on the other side of the battlefield that can just wreck our day, right? That can just deal with our whole board if it's not a, if we don't have a 10 10 on the battlefield. Exactly, exactly. Fury into Feign Death can really mess Hammer up sometimes, so you definitely need to be aware of that possibility and you need to be, be playing carefully and try to not give your opponent many opportunities. So we're just gonna, it looks like we're just going to lose two life and draw two here, refill our hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's Simon going to do on the other side? We've got, looks like this means that this, unless we cash in a fury now which i don't think we you know we really want to because one ourselves just for this but now he's got the uh, the protection up if he needs it for any creatures he plays and it looks like the aid did come down that or uh, most remains to be drawn for that turn yeah that's a pretty interesting draw and it gives simon <coughs> a pretty just pretty strong option of just uh trying to go cigar that's right into hammer to hit for 11 damage does not sound like too bad of a plan simon does choose to go with a different plan with core uh, giver of runes untapped, he is uh, going to be able to search either a hammer or caldra complete. Both of the plays seem seem very reasonable. When your stoneforge is protected, you can get caldra, mm -hmm. but also his hand has plenty of reason to just get another hammer. So we'll see what he decides to do. Do we see it, right? No, no, he, he's he's still searching up. Yeah. See what he wants to get here. Caldra complete makes sense. This is round eight for people uh, asking in the chat. There's one more round after that. We have, what, nine rounds of modern today. That will be us complete after round nine. Then tomorrow we'll be back fresh and early, which will be nine in the morning in Italy. So that's GMT plus one, I think, uh, for, you know, being an Englishman. That's the time zone I on. There'll be six rounds tomorrow, and then there'll be a cut to top eight. So you have get three more rounds of magic then, for the quarters, semis, and finals. So lots of magic to be watched. If you haven't hit that follow button, make sure you hit the follow button. You'll get the alert when we go live. We do go live. I'll say the next event we've got after this will be the finals from season two, which will be in Napoli. And then at the end of the month, we're going to have Prague coming up, which will be more modern action for you. And here comes a lightning bolt. And that is going to give the protection here. Yeah, you probably give protection from red in this spot. Although it's impossible for us to determine without mm -hmm. the player zone, but... Uh, there's protection from red, and that means that Simon gets to attack with Stoneforge Mystic and uh, Kaldra complete in his hand. So we could just tap the Stoneforge Mystic, pay two mana to put Kaldra into play, and assuredly that's going to be one of the best lines you could take. I believe that the. There's not many ways to deck, get it off the battlefield, is it? Yeah, the red black deck might just be totally called to Kaldra once it's ready in play. Looking at the deck list, it just. So here comes the Kaldra coming down. Yeah, it's get, nothing. Get the gem token, 5-5. Five five. No Lilianas or anything crazy like that in this deck list, no, is there? No Lilianas. You have to race it. You have to race right. it. And you're going to take 5 damage every turn from it, so it's kind of unavoidable. And then we're going to follow up the Skylar's 8, and we know that there's a hammer in hand from that Fort Seas on turn 1. Exactly. So that's also going to be a problem on Kaldra, so... Probably the fact that it's so hard to answer out of red-black just made Simon go with Kaldra instead of another hammer, even though against other matchups you could very easily imagine choosing to run different, uh, tutor up a different card. This is going to be able to buy him a little bit more time of grief, taking that hammer out of the hand means that we're not just going to try and get one shot next turn. We are going to be able to, you know, maybe live with two turns, potentially. Didn't get a good look at what that was off the top. Core Outfit, are you aware of what that, what that one does? When Off top of your head? Core Outfit that enters the battlefield, I am actually aware, but I did pull up the card on uh, on here to read it, so I guess I defe that defeated the purpose. But it does 
attach an equipment to target creature you control. So it can actually equip itself, which is what we see. Mm -hmm. That speeds up the clock, uh, giving Simon a 7 power Kaldra creature effectively. So puts uh, <coughs> aim at uh, 5 life against 4 life. Yeah, 4 life from 11 uh, against a 7 power Kaldra, Kaldra creature with only 2 toughness. So really, it's a great way to, re to win. Definitely on the chump blocking uh, game here, right? No scam effects for this Fury. Oh, we're just getting a blocker out of the way to, to dash this Ragavan. Fury we dash the Ragavan, hoping to hit something off of my opponent's deck? Because we, you know that there's nothing in your deck that mm -hmm. can actually help you survive against the Kaldra, so you have to hope that the Hammer player brought something. That's not going to do it, not when the canopy lands, and then we're just going to scoop it up, and Nielsen's going to take that game yeah, down. Yeah, we, we are actually kind of finally maybe finally close to a huge blowout, huge reverse blowout, we could say, because we see one copy of Haywire Might in Simon's deck. So what, in the main? It, yes. Oof. That would be actually the out that... Well, what, is it the out? Cause it can't... It's indestructible, isn't it, Koldra? Yes, and the Might Exiles. Oh, it ex Oh, beautiful. We could have seen that. Not to be, though. Managed to dodge that one here. We'll see if we can get the cyborgs up for both of these players. And we have a little talk through what that is. Mind if you just tune in, welcome. Obviously, we've only got uh, this round plus one more left of today, but we will be back tomorrow with another nine rounds potentially of modern action. If you want to watch these back, obviously, there's the, the VODs after the streams. These will go up on YouTube. So if you want to go give Legacy a follow on YouTube, go and do that as well. Same with on Twitch. Give it a follow. Lastly, I suppose, Twitter, if you wanted to keep up to date on what's happening, Look at all the photos from the weekend, see what artists are coming to the, you know, maybe one of the future stops or what special guests are turning up. That's where you'll get all that information. So, you know, go give them a follow on there as well. Thinking one is pretty huge, but like I think it's very much dependent on, you know, these equipment hitting the battlefield. They weren't able to deal with that Stoneforge Mystic, which meant the Koldra was going to survive. They didn't have the double removal spell, which they needed. Maybe that turn that they gave it protection from red, they should have used the fury that they had in hand ditch that to get rid of the uh, giver of runes in response to that targeting the stone forge we use the lightning bolt on that assuming there was enough yeah. red cards in the hand and it was possible then it could have been a play that you might have needed to consider given that uh, caldera is so unanswerable for, for your deck out of the sideboard for uh, uh harold we, we see Hidetsugu consumes all, which is very nice against Hammer. It does yeah. sweep all the constructs, all the Hammers, all the Sagarda's aid, all the small creatures. That's very, very uh, impressive card in the matchup. Engineered Explosives definitely comes in. On well, top of that, we might consider a Turak Dread Cantor, as it is a protection for a white. white creature. Even if it's not always the greatest against Hammer, it still can be useful. Uh, the the kicker is probably not what you are after, but just a protection from white with right. some potential to grow is uh, pretty effective at times. So let's see if, if we can go across to see what we've got in the uh, hammer sideboard. There we go. So see what can I, what can we see here? The most important mm, cards yep. here: three copies of Sanctifier on Vec. protection is, from red and black. Yeah, it's pro someone's deck. Good. Yes. Good. Just making sure. Just wanted to check that bit there. Is uh, anything else there you like? Oh, there is extra copies of Blacksmith Scale, so that could be useful if uh, Simon wants to protect himself more from removal. Although, <clears throat> given that there is actually not that much of removal that uh, targets the effective parts of, uh, you know, of Simon's deck, like not much that kills Kaldra, not. It's not always gonna match up great, so you might not even bring the extra blacksmith skills so is there any um, what, what are we cutting i'm looking at some of these cards i'm like is ginger boots this one of ways do i want the cold job we saw it was great in game one but am i always going to be able to get a keep a stoneforge mystic alive while i'm on the draw to get it on the battlefield do i potentially have to cut that one what sort of cards do you think are quite weak in this matchup that, that we should cut we're probably looking to cut the haywire might as that seems like a pretty narrow effect that does not going it's not going to be very effective in this matchup we might keep it if you think your opponent's going to keep blood moons and you think that's uh, worthwhile but does not seem like that would be the case to me yeah. and uh, you just probably trim a little bit on your ornithopters expecting the games to go a little bit longer and uh, 
make uh, replace them with Sanctifier on Vec, which instead of being an O2 creature that does kind of not too much, is just an unkillable monster. So going into this matchup over on uh, the Rakto side, do I have to be the aggressor here or am I the control deck? Because it's going to be quite hard for me if like Sanctifiers and things with protection start coming down for me to control this battlefield. So maybe I have to go you know, almost turn one scam a fury, maybe just to get a, a you know a big double strike on the battlefield to try and to close this clock down, or am I holding back, waiting, trying to keep their ball at base so they can't do you know that the hammer turns that are famous for you know losing turn two and turn three. Yeah, there's lots of validity in that. Like it is possible that Dragdos needs to kind of try to be somewhere in between being a control deck that also needs to be able to shift gears quickly and uh, get into the role of a, of the aggressor when whenever there's a window and opportunity for that. There's lots of cards that are pretty good at racing and, and Ragdos, so I guess you should probably lean into that aspect. Dolphy Voidwalker cannot be blocked, deals free damage over there and that's kind of like, just lends itself to races, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so maybe, probably... Maybe play draw dependent? Might be, yeah. Or just how, how whatever you draw in your opener. See how your hand plays out. I don't know if those. Yeah, be a I think game it's plan. more on a on a case to case basis. Although I think most importantly, you just need to to plan to always to be able to attack your opponent eventually, given that you have so little removal for the sanctifiers, and you can't let them stick forever because you'll just lose to that. So you just have to you just have to account for being able to deal damage. Looks like the Toric Kane in. That's the one that's going to get pitched here for this grief. And it looks like there's a Piffy Needle on the other side. And that Ginger Brute is still in the deck. What do you like taking here? Assuming you get the combat trick to reanimate mm -hmm. your grief. You could take two Paladins and leave uh, Simon with a Piffing Needle and a Ginger Brute. Those cards alone don't do too much. And it's kind of a low power or duo, right? So you, you're facing off against that with a 4 Free Fury, if that is the case. That sounds pretty good. So the uh, chat's asking there, why would we be bringing Piffy Needle in? What's that? What's the the most named card that you think here that we'd be using it for? It's going to be Engineered Explosives. Very Piffy scary Needle. card. Yeah, very scary. Like the one single answer to to Sanctifiers and Vex, pretty decent answer to Urza Saga. It's pretty common strategy to bring one Piffy Needle in your Urza Saga deck against the Engineered Explosives deck because. Uh, being able to tutor up that needle gives you a decent amount of flexibility, so it's overall pretty pretty worthwhile. We don't doesn't look like we've got a second land in hand. Looks like we've just got a lightning bolt with a terminate left over across on uh, Howard's hand uh, hand as the ginger boot's gonna come in and we're getting in. Beats coming in, let's go. Racing. I do draw for a turn, not quite sure. This looks like coming back in for four points. Does have a menace, very hard to block. And are we just, oh, we're, we're gonna kill the creature now, yeah. Playing around, think, you know, it's just potential uh, protection skill. spells, yeah. It's not like the gingerbread is very worthwhile, but you might just kill it, I guess, and have the option to strand the blacksmith skill and Pippin's coming down. I imagine that's on engineering spaces, and then we got Skylar's aid. Uh, this is a closed decklist tournament, so decklists are not available till after the Swiss has finished. But once we get to the top eight, that's when the decklist will be posted. So if you're interested in them, make sure you go follow Legacy on Twitter. That's going to be the first place you'll be able to see them. Same with on the website. People asking <coughs> for that. Does look like we managed to find that uh, second land. See, these are my basics. I've got a lot of different basics. Depending on what deck and how many I need in them. If I only need one or two of I do use these. These are the uh, Ben Make Stuff Secret Lair mm. art ones. Very like digital, futuristically type. I, I, I do like these. Seems like Simon went for a cheeky Bloodstein Mire. Oh, trying uh, to catch I mean, him off guard? Yeah, but unfortunately, <laughs> Polluted Delta fetches Swarm. This is where we see the sad face alongside that name. So I, knew it's a, I was speaking to him in between rounds. Real nice character. Good person to have in the community. Very, uh, he's actually really funny speaking to him how he goes on about it. We're going to come back in now for another four points of damage. So, this race is definitely going to be favored towards the scam side, I'd imagine. As we're going to draw a card end of turn, so I'm looking for a creature. 
That's another land off the top. He's got to think maybe he's within bolt range now. As a Stoneforge Mystic comes down. And no response to the fetch. Stoneforge Mystic is a pretty solid card here, although we see a Terminate. So, mm. you know, I get rid of that. So we'll see what's he going to get here. Are we getting a hammer? Are we getting... Yeah, it looks like we're just going to get a hammer here. And we're going to kill it in response. Is there any mer merit to killing it before the search? Would that change what uh, <coughs> Farman would go and fetch? Yes, in fact, it could. So it seems like a straight-up worse move to perform. As you'd give up your opponent information that you don't need to give up. <coughs> attack's coming across, dropping Simon down to three. So here's him in bolt range. So I suppose we could probably play around that we don't have bolt in hand. Mm. One mana, crack can't be So it looks like there was a hammer plus a uh, blacksmith in hand that I saw. We're yeah, catching. that does not help against Terminate and would need Simon would need a Shadow Spear to begin with, I guess, to race back against the Grief. So lots of damage taken from the Grief. I think he one. might have drawn a second hammer there, but unfortunately he's cracked his land for turn. Oh, Sanctify is going to come down. This is a good blocker. Yeah, well, but technically a way to survive, but Terminate killing the Stoneforge yep. is going to kill Simon. And we're going to get a game free out of both these players here. Judge just checking the uh, art. There's a lot of alternate arts currently in modern. All these secret layers being printed, it is quite hard to you know keep up to date with it, especially as a caster. You know when you're looking at the the screen and all these small cards and trying to make out what it's for. But that's why we have you chat. You guys will always help us out if we don't know a card or if we get it wrong. You always jump on us for that as well. So we you know appreciate you both ways. Going back to the sideboard for Simon, how is he going to pull this back across? We saw that the uh, sanctifiers definitely came in. We saw some black miss, black uh, smith skills was in the deck. Maybe he ups the count on that. He obviously obviously plays two in the main. Being on the play, does he adapt in any way? Does he want to bring uh, like marches in or something to maybe stop the the so unquote scam effect? Well, hmm, there is an argument for playing path checks so ah. on the play, which you can interfere with the with the scam thing, I guess, if you want to. Mm, I'm not sure how strong that argument is because I think you do set up yourself back a little bit when you do that still. But for the most part, I think Simon will just enjoy being on a play and uh, hopefully he's going to have a strong draw. All right, we'll see if we can go across to the Rakto side then. So we saw that the, the uh, Torax came in. Yeah, didn't we? Obviously, we imagine these come in. We didn't actually get to see them, though. We did. We did get did to we? see it being used as a pitch for grief to to evoke it on turn one. Honestly, oh, no, I'm talking about EE. <laughs> I was like, you can't you can't ditch the EE to to evoke it. Yeah. So it, we we saw the Turks come in. It was, but we didn't see any EEs that game. Like we just imagine they brought in. Like, I think this is the matchup for it, this and Rhinos. So we don't, you know, on the other side, Simon doesn't know that that's in the deck still. He didn't name it with uh, the Piffin either. We tried to, you know, high roll with uh, the, the fetch line there once the, the scam player was kind of missing their land yeah, drops. Well, but the fact that he brought the explosives means that we can assume that he has the knowledge of uh, Ragdos commonly playing engineered explosives. But do you like, hedge just... against that then? And do you, do you take them out? I've boarded them in for game two. Do I take them out for game three? Because... I think they're way too good. No, no. Too good? They're just way too good. Like, it's your only answer to Sanctifier on Vec, and uh, seeing as you likely just dive that card, otherwise you're just... I, mean, I suppose we've got K Command as well in the in the main, so you know we can get rid of a Piffin, even though it's not like... You exactly. Hidetsugu consumes all, can destroy the Piffin Needle. Simon in the tank, does he want to keep this opening seven? Does look a little land light. If it might be as a saga, it might be the only land in his hand. Yeah, so he's going to throw it back, and so is the scam. Ractus scam does mulligan quite a lot, right? It's like it's no good just having half of the scam combo, just having you know the ways to get it back out of the graveyard if creatures dies sat in your hand with no creatures don't really do much. 
Yeah, it's in a kind of a weird middle ground uh, between being s pretending to be a mid-range deck, but the extent to which the Ragdos deck uh, relies on the turn one power plays of, of double grief, double fury, is a little bit unclear to me to this day. Like I'm not sure how great of a game it does play as a just a mid-range deck. So I think you might be paid off by looking for those. Uh, powerful turn ones uh, a little bit more aggressively so that's what we see Harold doing so let's go players shuffling both going to go down to six cards and this is basically like a a hard lock to make it to day two right both players being at six and one if they manage to get themselves to seven and one that's a good hard lock you know you're coming in tomorrow with a good record Give yourself the best chance to try and top eight. Remember, top eight in these tournaments do get you free flights and accommodation to the finals in Athens. You just literally get a free weekend away to play Magic. Like, uh, Very nice. What more could you want? Well, in Magic terms, I suppose. Worlds, Worlds would be a good invite. PT. But that's what Athens is going to be. PT players turning up to that are going to be battling out to see who will get a slot on the Pro Tour. Who will get that Worlds invite? Plus all the money and everything else that comes with it. But that's like, to me personally, that's a close second. I'd much rather have the invites over the money. In a way, some, extra some would invites way. would, in some way, they translate to more, so more tournament money, yeah. winning. So, I suppose, yeah, the pros will now, if you turn up, just to turn up, is it like a thousand US dollars now or something? I don't know. Something got tweeted out recently that I kind of glimpsed over. I, I'm not I qualified think, for it, I but. think. I'm sure there has been an announcement that said that there will be a minimal price and also in part to cover the travel expenses travel of expenses, people yeah. who have to travel you know, the other side of the world to play in the PT as uh, the all the Europeans willing to compete in Philadelphia who got, a, got an invite there need to do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Europeans and of course all other parts of the world that are not the United States. Obviously, Magic Con just got uh, the dates and place announced for Europe. It will be in Barcelona. The last, where ironically, is where we were just before Christmas. And we had all the players battling it out to see who would get a chance to get to Napoli. But the, we're going to have Magic Fest in Europe. And that, um, I imagine there's going to be a PT tied to that. So, you know, a lot of players will be coming yes, across for that. I think it's been announced. So Ooh, here. Oh, as for Sentinel. Yep. Odysseys don't pay for it. Wow. <laughs> So Simon, obviously, on a mulligan there, knows what's going to be taken because it's the only target that you're allowed to take. Yeah. But this is quite a fort ha proof hands, right? Like we've got as a Saga. We've got the Ink Moth there. We're just looking for ways to try and equip. Maybe we just go big and go at a full as a Saga way, but this is kind of weak to like a Fury draw, I suppose. I mean, for sure you go for a Saga here. If like It doesn't seem like there's much use in waiting, waiting on that, but... I'm honestly a little bit surprised by the turn one Fortis play, don't pay for Sentinel. As uh, that's a play that's kind of punishing, <laughs> right? You like cycle your opponent's card effectively instead of discarding it. So that's, we're just taking damage for the sake of it by the looks of it. I think Vlad Total should be 15. Yeah. It seems like, it seems like Klingsheim just kept two swamps, right? And that. Leaves him unable to cast the Ragavan, unable to do anything else. So he did just cast the Fortis for the like quality exchange, I guess. Let Simon draw a random card and take away something that's good. There's some red man off the top as we see a Blood Crypt. Slammed down the battlefield. More damage is going to be taken here. So that's going to drop us down to 12 and we're going to dash this Ragavan in. Do we want to block with a 2-2? Two -two? It's a little bit tricky. The construct is really good. We don't have much else going on, right? Yeah. That's the the problem. But looks like that's where it's going to happen. We're going to construct. And okay, so we're going to use one of the scan effects. So, so Simon once again draws. So I think that he's fine with that exchange. Ragavan comes back as a free two, and there's what two cards left. One's up on his hand while Simon gets to draw. He's got a hammer, I think, and a cigar to aid. So with our opponent tapped out here, have we got enough mana to make? Yeah, so we can go. We go for an ink moth win here. Yeah, that's true. You can what? search up 
spring with RAM, or you don't even have to, but you can search yeah. up spring with RAM. You can search up Redux Progenitus, that also is uh, pretty pretty solid. You can go Sigarda Zaid, land, activating cloth, equip. Win. Yep, so Sigarda Zaid is going to come down, one still floating, activate this. Combat that blocks hammer on there. Not even attacking. And that is <laughs> especially <laughs> and, and we see the weird uh, mismatch when one person extends yeah. the hand to shake and the other uh, tries to fist pump. That was on a mold of six through double forties, and they still managed to get a turn four win. I think that was turn four. I think we're gonna have a backup feature match for you. All, so I'm just gonna look across back at. Yep, looks like we've got a backup feature match. We'll slide across to that one for you. As we go into the middle of it, looks like a Merc Tide Mirror. Well, oh is, it, is, it, is this the Tempo deck that we saw earlier? It is, isn't it? Uh, so well, it's Merc Tide. So it is uh, Navo on a Merc Tide deck, fully, fully Merc Tide, including Merc Tide deck, and uh, <laughs> Mattia Rizzi on a also Merc Tide uh, playing Merc Tide deck. No breach shenanigans, I think, in either of those plays. Let me check exactly. We'll, just, we'll, we'll check the desk list to make sure, make sure that this is correct. But this, uh, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like this is the later the rounds go, the more these sort of matchups we're going to see. Yeah, but we're in game two, and it does not seem to currently be in uh, Mattia Ricci's favor. No. As the Merktide region typically just dominates the board on whoever whoever controls one. Looks like we're missing a lot of land drops. That's the problem. A big hand for the spells, but there is a Merc Tide on the other side. It is a 5 5 as an iteration is going to get cast for the turn here. Yeah, Mati Aritzi with two spell snares, only three considers, but not a single Underworld Breach. Interestingly, only two Merc Tide regions, so cutting down on the namesake card while uh, Thibaut Nouveau is. Uh, so we have observed a match of uh, one of the matches earlier. He's playing three Magtide regions, but also not a single breach, keeping it simple, staying uh, true to the core of the plan. So that's double bubble triggers are going to be on the stack as soon as we pass the turn. Not sure what we're looking at in the graveyard, but. Maybe before these bubble triggers, we're looking to use the Brazen Burrow here to get that off the battlefield. Makes sense. Counter spell check. Looks like it resolves. Now the bubble triggers happen. Ominously, very slowly picking up the the Mercade region. There's still no land drops. Do you want to do anything on the turn? Consider. There was two bubble triggers. So in the opponent's upkeep, the bubble triggers happened. That is when the Brazen Burrow happened. So yeah, correct. They did draw two cards off the two bubble triggers. Makes sense. Fetching a tapped steam vents. This is the end of the turn, right? Well, we just resolved the bubble trigger, so honestly, I am a little bit lost. Well, the bubble trigger was in uh, Ritzy's upkeep. Then end of turn, we cast the consider. All right. And then after consider, we fetch, and now we're untapping into our turn. That makes perfect sense, and, and thank you for uh, catching me up. That's right. That's what I'm here for. As long as it helps you once today, I'm happy. A lot of cards in hand. I think that's five, five or six cards, five cards. I see five. Players making sure that everything is okay, seemingly. Yeah, there was a lot of, as I say, with the bubble trigger, upkeep, pass, bounce, come back, draw cards. There's a, a lot going on. They're all just checking. But there are judges down by the table. So, you know, if players have any dramas or if the judge doesn't manage to catch something, they do watch these games. Not entirely sure what the rest. Well, maybe it's a life total discrepancy because they're pointing at the Ragavan there. All right, it's very easy to miss damage when you attack with Ragavan. Like you exile their card, you create a treasure, you do so much stuff already, and then you also deal damage. I like very easy to miss that when Piper play. They'd be quite happy that this, that the spell snare comes off the top of the deck because already they want land, but I think they're so far behind at this point. 
Now there's going to be two threats on the battlefield. Yeah. Well, the Ragavan will come back around. It's been dashed. Yeah, well, next turn is what I'm saying. Like We not now only have to deal with this Merc side next turn. Also, the dash Ragavan that we know about. Yeah. So, I mean, I do think Matt Ritzi has um, no outs, especially seeing the hand of like, iteration and unholy heat. Still no land. Okay, so it looks like we are going to get a game three here for you watching at home. Yeah. We'll see if we get the cyborgs up. We're there might be some sort of crazy difference between them both in the cyborg or even in the main. I know some places we can have come with uh, cyborg cards in the main thinking that they will be playing these mirrors. So, as we see there, Brazen Borough, quite good in the mirror, being able to bounce the Merc tiles we saw there. It's decent, yeah. Uh, anything else to spell pierce? Spell snares. Two spell snares in the main. Yeah, spell snares is a pretty effective tool in the mirror if your opponent leaves counter spells. Then it just has so many great targets. Let's just show that expression federation, all great cards to counter for one mana. So spell sign is effectively kind of a uh, mirror concession I I would say. It also affects, you know, it also works against most of the other decks in the format, but I think it's shines through against Ren and Six and against the mirror match. Anything in the side that you think coming in? Obviously I'm looking at like mystical dispute, um and license has yeah. Uh, Do you like a braid or fluster storms or anything like that? That's kind of niche, like it only hits one type of thing. Yeah, or... a braid is sometimes interesting if you want to be able to answer your opponent on license hearses, so you kind of get into that, that hearse uh, mini game. Although, if your deck includes only two Merktide regions to begin with, then you're probably not too concerned about that. You're you're just kind of fine playing through through a hearse, so I think you would not want an braid in that matchup. Although I would not be super surprised if uh, Mattia chooses to play it anyways. See if, see if there's any differences in the other sideboard. Uh, it looks like there's a couple. I think I'm playing a few more lightning bolts. Obviously no spell snares here. There's still the one brazen borrower. Only three ledger shredders. It's kind of interesting. But the sideboard again is pretty stock. I suppose there's a couple of extra cards there. I'm looking at the mystical disputes in the Hearst. Maybe the Fury comes in. No, Anything the else? Fury, uh, you could do that. I'm not sure if that's always going to be the greatest. Uh, in general, the differences between the two decks seem pretty pretty minimal. Although we see like some maybe differences in in approaches. Uh, Novo Thibault with three copies of Murtide Region, so kind of leaning more into that card while. Uh, but yeah, using spell snare to try to combat that and maybe have like less power in his deck, but be able to navigate into a better spot more often, right? Think to, That's thanks to the spell snare being cheap. With, with the fury, like I'm thinking, like the game plan for both these decks, right, is l to stick a threat. Yeah. So if I manage to up my threat count a little bit more, maybe there's a ch more chance that one resolves because it's kind of the old style of, uh, I guess, like j how Jund used to play, right? We're both going to go back and forth, killing each other's threats. And whoever managed to get their threats to stick ten times to, to you know run away with the game. This, in my opinion, kind of plays out a little bit like that. Obviously, it's a, I think there's more complicated decisions in this than just creature kill spell, creature kill spell, because you've got a lot of draw spells. Do I want to keep the right answers for the right times? Do I hold a counter magic? Do I want to work for a counter spell war? Do I want to have removal with my burn aspect? Do I want to go through my deck and get a bigger Merc Tide? Does my Merc Tide have to be seven power to play around things like Unholy Heat? There's a lot of different uh, lines in these matchups, and I know people hate watching it, but I think this, when they play out and they really do go quite long and go to these complicated board states and decisions, that if you trace it all the way back, maybe the turn four land drop could have changed it all if we went that way. I, I really love watching these sort of games. Exactly. I'm not even sure if I would agree with the statement that people hate watching those uh, those games. I oh, think Merktide is a very popular deck, and like that game style is just very popular amongst players. It's just... You know, I th it feels to me like what's most of uh, Magic players like about the game of Magic. You know, some creatures, lots of interaction, some some navigating around your opponent's removal, and like being able to take both the aggressive stance but also the controlling stance, so like the flexibility. I think it's a very well well liked deck. Although, of course, uh, mirror matches sometimes can get a little bit uh, samey. Yeah, we do have a, a MTG celebrity in the chat. Welcome, Mr. Nikachu MTG. Obviously, we spoke earlier about all the Murph, all the uh, 
the Merfolk deck's doing really well this weekend. Now he kind of starts playing it. And I actually think one of the Merfolk decks has been moved to our backup feature match. So if this does finish stupidly early, then we'll be able to get across to that one. Make that man very happy. As we see, the unlicensed hearse comes down here. So now we'll be able to control the graveyard on the other side, trying to keep those Merc tides off the battlefield. How big is this turn two? It's pretty big, uh, especially since uh, there's no spells in the <laughs> opponent's deck, so they cannot spell it. <laughs> spell pierce, spell pierce is an option, but spell pierce is not always the most valuable card in the middle match. So definitely a turn two unlicensed house can be the damaging, but then we see an abrade just I'd taking say, care of this. the answer. Yeah, immediately. So not going to be a problem. Now the counter spell is drawn for the turn. Do we have a third land drop, or we're we gonna have to use this iteration to try and find it? Looks like we, it looks like we got three counter spells. Three yeah. counter spells, lightning bolt. Oh no, there was a land in there. I think that's a, a ton pulled to the front. We might still be interested in in firing up the iteration just to find your lands to be sure to make lots of land drops this game, uh, because you want to never miss a land drop. If you have three counter spells in hand, I feel like you just want to progress and gain more and more mana. How punished could we be next turn if we do that? If we do that and uh, just leave up one mana? I think the biggest threat is iteration <laughs> from okay. your opponent too, so I guess that would be a, a scary thing. We did not find a land there, so I think we're only going to get Oh, I think it did. I think there was a spider block canal. Oh, was it? I thought yeah. it was... Okay, well, we'll find out very shortly, I'm sure, because this would be an ideal turn to play it on. So he's deciding where between... No, that's a ledger shredder, okay. Yeah, let's show the light, uh, lightning bolt and consider, I think, is what I see in the hand. Then I was mistaken. Uh, but you might just still... Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do this. The XL to consider. Who's the consider in the graveyard? Mm, are we going to cast it? Assuming as he's going to cast it, or... Okay. He's <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, where's my consider? Season. What Here's happened? The land. <laughs> there was 400 players this weekend. Turning up to all battle it out with nine rounds of one today to try and make it into day two. Tomorrow we'll be back with another six rounds of Swiss and then we'll bring the top eight players all battling out to see who will be able to walk away calling themselves the champion. But more importantly, have all the prize money, have the trophy. That's the big bit, the bragging rights. Be able to do that beautiful tweet saying I was the winner at LMAs. And here we go. Trist <coughs> trusty, trusty, trusty. I can never pronounce it. Trieste. I can never, you know, I'm not strong at pronouncing words. I'm more, you know, shapes and numbers. I'm guessing too, because the translation, <laughs> uh, the pronunciation. I think I've just got uh, roasted by Canister on the stream. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get some Fs in chat for that? Awkward. Okay. As anyway, we're fetching up. We're going to find this basic island here. And we're going to respond with an unlicensed hearst of our own. Mm -hmm. Start getting all these uh, sorceries and instants out of the graveyard. Start trying to turn off the Lyrium, try and make it so potentially future Merc Tides are a little bit smaller. It's actually pretty scary for for Mattia because it matches up weirdly decently against Mattia's hand, which is all counter spells. And a license has just, it does not amass that much value, but it does amass value every turn, right? Mm -hmm. It is kind of like a plane swalker. And it's quite, it's quite, you know, once it's on the battlefield, if we've only got burn removal, Potentially, this could be as big as their graveyard, which is what, two, four, six, seven. So this could be a nine, nine. Yeah. Potentially, by the time we, we, we crew it, and things like Ragavan end up crewing it. Yeah, I mean, it's prob probably more, more cards are going to end up in the graveyard. So oh, yeah. the size is virtually unlimited. What size do we get it before we want to start attacking with it? Like, do we want it so it's like a six, six, or seven, seven? Or we could I think, I think ideally, if you'd like to kill in two hits, that's like the most common time that you activate your hearse but it's very context dependent here comes it is it the hearsts work well in groups looks like ritzel thinks it does so he's gonna yeah throw a not, spell not out fully here. but like if you have so many so many counter spells it's kind of funny when like when he finds out his hands i'm not sure what is the card right after the counter spell but it does feel seems so like he has five counter spells <laughs> No, I think it is actually Double Master's Lightning Bolt, which is also full art, which makes it appear like there was five counter spells. But obviously, 
There's no five feather spells. There's so just two bolts. There's our little counter spell wall. It looks like they're going to get exiled with the Iron Essence first as we pass the turn back. Bauble drawn for the turn. Yeah, so yeah, Rag Van Lightning Bolt counter spell Bauble. Mattia was happy to trade his mana because of the counter spells being just very heavy. So virtually kind of trading for anything was kind of kind of good for him. It feels like in this spot. We might see Ragavan being dashed. We might also see him manipulate the top card of uh, his deck with Mishra's bubble. Does he have a way to change? No, but he wants to know what he's going to draw. And that alters his play this turn potentially. So Ragavan's going to come in. It looks like it's going to try and get Unholy Heated. And we're just going to let that resolve, leaving out this counter. Why, why would we just let that resolve? We have the option to counter it. Are we waiting? What, what sort of bigger threats could they be casting that we want to hold this counter magic up well, for? You might want to hold up counter magic for Mechtide Regents or uh, Ledger Shredders or uh, Expressive Iterations, right? As you know, Ragavan yeah. for a removal spell, that is a trade that you're kind of like sad about maybe a little bit, but it is a one for one trade. And it's not hard to believe that your opponent might have more. Uh, removal in their hand there's lots of removal in those decks right uh, on the other hand it's much harder to have multiple copies of expressive iterations so countering an expressive iteration is both more impactful and also more relevant in the game there's less iterations well clearly the ragavan connected there and took the abrade off the top of the deck which could have dealt with that unlicensed hearse but instead they're just going to draw themselves one of the uh the tap plans so that's not going to do too much here so, uh, do we no, we don't get to dash our own rag ranks we got rid of that last turn so it's double lightning bolt double lightning bolt counter spell is it no double lightning bolt two bolts a land so i can't make out what that fourth one is but i'm sure we'll find out if it's anything quite yeah, relevant the speed with which uh, matia flicks his cards is impeccable and very fast spy block canal two bolts maybe it was a mechtag regent the deck list will go uh, public tomorrow once we get into the top eight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So the first place that they'll get posted will probably be on Twitter. So if you're not following Legacy on Twitter, make sure you give them a follow. Also, stay up to date on everything that's happening. All the casters that are going to be casting future events, all the special guests, all the artists that are going to be turning up. You get all your information for these stops on the Twitter. Seems like it is a Mechtag Regent. Yeah. That's the uh the sketch art right so I read so yeah region two bolts spy bluff canal so probably just thinking uh, about playing some lightning bolts targeting his opponent right now to make the merc type both bigger and like clock faster thanks to the bolts so it might might do that although he decides to First keep the bolts it. I think they're trying to look at delirium here more than uh the lightning bolts if we did double bolt this turn it would make it a six six which still pits it in unholy heat range, right? Exactly. So yeah, just a tiny, tiny little dragon, a 4-4. Four, four. Way smaller than some of the other ones you could see. Smaller than a Shivrin. True. Draw for a turn. What have we got here? We've got two mana up, double bolt. I believe the Hurst is six, so maybe we could deal with the Hurst if it does get activated. We're going to dash the ragavan and bounce this because obviously this costs one less because there's a legendary yeah. creature on the battlefield and now we're going to are we accruing or attacking it seems like we're attacking like the bolt's going to finish that off all right the hairs now grows to eight yep and also the merc tides back in hand with not much in our graveyard five six seven Playing a free free for seven mana is that good? Yeah, you Modern. see, you see, Matia considering folding face like Navo did not, notably did not unholy hit the Magtide region. That seems like a superior play to using Otawara in this spot. So I think you can infer that there is no unholy hit in in uh, his hand in his possession currently. So it does make sense to play the board, play. What? There's an abrade off the a top. Bigger dragon. Yeah, that's a pretty good draw. That and into a Merc side. A 5-5 five five Dragon, yeah. Lined up super well. Rewarded for using the end of turn no. ball to spend the mana effectively on this turn and be able to upgrade into 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 the Dragon. I was going to say strong. that. Like, absolutely rewarded for that Lightning Bolt end of turn. 
Not any uh, everyone would have done that. But they gave themselves, you know, the out of being able to draw a two drop, maybe even the iteration that turns something along those lines. There's a lot of good two dot, uh, drops in their deck, and they got fully rewarded for it. Yeah. As we're passing the turn back. Bubble. Look at your top card. And. I don't know, it looked like a snapcaster to me, but it's definitely not a snapcaster. It does so. say bubble. Oh, is it? So it was, yeah, bubble you. Okay, I see bubble. Okay, bubble. Bubble you. Bubble you. Yeah, okay, I see. Oh, yeah, show me card. Yeah, yeah, it's a bubble. Mine, mine's nice. foil. Mine's all bordered. <laughs> Just going back and forth. Pass the turn. Draw off my bubble. Draw for my turn. That's the spell snare and. Oh, my goodness. Seems like what? a mystical dispute. I think it's the RC. Oh, no, yeah, I think you're right. Promo. Iteration. Well, we're going to find out because that's a good target. Yeah, do you spell some? Do you, do you Count do spell. I guess uh, boom, boom. Players ripping the cards and we just, that's it. Game over. Yeah, very nice. What a good interaction. So nicely, well played. Very nicely navigated by, by Mattia Rizzi here. Uh, seemed to be in a not a great spot against the unlicensed hairs early in the game and the dragon was pretty small, but. But then it all uh, lined up, and he managed to not only not only win the race, I guess. With it, well, I like that. Not very well played. Time. Like you, you know, very well played in that. It does look like we've got a backup feature match for you all, unless it's just finishing. with looking at players. No, it looks like we're we're passing the next cross, so we do have a backup feature match. We'll try and get the uh, the names and the records changed for you all. But for anyone just tuning in, we kind of do things a little bit different here at the Legacy European Tour. We do have our Table 1 and Table 2 feature matches, which you know standard. We see that no matter what sort of coverage you watch. But when they finish, we do go out onto the floor and we find players that are sideboarding and we move them across into the feature match area. So we get to give you the maximum amount of paper coverage. As much as I know you all wanted to hear me and Canister talk all day about what decks we would play, how we'd sideboard, etc. Realistically, you just want to see more paper magic so we bring it as much to you as paper we possibly can i think the record we've ever had was about five different matchups in one game i think that was the pi i think it was pioneer it was pioneer is super quick in paper like people flying through it so we managed to get everyone out here as we're going to start taking mulligans so it looks like we've got five color can't make out if that's zoo or control or rhinos on our screen but we'll find out very shortly it is all getting updated in the background. The, we've got people running around trying to fill these out. But chat, if you were playing this weekend, what deck would you be bringing? Canister would be bringing Breach. I think I'll be on Yargmoth, but what would you be on? How well would that you know line up this weekend? May mind, there's a lot of Merktide. Discuss. Let us know. <laughs> Discuss. That's it. Just chat will start jumping in. Merktide. Merfolk, oh obviously, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even read who picked that. Then, and then I read it. I was like, oh okay, it's okay. green, black food, amulet, hammer, burn, hammer, dredge, yargmoth, value breach. Love to see it, chat. Love to see it. Currently, walk around the top tables. I do see. I think there's a couple of dredge players still. There's a lot of merfolk making its way to the top tables, and then the usual. We've got a lot of merktide, breach, hammer, creativity, all the sort of decks you kind of see quite relevant in a uh, modern currently. Ponza, oh please, please come to one of these. If you come to one of these events on Ponza, I will do whatever I can do to get you in a feature match area. You ain't you ain't gonna get me that easy, chat. Not of the goblins. So we're just going to go back and forth. With these starts, I'll say that these are either Rhinos or Creativity decks. Let's have a look. Good look. That looks like a Creativity deck on the right. Maybe we've got uh, a Creativity the, in the chat, One of the users said that they will be playing a deck archetype named Dragon. Do you know what, what that is? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this isn't my first rodeo. Also, I kind of want to answer it to see if you'd if you'd if you'd follow it up while you're on a, while you're casting. Yeah, you I, I personally just have no idea. So just don't have... give me, don't have any idea. Look, at the chat knows. Come on. Okay, as so we're gonna fetch, we're gonna play our second land for turn. That is a very beautiful uh, sacred foundry. 
yeah, definitely creativity on one side, just trying to work out on the other. Could be rhinos. I did see a fire and ice there, but then you know creativity also does play them. Yeah, fire ice in the hand. It's most more like more likely to be rhinos. Force of negation, that is a rhinos card. <coughs> I think we, we are seeing a rhinos deck, yeah. yeah hand of uh, rhinos. Pierre Marzano. So rhinos versus creativity. You see Rhino's obviously going to the more four colour, five colour builds now to make uh be able to use things like ley lines binding. And this looks like it's gonna be an ice at the end of turn to tap that land down. Mm -hmm. Very standard play from Rhino's decks, right? Turn two, tap your land, turn three, cascade. Exactly. It is to prevent uh, interaction, although spell pierce is still a viable way to interact with Rhino, so you might need to think twice about whether you just want to to fire off a cascade spell now or not. It's pretty good to fire it off on turn three so that your opponent so that you have mana mana available when your opponent can try to go for the uh creativity place. But we'll see. Looks like we are going to uh fetch up the blue source here. If I'm just, if I am understanding cor correctly, the Steam Vents has been fetched in response to the Misty Rain for its activation. Oh, it makes sense though, right? Because if you crack your fetch in response now, they can cascade in into it, but maybe you wait for them to cascade and then you fetch. Yeah, like, I'm not sure what is what is the benefit of fetching proactively, because what if the yep, it was player will not deploy Rhinos, but we'll see. Maybe there is uh, some, some other reasons that I am not currently aware of or I am missing. It was, it was an Arid Nessa. I got it wrong. It wasn't a Sacred Foundry. Got mixed up. I think that's the Zendikar um, expedition. Ah, uh, yes. Let's see what the players are going to do with it. Maybe they're asking a judge question now, or see a violent we... outburst. I must say, I think we just passed the turn back, so we're going to go yeah. violent outburst at instant speed. And in the upkeep, you still cast the Violent Outburst. And it's just going to eat a Spell Pierce. Alright. Targeting, targeting the Rhinos, not the Violent Outburst. And then... Uh, can we see a pass the turn move? Missing a land drop. Pretty powerful. Not what you want to be doing when you ideally want four lands in play, so you can start getting things on like your Dwarven Mine to start creativity and into. Yeah. Fetching an untapped land, losing four life, two or three life, rather. And we see a Shardless Agent. Another Cascade, obviously the two ways that these decks normally use to Cascade. Shardless Agent, Violent Outburst. And there we go. Looks like we're going to get two Pokemon Rhino tokens. I believe that is a Rhyhorn? Yes. Think Rhyhorn, yep. Rhyhorn is the, is the nail of Pokemon. And then. We're going to suspend another Crashing Footfalls. That's the card that's got a bit of glare there at the top uh, with the dice of four on it. Okay, Canister, what is that card? It is uh, Bitter Reunion. It uh, pictures uh, the brothers of Mishra and Urza finally meeting after the years of their war. And as the name suggests, it's bitter and they don't like each other still and they keep on fighting. In game, it is an enchantment that lets uh, Loon lets the creativity player discard a card. Ideally, you discard a Archon of Cruelty, put it into your graveyard, draw two cards, and then you're able to persist it back. Uh, second line on Better Union actually very important. You can sacrifice it for one mana to give every of your every single one of your creatures haste. Which is really good with Archon of Cruelty. Triggering that creature twice is uh, very perfectly game-ending. But we've got to get there first. We've got to survive these beats as the rhinos take the those ride-ons away. So 
So now over on the Rhino side, we just, we've got to protect these, right? Like that That's our game plan now, is protect. We do see, it looks like it's Fire and Ice and Endurance in hand. Endurance, obviously, targeting ourselves 9 out of 10 times. So we can put these Rhinos back into our deck to cascade into them. But in this matchup, as you said, Persist is actually a threat. So we might be able to hold that up for the opportune moment that a Archon is targeted in that graveyard. Yeah, definitely. Did you know that uh, I think Raidon was one of the first uh, Pokemon that were designed by the creators of the original game? I did not know that. I do know quite a lot of Pokemon facts, though, especially about Gen 1 sort of stuff. I believe like that in the first concept, the concept of Pokemon types was not present, so uh, the first few ones that were designed ended up being normal Pokemons with, with the normal typing. And after that, only after thinking a little, a little bit, the concept of having them different types that are weak and strong against each other came up. So, so we're gonna ice in the upkeep of the turn four because obviously this is potentially the turn that a creativity could happen. In response to that, we're gonna float green and we're gonna nature's claim our own enchantment to gain four life, which does drop us up to eleven, and there is only ten power on the battlefield, meaning that you know. Um, Crack and a fetch would end up being lethal if we can't deal with it. We did draw a land for the turn, which means we could have done the creativity this turn. So that's a great play there, being able to ice down. But the one thing I did want to know, and now a little Pokemon story there when we're talking back and forth, was what is your fate? What was your fate Pokemon? Do you have one? Beedrill. Beedrill? As it was just going to pat. Uh, why are we conceding there? Just looking at that hand. Well, oh, we've gone up to the nine life, not because, ten. Because the rhinos are going to be lethal. Yeah, I thought we went up to 11 life, not 10, but here we are. So that looks like that is going to be the end of the round. So we'll go back to the casters. Here we are. This is our beautiful faces. My name is Will. This is Canister for anybody just joining in. Yes, we were talking about Pokemon on a magic stream, but just you know, get around that sort of fact. Kind of do things a little bit differently here. Next up, it's going to be round nine. It's going to be the last round of the uh, today, of day one. We will be back tomorrow for day two, though, which will be maybe another six rounds of Swiss followed to a cut to top eight. So make sure if you're not following, you do hit that follow button. I'm Will, this is Canister. That's us for today. We'll see you all tomorrow with more modern action. See you in the...
Welcome back, everybody. We are here in Trieste for the tournament, the modern tournament of LMS. And now we are on the last round of the day one. So we will see undefeated players of today. Yes, that is true. That is true. We will watch um, undefeated scam player now. Both. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. I certainly know that there is one player who is 8 and 0, and we will watch them play. We'll basically watch table 1 and table 2. Okay. The top that's right now, and we'll see who comes out actually, you know, fully undefeated after today. So uh, I'm really curious to see what's happening. There are a lot of also winning ins happening. Yeah. Uh, I know of two breach players. Of course, I know breach players uh, who are 6 and 2. Um, yeah, and yeah, some people actually uh, play out to get into top eight. Some people yeah. take a draw to ensure that they are in in day two, maybe with worse record, but they are in the in um, in the day two. So we will see now. What is the booster display? Is a box card the card the the, the proper box card? Yeah. So twenty. They will win them. Yeah. Okay. And so players seem to be ready. <coughs> yep. We have. Scum and Rhinos at yeah. 8 and 0 oh, playing for the undefeated slot. I was watching to the sleeves, honestly. <laughs> I'm really curious who comes out on top. You know, to be, I mean, being undefeated day one, like 9 and 0. Oh, yeah, such no, a big it's unbelievable. Wow, I mean. They are very good players. Yeah. And they seem to be very calm. Ornithopter, the first one that I saw in, in today. Oh, the the names must be, uh, must be kind of inverted. Oh, wait. Okay, so I think we got. Maybe this is actually table one. Okay, so maybe the table two actually. is the camp. So there might be actually more than, um, there might be more than just two undefeated players then, because I saw that scam is eight and zero. So it means that there are multiple eight and zero people. But uh, yeah, we need to change the names. Yeah, we will ch we'll change the name soon enough, chat. No worries. Uh, we're clearly watching Rhinos versus Hammer. Who are? Uh, so th there must have been some kind of mix-up. But I I explici explicitly asked for table one and table two. I will find out soon enough which tables have actually been given to us. <coughs> Okay, so we've got so, so coming back to the game. Okay. Spring the leaf. leaf drum. Yeah, drum, not leaf. Sorry. I mean <laughs> spring leaf drum. Uh, yeah, sentinel. <laughs> okay, drop. Tick up the saga. And just a pass. Okay, so holding up um, the activation of Sentinel, uh, the activation of Saga. Who knows? Potentially, there might be a spell piece lurking there, which actually creates a, a little tension because you're not really sure whether you could even make a construct end step because there could be a violent outburst in response. Hey chat. So who who are you rooting for? Who do you think should be nine and one, uh, nine and zero? Oh? Hammer time or rhinos? Do you have a favorite one? Um, I personally don't have a favorite, uh, but matchup wise, I think it could <coughs> be really close because actually, hammer t um, rhinos are very interactive. Mm -hmm. But fury, uh, dead gone, force of negation, petty theft, uh, sometimes bone crusher giant. And actually, the hammer player goes for the construct end step, uh, and there could be a violent outburst now. It and could be a funny see game if there is one. And there isn't. There isn't any. Okay, untap draw. Let's see what the saga finds. Most probably hammer, which will pair up nicely with a future pure steel paladin. You know, the thing is that even the rhinos, if even if the rhinos come down. That shouldn't be a big problem, because those creatures in Hammer can outgrow them. Yeah.
And they can always have just hammer. Yeah, usually <coughs> you just go, go for hammer because it's the highest impact. Yeah. Um, but you could go for like shadow spear potentially. Yeah, of course. Yeah, still thinking about that saga. I, ca I can't see the hand that well. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, f just floating mana, I guess. They could just float mana, find Shadow Sphere, and use that floating mana to equip the construct. Now, what would be devastating is dead gone, but the gone half, which says return to hand, and they could just return the construct to hand. Although, then Esper Sentinel would yield a draw. And of course, the spear is down on the board. Karaka fetch immediately, probably a planes, or potentially dual land if that deck splashes a color, and it does, it splashes blue. Yeah. And it still has mana float, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so we kind of keep. Yeah, it will spend the floating mana. Oh, or not? No. Because now it's three mana, right? The floating yeah. mana and two. And two. Pure Steel Paladin still has the floating okay. mana. Okay. <clears throat> so still gonna keep. Okay, counting. In response, there could be some response action. I can see a Force of Negation in hand. Okay, resolves. Force of Negation okay. cannot be hard cast actually because there is no double blue. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Now there is a lot of things on the board. Okay, so we've got Hammer off of the floated mana into... Oh, oh remember, it's okay. Remember, it's about the Sentinel trigger. Mm -mm. And no, no payage. Counter goes to Exile. And now he can cast the Rhinos without having to pay for Sentinel anymore. Yep. Now uses Pure Steel Paladin's ability to equip for free, and now the creature would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, plus Shadow Spear's buff, which is 5, 5 with lifelink and trample. <laughs> so you could trample no, over it's funny. one rhino. <coughs> oh, he passes. He passes. Interesting. Violent Outburst trigger. Of course. Let's see. Let's see if there is anything interesting in the deck. Yeah, Fire Eyes, Dead Gone, Stomp. I mean, so much interaction. Blood Moon. Oh, I mean. finally. <laughs> uh, so this is basically the reason why you would play Rhinos over, for example, Living End. Mm -hmm. There is just so much interaction that you could play. Uh, and ensure that you don't die. Like More like a mid-range deck, maybe like a combo control, you could say it. You know, play interactive, and then now end step, 8 power. Uh, the token out for the the cast rhino. I think it's just rug rhinos because mm -hmm. they play they play blood moon, so you wouldn't play blood moon in four color probably, and also there is there we haven't seen any ley lines biting. Yeah, thing. correct. Now the downside of playing rhinos is exactly what we are witnessing here. Yeah, which is that you know. Even if this attack gets in and uh, it doesn't get blocked, which it still does, but even if it wasn't, it's not the a hammer deal. player yeah, exactly will just attack back with lifelink and nobody cares. While yeah, living end, exactly. for example, would be way way more uh, linear, vulnerable, but also more board affecting. And now we see become immense. Wow, <laughs> that is an old favorite. <laughs> Yes, become immense. Yes, chat. Oh, spell pierce. Oh, oh, that's nice. Blacksmith hmm. skill, which means that the construct survives, but also you gain more life because of life link, right? So yeah. the creature is a four four, five five with a spear plus two, which is a seven seven with life link now. So yeah. the Rhino will die, but you will gain seven life and keep the construct. That is very good. Yes, that is very good. Oh, oh borrower. Oh, 
someone nice. Oh, and now you trample over because that's how yeah, trample works. You trample over, so you get four plus four plus. Uh, actually, I forgot how much no the gives. Uh, six, seven. The Cummins is really good, but I have not seen that in a while. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> May you wrestle God in heaven. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Another Uta saga came down on the board. Down to a four, down to four life, and no proper, yeah. no proper lifeling attack, and that's a that's a huge issue because, yeah. I mean, I don't think I would ever expect Becamimens to switch the matchup, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, equip, equip, and the, he's attacking. The, yeah, the Rhino player has no cards in hand here. Yeah. Okay. So. There is basically you have to play with what you see on the board and yeah of course attack for three or oh, set a drift oh tell me about it set a drift is awesome and they're keeping the sentinel of course um yeah so th you gain life you're at six now now there is eight power on the field trigger from uh, sentinel you may pay because you've got nothing else to do anyways yeah you can't course. hold a brazen borrower a uh, flash in because you don't have blue blue so you can easily pay, yeah, get two creatures, and now at the attack is for eight, you block for two, so technically you're dead, but there is lifelink. So block with sentinel, and you're, you're, you're at two at the end of that. I mean, I mean this become immense. I mean, literally <laughs> just change the texture change of the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, down to two. Draw. And unfortunately, Saga is at two, not at three, so there is yeah. no hammer yet. Oh, just peeking, peeking. There is Inkmoth Nexus. And he has also to front 16 damages on the next turn. Yeah, that's, that's a ton <laughs> of damage. That's a ton of damage. Now, if there was some, you know, hammer action, we could still be talking about this game, but without hammer, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. Yeah. And that's mainly because rhinos have trample. So you can't just chump them with, you know, chump one with, with paladin, chump one with the token. But maybe he's calculating, like, um, you know, make a construct, give it shadow spear, block. But again, you're at two. Hmm. That's so low. Yeah, Inkmoth Nex is coming in. Uh, there was another Saga in hand and one unknown. Three mana. Okay, one make the construct. Yeah. Okay. They're keeping of course. We would have to do the math, but I'm not sure that's keeping him alive. Cigar does eight. Okay. So okay, actually, let's let's calculate. So it's one, two, three. It's a 3-3, three, three. it's a 4-4 four, four with Spear. There is Springleaf Drum, so you can always um, make Inkmoth alive. So it's a 5-5 five, five with Trample and Lifelink. You block one of the Rhinos, so you don't get the damage from that Rhino. Still you, 12. You gate in 5, so you're at 7. Uh, still it, I don't think there is any maths that... Oh no, you can block 2 damages. Yeah, you, yeah but that still, still doesn't do it. That still doesn't do it. Yeah. Still lethal, if I'm counting correctly. E yep. Yeah. <coughs> Become we... immense, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a what a card that was played, I don't know, four years ago and <sighs> now it's back. Unexpected. <laughs> that was very unexpected. Um and I think that our eight O player is a jokester who named the their hammer deck. Yeah, this one is the, yeah. making it, and th and this okay, this is why Could I be, thought yeah. scam. This is why I said scam is ADNO because I saw the deck name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, uh, somebody just changed the name of the deck to something completely different, and that's that's the reason why we have this problem. Yeah, sometimes this happens. Right, so let's look at the deck now. 
So what could happen in this matchup? We've got Hammer versus Rhinos. Now to be fair, again, I think that uh, Hammer should be good with like you know, with with all the protection with with the, with the with the trample with the lifeling with the spell pieces. But what could come in are Lavinias, which are excellent spell pierce maybe march but i'm not sure you want to to for one yourself mm. to exile rhinos yeah there is a main deck might yep and there are uh those blink moths should be ink moths and that's a good question on whether it's a problem in the graphic or problem in the deck list hmm. uh which well i guess we can check but this could be a an issue. Um, the deck list indeed says Blink Moth Nexus. So, yeah, this could be problematic for the player. Um, give me a second, okay? You okay? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, it was. It's going to ask. <clears throat> for clarifying, so right now we can still watching the the deck list because ha huh, now could be a re really really problem. But meanwhile, the second game will start. Yeah, it could be a, a little issue, not not a very problem. It could be uh, a game loss if if it's uh, something that it's a wrong deck list. If it's a wrong card, I asked the judges before, they have a warning and they have to change if they have, if they can change the card. But <coughs> the judge will decide. So we will have the answer pretty, pretty fast. Well, I don't have the answer, but I've told the judge, the head judge, yeah, and this could actually just, this could actually be a decklist issue. Yeah, exactly. Which you don't really want when you're eight and zero. Oh. No, but uh, I asked before to to other judges that was doing the deck deck check, and they told me that um, if it's an error with the deck list, you have a game loss. Mm -hmm. If it's an error with the card in the deck, you have to exchange your card, and if you can exchange. In, in the moment, it's just a warning and you play with the the new card. Yeah, but the problem is that he doesn't really want to play Blinkmoth Nexus because ah, because, well, because to... if, if the legal change is to change the card that's the card in the deck list, yeah. he would have to play uh, Blinkmoth Nexus. So uh, the judges have been informed and they will investigate if that's true or not because, you know, that's not our job. I just let them know that I, what, I, what I noticed and we'll see what judges do about it. And I think that one of the players now has been taken away from the table just to verify yeah, that course. information. So we will wait a little bit. <laughs> Meanwhile, I don't know if we should um, watch some deck list or some, or the table two. Uh, yeah, if we can switch to table two in the meantime while players sort out the uh, the situation, yeah. So we've got table two, we've got seven, one and oh, seven, one and oh, so no draws for, for either player. And we can clearly see, ah, come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Okay, that's unlucky. That's just unlucky. But it's the start of the next game. Pro pro so it, it was Merktide versus, I think, uh, that was Rhinos as well. But I focus on the, on the deck on the left. No, oh, it's creativity, it's creativity. Uh, oh, they sided out all the Archons now, they sided them in? What's happening? Because they had four Archons in the sideboard. So they either sided them all out or they're siding some in. Yeah, I mean, this is like some kind of five head strategy to side out Archons, you know, expecting maybe graveyard hate. And now they're siding them back in. Or maybe it's like depending on play draw. And Adriano is a very well known player here in Italy. Oh, the, the player very on good the left. player. Yeah, Adriano is very good. And what decks does he usually play? Oh, that I don't know, I have to say. <laughs> but probably someone in the chat can answer us. Yeah, so so in this case, they play Merktide with some Blood Moons. Yeah, he, he's Adriano called the Nano. <laughs> 
that means dwarf because oh. he 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 called himself like that oh is is he short <laughs> no it's because nano it uh in adriano oh okay so it's like a word probably thing Meanwhile, we will have a judge who is uh, telling us what happened with the first. <laughs> we should be impartial. I should not cheer for one or another, but as you know, we will do that <coughs> in a friendly way because it's not a problem. We are waiting for the judge call for the armor player, so we I uh, had switched on the second table for for a few moments. Then after the judge call, we will decide if uh, we will stay on the t second match or we will be back on the first one. Let's see what what is happening right now. Okay, so I know now uh, what, what the situation is. So we will be watching this match because the previous match has actually ended because the player had... It was uh, a deckless problem. Exactly, deckless yeah. issue and uh, got a penalty for it and therefore lost. So Hammer is 8-1 and one and the opponent is 9-0. and oh. Now we're watching this match, but we've got another backup just in case this finishes yeah and fast. the chat was cheering for for adriano <laughs> <laughs> you can still cheer for Ad adriano we will be watching this whole uh this whole game here <laughs> you have my hacks no no <laughs> yeah yeah keep, keep the keep the italian jokes coming i will just look at them and not react i guess but yeah keep keep going no, they're just cheering for, for Adriano, so it's good. Yeah, good. It's kinda okay, good. You, can, you can cheer in Italian, in Japanese, however you want. Yes, yes. So the issue again was that the, the Hammer player, who was 8 and 0, had Blinkmuth in their deck instead of Inkmuth. And it was a deck list issue. Exactly. And they got a game loss, game loss, but they were already down a game. Yeah, so, so it was, it was two game losses. Basically, yeah. So they lost the whole match. Um, okay, so now we've got the match going. Yeah. Uh, Zander's Lounge tapped. Uh, into into Gardens. Okay, here we've got Yeah, we will fix the, the archetypes of the first yeah, one. Yeah, exactly, because the player on the left is on Merktide. Is a Merc Tide? Yeah, the, the okay, player on the left uh, is Merc Tide. Yeah. Consider here, drain card for the turn. So not much happening for now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Kick the table. Yeah, that's not a fine. good idea. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I guess I guess I will have to tell the Blinkmoth story like every three minutes. Yeah. Because somebody <laughs> will ask what happened. What happened? Yeah, it's. it's I will no problem. I will. It's like two sentences, so I will just yeah. say it every, every every few minutes. Uh but I mean, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of interesting aspects of that of that particular story. Where is Andrea Mangucci? The last time I checked, Andrea was four and three. Uh, is this Legacy? No. no, it's modern, but the company, the organizer, is called Legacy. So this is where the, the name comes from, is the name of the company. Yeah, and the penalty, the penalty was a, a game loss. But with the previous game loss, it kind of got upgraded to a match loss. Yeah. Because, again, they had, they Two. had, had lost already. They had lots already. Too many heads. Um, okay, so we've got Fable on the battlefield. Tick up, discard double Sarah emissary. Oh my god. 
Okay. Um, I assume that Merclite is holding up counter spell with that no double blue up. Okay. <coughs> Yep, Dwarven Mine, get a token. Teferi, oh, and it's Teferi Hold of Blasted Storm. That's so good now. That's real good. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Spell piece, and it could be another uh, Flaster Storm, and it could be another spell piece. That could be good. Okay, they, they want to resolve. The trigger? Yeah. Okay, now let's see if there's another spell piece. Or their own Fluster Storm. That could also could do the job. Okay, so there is a question to the judge how I guess yeah. Surveil works with, with Fluster Storm. Plus we'll do everything for sure. Yeah. Because it's unclear, I guess, whether the Fluster Storm was in response to the Surveil or supposedly after Surveil would have resolved. Yeah, you could always ask for the judges for clarifying the situation and be sure about what you are doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now, the the potential issue is that they asked after they did it, not before they did it. Yeah, exactly. Which could be the um, the problematic part. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I can see that they stepped away from the table, so probably asking the judge yeah. about something. Oh, nice graphic. <laughs> so, so yeah, so so let's talk about this this match in general. So, we've yeah. got the channel on the battlefield, you know, a lot of disruption to disrupt yeah, the creativity uh, aspect of the deck. But Teferi is indeed quite annoying there. Um, oh, there is Fluster back. Okay, so what happens is you play Fluster Storm. There is a storm on the stack. You let the storm resolve, and there are like a, like a, a n number of copies. Then you play your own Fluster Storm, and you counter each of their mm -hmm. copies with your copies, which means you win that fight. <laughs> and indeed, you they won that and fight. Bolt. Yeah, because Goblin attacks, gets a treasure, crack yeah. the treasure, use the bolt immediately. And to be fair, I really like the creativity uh, side now. Four lands. Goblin going, Dwarf, um, and the Tiki saga. Tiki. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and to be fair, ever since we got the Triumphs in the format, like you can never know which decks are going to splash what. Yeah, exactly. So in the past, you, you, you saw like Jund Saga, or maybe Rug Saga. Yeah. Now, no problem, let's just play five <laughs> colors, you know, play the best, right? It's pretty play easier, the best, yeah. yeah. Play the best black cards, play the best white cards, why not? Especially that Teferi can be played with just a single triumph splashed. Yeah. Okay, taking a draw, flipping the saga to reflection of Kiki Jiki. Bashing trigger. Of course, attacking with both. The treasure is down. <coughs> yeah, what's what, what's difficult about this game is that Merktite is behind on mana and on board. So, um, some people, yeah, some people would like a six, sixth color, like <laughs> blue, purple, but uh, and you, again, could, you could kind of consider colorless a sixth color. Mm, yeah, uh, especially with Eldrazi, right? Okay, trigger. Got this connived. And he desperately needs a removal spell. There's a land on top. Yeah, prismatic ending, a, a primeval <laughs> titan. Yep, let's go. Three mana. Okay, I think it'll be like draw, discard, and treasure. Let's see what they choose. But I would madly respect dealing two damage to the opponent. Yeah, okay, so they're uh. looting. Oh, they just drew to lands, discard to lands. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, draw of the bubble on upkeep. But now, Reflection of Kiki Jiki is active. Yeah. And now we'll see what he will do. 
Land Drop Pass. Oh, Merc Tide. Okay, that's good. Blocks everything. Uh, probably kills the opponent into attacks. So that should be... That That, that is good, actually. It shouldn't be good. It is good. It's probably also bolstered by the counter spell in hand. And there, there are removal spells, actually. So he actively opts not to use them. Mm -mm. Um, the, that's, I think, Steam Vent and Persist. Melee standing sometimes do not show the archetype, but that's usually due to the players not having submitted deck lists. Yeah, exactly. Um, like out of 400 players, if I'm not mistaken, like 300 submitted, which clearly yeah, means uh, a quarter hasn't. Which some of them have the paper deck list. Exactly, yeah. So, Which also makes it <coughs> even more annoying for us, right? Because yeah, but just for we us. We don't know what, what people problem. are going to play. Yeah, exactly. We have to ask every time. And um, I've seen it like every time. So Warsaw, here, um, Amsterdam. People who do well are the ones who haven't submitted <laughs> their decks. I mean, every time. I look, you know, table on, one, guys. table two, no idea what they're playing. Put up your deck. Classic. <laughs> and that's also why uh, Will, you know, keeps his, you know, up upload your deck list to yeah. MTG Melee <laughs> propaganda. Because he knows that's going to help us a lot. And only he's on the... Idea. On the Kiki Jiki that is scoping. Yep. Yeah, token. make a copy, kill a bash in, and that's a, that's a huge attack. That's eight plus one plus one plus three. Conife, yeah. of course, Conife. Yeah, of course. Make it bigger. Yep. And yeah, and that's it. it. Wow. Adriano, eight and one now. Yeah. Eight and one with a, such a huge attack. But no this worries, so Chad. Good we got another feature match ready. Yep. And that's our previous Breach uh, player who played, Ooh. yes, Monastery Mentor. Yes, he's that one. He's exactly that And we that also player. have already saw um, Nivo on the feature table before. I think we may have. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we may have. I remember his name. <laughs> and this is... Uh, I. This is not... Yeah, exactly. This is not... Game one, game two. Yeah, no, of course. So we've got 18 minutes for two games, potentially. Uh, but I can tell you from experience that those matchups, like Breach versus Merktite, and speaking from the Breach side, take a long time. <laughs> they they do indeed take a long time. Ledger is trying to resolve. Fetch. Also depends on your particular strategy, because... Um, when I play, uh, when I play bridge, I usually side out all, or at least most of the combo. Oh, okay. So you basically play like this mental saga yeah. bridge value deck, and then again, it really goes long. Consider. Okay, difficult choice now. Um, a ledger is kind of difficult to deal with, so it's basically it's b a huge check whether the opponent has a lightning bolt. Is Mentor the best sideboard card in modern? Well, you could argue that it is, and I will argue that it is. E E on two. Okay, fetch the fairy bounce. Oh, just oh three mana Emery. Oh my god. Okay, this <laughs> is. Oof. This is not the most efficient thing you could do, but this is certainly a thing you could do. Let's see what mills over. Now, what's good about Emery is that it costs three mana, yeah. so even if EE is popped, Emery would survive. Now, either yeah, are there any artif- Ah, uh, uh, misses. So right now, Emery doesn't even have to be killed, really. Although, if somebody triggers Conife, there yeah. might be some artifact coming into the graveyard from that ability. That's right. Let's 
16 min la minutes left. Yep. And they are 16 to 16. <laughs> um, who's the commentary pair? Um, you can actually look us up on Twitter. I am Islands in Front, and she is... Kathleen Lilly. Exactly. Kathleen Lilly and Islands in Front, also known as Skura. That is not legal anymore to take the island on the front. The chat yeah, is very but, well aware about that. But it is legal to have <laughs> such a nickname. And yeah, I, of course. Also, also, I oh, I uh, I had this nickname when it was still legal. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> perfectly clear. Um, yes. Okay. I can see this is the moment to 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 say that again. Uh, our eight and O hammer yeah. player got a game loss because he had uh, Blinkmouth in the deck list, but indeed played. Inkmouth and so got a game loss and because he had lost a game previously it upgraded to a full match loss and then isn't eight and oh eight and one it is Ragavan Conive trigger okay so there could be, could be some counter spell action on Ragavan yeah two mana open but to be fair that's quite mana inefficient if you counter spell Ragavan mm -mm. you keep Emery and, and Ledge on the field and I can see that the player has stepped away from the table. Yeah, probably it's just call. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably asking the judge. What he, ca what he can legally do. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. okay. This is my, my, my soul read. He was asking okay. about the dress down. Okay. This is my bad. <laughs> he was asking about Let's dress down. Let's see if you're right or not. Uh, because he wasn't maybe sure. Chimana, you're right. Easy, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. Of course, I could see it from his hands. Easy. So, okay, so, so what's the actual thing here? Uh, the question was, I can bet uh, whether Ragavan has to return to the hand when it's dashed, or even with dress down <coughs> on the field, which yeah. turns off the abilities. And as far as I know, it does. Uh, but I think on the next ten step, because then it gains the ability back, kind of, mm -hmm. it's, I, it's weird. Actually, Let's I, see what's happened. Yeah. Then. So it conives and uh, take the the counter, attack with board. Yeah. Is asking probably yeah, so, exactly okay. that. So it it certainly loses haste, and you do you do you, you play dress down in such situations to make it not attack because you want to turn off haste. But the que the real question that's that's not obvious is whether it returns to hand, and it does. It does. Oh, we've got the, the expert, Frank Carsten, in chat, <laughs> helping us out. So thank you very much. Thank you. And players did indeed do as Frank Carsten uh, preaches. Oh, Emery, Emery and priority with Conive also sounds very interesting as a question. Yeah. Hmm. Land drop. Okay. And, okay. and pass. Again, still Emery does nothing. We don't want Emery to be a you know, three mana one two. And mm -hmm. for now, it has been a three mana one two. But any bubble makes it great. A land. No. Oh, just another land and not a saga. So that, that, mm -hmm. that's plenty of lands that do nothing. And okay. Dash the monkey. And we know that that would happen because we yeah, have seen that already. Will Emery attack? Let's go. Okay. Let's <laughs> go. Okay, ready to, to take damage. Oh, and he's taking damage. Bah. I have to say, as a as a Ragavan player myself, that's a classic situation. You attack mm. them and you <laughs> always get a land off the top. Always. Sometimes it's good because you mana screw them. But yeah, you just always get a land there. <laughs> okay, two cards in hand, and I, I can't really make out what these two cards are. Um, and, and step. Oh, go. Pop, yeah, pop E on two. Get rid of this annoying shredder. Fetch. Let's see what happens. Searching for his land. We just wait for the proper shuffle of the deck. Okay, now we can also see completely the the graveyard. <laughs> okay. 
I've been away, but literally nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Yeah, so <laughs> that was easy. Okay, untaps. Ledger oh, their own okay. ledger shredder. Fetch end step. So now, knowing the deck list, mm -hmm. uh, there is only one steam vents left to be found off Flagel Strand because mm. there is already Sacred Foundry, Harrod Fountain, one Steam Vents and an island. So the only other fetchable land is another Steam Vents and in general another fetchable is a mountain, which of course you couldn't find off uh, Flood Strand. Okay, untap. Now again, Emery is normally uh, one of the best cards in the deck. Now, it's awful. But there are there's only two mana up from the for the opponent. Yeah, of course. And there is Ragavan and the Fairy Time Raveler in hand. So mm. one of them resolves. One of them resolves. The first one is the the fairy, of course. Yeah, immediately something. <laughs> Spell pierce. Okay. I mean he has to pay. Yeah. The second one. Trigger. Ooh, that's nice good. One. There's another conife. There should be another conife. There should be two conives. There should be two knives. One knife for one player, one knife for the other player. Let's see if they catch that. Yeah, the first yeah. one, the first spell piece was paid for. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and there is another knife. Okay. The fairy bounce the ledger. And uh, is Emery going to town? Emery, Emery, and I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think in the hand there is Ragavan, another Teferi, and one Astri Mento. So then don't tell any don't yeah, don't tell anybody. Don't tell nope. But I think that's the case. Two mana, another shredder. Okay. There are like two cards in hand now. There could be like a Merktide coming down, but he's sh not sure. If there is a Merktide coming down, it will get severely punished yeah. by another, you know, Teferi bouncing it. No, expensive Ooh, iteration. Okay, iteration. Okay, I mean, that's actually worse because Merktide at least would affect the battlefield. Yeah. Um, but we'll see what this iteration finds because there could be like, I don't know, maybe land removal or something. But the Merktide player is at four. Now this it's team, very, very ooh, that's very interesting actually. This Misty doesn't find the Red Souls. Like this, it doesn't represent removal because there's three steam vents on yeah. the battlefield already. Um, and that's key. That's key to remember. It does not represent any removal. And the untap with Teferi. So any spell is resolving. Now it's Flooded Strand. Flooded Strand is a dead land now. Um, Three mana. Another, another Teferi. Teferi. Interesting. Okay, I mean, it has to resolve, of course, because uh, there is a Teferi yeah. draw. Oh, oh, and the Saga trigger, trigger play Monastery Mentor. Oh, <laughs> I mean, okay, actually, to be fair, it's better to dash Ragavan and get the opponent down to one. And this is what he's trying to do. Uh, because of it turns off uh, Misty totally. Let's see what's off the top. Could be a Bolt. Ooh, that's good. I mean, he, he plays it 100%. Yeah, yeah, Breach. I, I know. I don't know if I've said it already, but Breach is very much a combo deck. Yeah, 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 it is. Ragavan, of course, should be dashed back. No, 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 no. Ragavan should be... Okay. Um... Yeah, his yes, Ragavan should be back in hand, and that's it's actually very that's important. Exactly what, what is asking very to them. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if Monkey is in hand, then it gets dashed in for kill. It's very important. Now the issue is that if Ragavan is in hand, oh, okay, it is in hand. Yeah, and this is just a warning for a miss trigger. Probably, yeah. Uh. But it means that he can just dash in the... Oh, there is a bolt. <laughs> I mean, for style points, you could just... The Ragavan? So you could play Ragavan. Okay. Bolt. No. And bolt. Ah, no. He should have played Mentor. And, and then, then bolt, bolt. 
kill you, get a mentor trigger. I mean, come on. <laughs> Where are the style points? Where are the style points? I will, I will tell him after the, after you the prefer, game. You prefer efficiency. He, uh, yeah, efficiency <laughs> over style points. No, 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 no. Not on my watch. <laughs> okay. Ooh, that was that was a game. Oh my god, that was a game. Yeah, it will go back, of course, because you you have to. The, the difference is you can do or you must do, and this one is a must. Yeah, with with Raga Van Dash, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I fully agree with Jimmy that uh, they may have acted upon the information that Ragavan is on the battlefield. Yeah. But I think with Ragavan off the field, they would have to cast that anyways, because they are... Uh, oh, maybe not, actually. Yeah, because they would be the tour to Chanela. So they would have to play it anyways. I mean, in this particular spot. And uh, the dash player got a, got a yeah. warning. No, because missed the trigger. So that was just a warning given for... Yeah, but uh, as game we said before, there, there is a judge dedicated to to the table one, another judge is to the table two, so uh, for everything they just can ask and be sure about everything. So, yeah. what and do you think that he should side in right now? So we, we have actually seen Brotherhood's End, <laughs> and I think Brotherhood's End is actually pretty good, especially if the opponent is on Mentor. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's easy to grow, it's easy-ish to grow the Mentor out of of, uh, of the reach, but it's much more difficult to grow the tokens mm -hmm. out of reach. So that's one thing happening. Um, Dressdown is good at stopping the combo, uh, but again, it depends on the approach. If, for example, um, the Breach player sides out the whole combo, which is possible, then dress down isn't that great, but it's, it's still good against Sagatok, right? I yeah. mean, it's not good against combo because it's not there. If if the combo was there, then it's excellent because you can just you know turn off uh, Thassa's Oracle. Um, Blood Moon is okay, but it's not that good. Um, Breach can just find the single island and just continue the game from that point. So, but there are different different schools, honestly. Some people like to try like to try to cheese people out with Blood Moon. Some people prefer, mm -hmm. you know, more consistent, you know, fair plan. But yeah, Brotherhood's End is, is really good. I mean, against, <laughs> against Breach specifically, it also cleans up the Saga tokens, so it doubles mm. up as, as Saga cleanage and, and, and just normal creatures, you know, getting purged. Okay. And let's begin with the third round of the th third game, sorry, of this last round <laughs> for today, because we have a full day tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be again nine rounds, and during the top eight, you can found the, the deck list. Yeah. So six rounds of Swiss and then three of top eight. And 64 players qualified for day two. Yeah. The top 32 will get the invitation for Athens final and the top eight of tomorrow will get also accommodation and flight paid for Athens. I guess it's a bubble trigger draw. And now let's see what the bridge player has. Strand pass. Okay, consider. Consider, of course. Drop. No. Hmm. I, I think I think I saw a blood moon actually. <laughs> I think I saw a blood moon. So let's hope that this father's strand actually finds an island. Also where as an end. Um to be fair, this could be like a um uh what to say like like a kind of um smoke grenade here going yeah. on uh, <laughs> that they want to show that oh i don't have any blood moons i don't have an island but then they will go turn three fetch an island slam mm -hmm. blood moon now it's not that optimal because you still don't have access to counter spell you don't have access to merc tight so it could be like iffy ish but uh this could happen 
thinking that it's, it punishes Breach more than Merkitite, which it does not. By the way, it does not. Okay, Monkey. And I really like this, not Dashed Monkey. I really generally dislike Dashing Monkey. I mean, in such spots when it doesn't accomplish much. It doesn't kill mm. off a Planeswalker, it doesn't provide you the fixed mana, uh, the game isn't about damage. Immediate Bolt. Yeah. And yes, as I said, yeah, Island. Okay, but Ledger there is Shredder. no Blood Moon yet. Ledger Shredder. They might also be waiting for both, another Island for themselves, and waiting for the Breach player to fetch out a Shockland or play a Saga, which will happen now. So yes, Saga trigger, and then maybe the Blood Moon uh, will come down, which would be especially devastating if there's another yeah. Island for, for Merc Titan. Yeah. The Ragavan, yep. again. Which doesn't really attack well into into Shredder. And kill it. <laughs> simple, simple gaming. Yeah, be, uh, this opponent is just saying, no, I really don't want Ragavan on the board. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and if, there is, if there is Blood Moon, this could be GG, really. Mm -mm -mm. Because, uh, no, okay, the island will be found. But the fact that it just stone rains the Saga off, uh, the Shredder is on the battlefield. Mm, cut off white, and white is one of the best ways to actually get rid of shredders. And the mentor, I mean, yeah. Okay, there is there are. so no blood on this this turn yet. Yeah, you're right, not yet. I could have also misseen that there might not be a blood moon, but I'm pretty sure there was. Um, he might I... also be waiting for another island. <coughs> So that he doesn't, you know, mana screw himself. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So they could be island light in general, and they are, but it, but it could have been um, a way to make the opponent think exactly that, and then drop the blood moon for the win. You know, one in hand, one on the bottom of the deck, and the bolt. Oh, that's interesting because now if he fetches a shockland. Then he delays that Blood Moon plan even more. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, uh, or not, or, ornate puzzles. Yeah. I think that this could have been like a sneaky, sneaky thing. Okay, but no. Bold face, trigger con knife. Uh, so I don't think now that blood, that any Blood Moon is coming, honestly. I think it doesn't need Ooh. right now. Shock in? Are there in like, what? Is there like a lightning bolt maybe? Because that's interesting. Why would you fetch shock now? I think I saw a an unholy heat, but you can't un unholy heat a ledger now. Yeah, there is a bolt, of course. Good, good. This is actually my list. Uh, cause um, I, I talked with the player, and I actually played two bolts, three heats, and one of the reasons is actually ledger shredder, because it's so difficult to kill with with um with heat early enough. I need discarded, so the shredder now I have one. Counter? Yeah. Okay, and that's Teferi. good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, triple Teferi uh, in the deck list. One of them coming down now. They are discussing about, of course, he's bouncing the Shredder. And... Okay, that makes Ooh. mana. Uh, I'm not bubble. sure that matters. Oh, that's... <laughs> that is good. Oh my god. Okay, so now certainly there is no Blood Moon coming because... Who cares about the land? Now we've yeah. got the Fairy Emery going. That was a, such a good sequence. Go, Breach, go. go. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've said it, but it's a combo deck. As you can clearly see. Okay, so now three mana. Blood Moon? I mean, of sure thing. No problem. Easy. Easy peasy. Yep. I mean, th I, I, th this moment... I would be so happy to get a Blood Moon. 
because yeah. the opponent just taps out. You still have blue because of Moxamba, mind you. Um, there is still one mana open. Yeah, it, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, ornate puzzles. Yeah, Not I saw it spot. in the hand early. Oh, an Expressive iteration now. Wow. It was coming and it was sneaky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And now another bubble. bubble. Oh, a basic <laughs> island from hand. Oh, wow. Oh, and Ether Spellbomb, because he knows that there is a ledger in hand. So he knows to m he wants to make sure that this ledger, when it comes down, is immediately returned mm -hmm. to hand. That's very good. And also, there's only one island for for the Merc type player. Oh. And this is what happens when you try to be cheesy with the Bloodman. <laughs> uh, and you just... Ooh, okay. Oh, oh, that's solid. Okay, that's solid. Kills Emery, kills Teferi. That's solid. That is all. It turns off Emery. That's solid. Um, now what he could have done is play Ledger, mm -hmm. then play uh, he Brotherhood's End, trigger, and then connive away a creature so that I mean a spell so that it's it stays on the field. Yeah. Uh, but maybe there are other plans, better plans. Which is thinking. Oh, he could have bounced his own army. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. He could have absolutely done that. The shredder is coming down. Yep, drop. Uh, now they're on ledger. Yep, of course. Now ledger mirror. Red, red. And the hearse trigger. Yeah, both players. So both players will come. Yeah, okay. But the active players trigger goes on the stack first. And the non-active players go second. And because in Magic we resolve this stack from the top, it means that the player on the left, the non-active player, resolves first. Because resolves first isn't the same as goes on the yeah. stack first. <laughs> oh, dispute is ditched. Good. Okay. So one counter on. You know, the connive there. I think I see another iteration and a holy heat in hand there for, for our breach player. Uh, hers is pretty good. Hers is pretty good. Uh, one of the main ways to deal with it is the ferry. He's counting something on the graveyard. Yep. I mean, yeah, of course, this was maybe clarifying what he has on the graveyard for the hearse. Draw it didn't bounce the opposing ledger uh, end step. Now it just heated in a quick counting of whether there is delirium and Tade Tadej uh, indicating that, well, yeah. even if you use hers, there is delirium. And then Expensive iteration trigger. Oh, that's good. Okay, first, Conive. I'm ex yep, mm -hmm. discard a land. Yeah, I'm, yeah, wait, oh, yeah, wait. Yeah, it's fine, yeah, okay. And right now they are in time. This is turn zero, so breach player will have turn zero, two, and four. And the Merc type player will have one, three, and five. So all of them will get three turns total. Yeah. Um, now, again, they do not want to draw, if possible. Um, but I think the, the breach player can close this game fast enough. Attack for four, get a trigger, I get a useless card of Ragavan, name a more, more icon iconic duo. Mm -hmm. Now, Mox Amber gives mana, or another Legend Shredder, <laughs> because Mox Amber gives red of Ragavan, uh, because it's still on in play. It won't be, because it will be dashed back in to the hand, but so far, uh, or for now, he does give mana. Um, so basically this dash cost one. Now the dash could be, should be returned to hand. Well, a, another miss. Oh me. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. They missed the dash again. Don't, don't do it like this. <laughs> because, okay. I, I will let the, let, let okay. them know. I mean, I would cry <laughs> if this player got and like three warnings for it. 
and then because of that got a game loss or match loss. He's taken back, okay. That would be like... This would make make it a very weird round nine, where just you know, there are like warn warnings all around. Yeah, no. Please, do not uh, do that. Yes, three in the same day. Yeah. Three of the same type, in I think. In the same day. In the same day, yes. Okay, Mystical Dispute um, is cast because, I mean, the Merclay player wants to cast anything. And it, oh, they let it counter. Dash Ragavan, double Conife. They decide which order they want to Conife in. Um, it is possible that a draw eliminates both. It is possible, yeah. Uh, so they really want to win. Oh, a mentor. Oh, a mentor. <laughs> oh, no. You this broke started. my heart. You literally <laughs> broke my heart right now. I will come to him after the match and tell, what did you do? What did you do? Get a treasure trigger. Oh, I use this card of Ragavan. Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> And they are on at three. No, please return Ragavan. Please return Ragavan. Return Ragavan. Return Ragavan. Return Ragavan. He's still thinking. Yeah. And of course. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah it was yeah. close. By. <laughs> that was close, yeah. That was indeed very close. And two other out for the listeners and theirs. Woof. I mean, but honestly, if if he remember he misremembers one more time, I think he will lose because of that. Uh, this is his. I, he has to remember every single time. Yeah. Now. So, woof. Okay, draw. And will there be an extension of the hand, or more fighting? He's at three. He needs to protect himself. That doesn't work. Yeah. And uh, GG. Okay. GG for the breach player. And advances at 7 and 2. Wow. That was a round. That was a very that good round. That was a indeed. very, very good round. And uh, it was our last round of today. It was. It was indeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we had a lot of fun today. Yeah. A lot and of fun. I really hope that we will have a lot of fun tomorrow too, because we have other nine rounds tomorrow to yeah, cover it. Exactly. So uh, tune in tomorrow morning. At um, 9 a.m. And 9 a.m. Uh, Italian time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank Correct. you very much for watching again. Thank and you see you for tomorrow. And Cheers. see you tomorrow. Bye.